Salam alaikum, brothers and sisters. We back, subhanAllah. Brother Hayda's here as well. Um, yeah, we just have iftar. Now we're going to have to push and try to raise more funds uh, for this uh, um, you know, amazing project, salahplus.com, which is the idea that we are raising funds for these prayer mats, subhanAllah. These very prayer mats that you can see here. And, um, you know, yeah, subhanAllah. So we have ordered 20,000 prayer mats. Uh, we've paid a deposit of sixty thousand pounds already, um, and we are, uh, as far as I know, going to complete the uh, opposite uh, the the rest of the deposit um, of twenty thousand prayer mats, and this is based upon uh, the demand. There's a increased demand for these prayer mats. Last year, or year and a half, we ordered ten thousand prayer mats. All of them are gone. Subhanallah. Uh, and yeah, subhanAllah. So what we've been trying to do the entire, uh, you know, entire time of us you know, raising funds, we've been able to, you know, invite friends and invite brothers who were recipients of the prayer mats. We invited people uh, online. Uh, Brother Aaron, he was on yesterday. He was talking about his experiences that he's made. He ordered the prayer mat three months ago. He knows how to pray now. Uh, we have brother Hader here who uh invite and um, ordered the prayer mat he knows how to pray now so brother Hader, you were talking about how you you know you're so upset that ramadan is finishing yeah 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 Salam alaikum, guys um yeah it's just i don't know what it is but this is see i i've said this multiple times before but i was born a muslim but i feel like this is the first ramadan where i've been able to sort of understand and connect with the whole theme not the, not the theme the whole feeling let's say because it was the first ramadan where my salah was correct it was the first ramadan where i was connected to allah it was the first ramadan where i had actually returned to islam properly in my heart yeah and not just to like i wasn't just praying maghrib to break my fast because my family told me to do so i was praying five times a break five times a day i prayed to hajjud a few times but after i learned how to do so and i attended Tarawi, which was the first time in my life i've ever been to Tarawi. And um, I don't know, this Ramadan has just been an opportunity to connect. Yeah. And I I wouldn't have had that. I, mean, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to connect or the opportunity to, you know, to have salah yeah. if I didn't know my salah. Yeah, subhanAllah. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I, I, I love the fact that, you know, not, I love the fact that it's just, I find it profound that the word salah, when you told me that my heart, like, it understood it. Mm -hmm. Is I find it profound that the, the word salah comes from the word silla, meaning mm -hmm. connection. And who are you connecting to? You're connected to Allah. When I returned to Islam back in December um, of last year, it was that moment of like, now what do I do? Because I'm not sure if I'm confident in my ability to relearn salah on my own. And when I discovered the Salah Plus program, and mm -hmm. when I signed up to it, subhanAllah, within, within about six weeks, mm -hmm. from January 8th, I remember I received my prayer on January 8th, so it was the end of February yeah. when I had like learnt Salah. And then that same prayer yeah. that I had then used, I then passed yeah. it to a, to a new brother, mm. to a Muslim revert, who's one of my close friends. I've known him for many years. And uh, mashallah, he's trying. He's trying. I think yesterday, um, Sheikh Muhammad was um, watching him as he was trying to like memorize uh, Surah al uh which was nice to see. And it's just, I don't know. Yeah. It's, I'm upset it's coming to the end of Ramadan, but I'm now hopeful mm -hmm. not hopeful i'm now happy mm -hmm. i've had such a good experience the first mm -hmm. time in my life in 20 i'm 21 years old 21 years of experience yeah my first ramadan i've connected to Allah. yeah so yeah subhanallah yeah um well first and foremost i ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you steadfast on, yeah. on this journey subhanallah and uh for brother byron Amen. to experience similar success i mean um yeah, it was, it's beautiful. You know, I, I don't know if for those who were watching yesterday, we were we turned around the cameras and was sort of pointing at that moment, subhanAllah, when it was quite intimate, both of you just like sort of like slouching over the prayer mat and going through each mm -hmm. step again. Because a lot of people uh, don't know this, but um, Brother Byron also has a life. You know, he's very busy. He, yeah. He works loads of hours. And it's, you know, he doesn't really have much time to mm. always be around or, you know, he's in, in his teenagers anymore. 
now. He's not a teenager anymore. He has, he has been a teenager for years. He's 22. Yeah, but that's well. the point I'm trying to make. It yeah. would have been easier prior. Yeah, of course, 100%. Because of like all the commitments that he has now, it, it makes it a bit, bit more harder for him mm. to just catch up and, and do, you know, learn about the Salahs. Yeah, just... I mean, he's, the thing is, when he took his Shahada, he took it with me. I think I've mentioned this before previously, but it was one of those moments of like, uh, I, for some reason, I wasn't sure. Yeah. I was like, are you ready? Because like, even I was struggling with Salah. Because it was in the month of December and I was still worried about my own Salah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I want to go dedicate my time to be able to helping, helping him. So how do you like, so how do you do this? Yeah. But then when I learned Salah with the help of the prayer and with the help of um, a, a special man called Dawood who uh, taught me Salah. Thank you. Yeah. Man. I may Allah preserve him. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean. Yeah, when I had the opportunity, I realized that it's, the, you know, we're in that sort of age now where these resources can exist. Yeah. Where these resources can have the potential to thrive and be able to, like, not just people like me who are returning to Islam, but people who are brand new to it, people who yeah. are un unable to speak the tongue. Mm -hmm. and that's an opportunity that like, I think we're fortunate to have in this day and age. Uh, ha had this been 200 years ago, yeah, mm -hmm. and we're sitting in England, I don't think this opportunity would have been a possibility. Absolutely not. And mm -hmm. I think it's such a important thing that you just said that the resources match sort of the time that we live in. And this mm -hmm. is why, brothers and sisters, we're 474, <clears throat> 476 pounds away from the next goal. The next 500, 476 pounds. But brothers and sisters, if we can break this down into 200s and or 100s, so if there's four people that can give 100 pounds, you'll be teaching literally 16 people like Haida or 32 people like um, um, Byron, potentially, how to pray directly and this is what we're raising funds for today we're raising funds for these prayer mats subhanallah um and 100 pounds will afford us to produce 16 to 32 and the reason why we're saying 32 is because from what we've seen so far the trend goes that the people who are recipients of these prayer mats or people who are recipients of the one-to-one -one sessions usually tend to bring another person with them via mm -hmm. word of mouth and that just explains why there has been such an influx in orders uh for the last uh, nine months we've been sending eight thousand plus prayer mats uh, within such a short space and that's why brothers and sisters the donations are so important because subhanallah we are a very small organization but we are really sort of operating on an international scale um, which is kind of weird and strange because, you know, with most organizations, especially of that scale or that's that size, um, strategically they start off focusing on local, mm. um, local lo efforts, yeah. efforts, yeah. But uh, through the the help, like you said, technological help, like things like the internet. But I don't even think it's that. I think it's the. Uh, I'm not trying to mm. uh, like toot your own, but mm. when I see the effort you guys put in. Mm. Yeah, like, so the the team here, like just watching you guys, is almost inspirational. Thank you, man. They, I, I see you. I'm not trying to boast you. I'm not trying to build your ego, but when I see you working, just like stamp after stamp after stamp, we're getting those out. Mm. And the second time I think we met for the when you had taught Byron how to yeah. do do or yeah, you had also bought a box of prayer mats. Yeah, because you had to post them that day. I think. Yeah, yeah. And it was that sort of thing where it's like you know, like, the, the the passion I see. Yeah, that's, what, that, yeah. that's why like. I, I enjoy watching you guys almost. May Allah bless you, bro, man. Thanks for these kind words. Well. Um, yeah, so yeah, we're trying our best. And uh, yeah, so we've been able to really reach a very wide audience that is quite dispersed across the globe. So it's not just people in the UK, but it's people elsewhere too who are very passionate about what we do. And especially sort of like, yeah, and I've, I've, I was saying this, so if you can see, we're talking about the Prayer Mats Day, Prayer Mats Day. So there's a couple more events coming up for May. Uh, and after Ramadan, we have a couple of events planned. Um, we haven't discussed any details yet, but we are planning a Prayer Mats Day where people will be able to come to central London and pick up their Prayer Mats in person. You'll be able to meet uh, Ali Dawa and you meet... Possibly sons like Smartu Jana, Brother Haida, Brother um, Ajabi, myself. We all will be there, inshallah, Sheikh Mohammed. We all will be there on um, prayer mats day. It's going to be a good day where people will be able to come and pick up these prayer mats. 
uh, and for those who can't make it, subhanAllah, hey, you know what? You can help and you can support elsewhere by donating. Right now, if you go to Launch Good, you can basically, uh, we're 400 and, uh, 476 pounds away. SubhanAllah. Nice, nice, beautiful. Allahu Akbar, yeah, mashallah, mashallah. Four, so we're 422 pounds away. Um, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, clearly, I know there's a lot of you, you know, you're sort of like trying to catch up on the last few days. Um, this is officially the last night of Ramadan. It is officially the last night of Ramadan. There's no more Ramadan after this. There's no more Layla to Qadr. Uh, Layla to Qadr. Oh, there's no more uh, night prayers. You know, Qiyam obviously continues, but Tarawih won't. There won't be any uh, Tarawih to, tomorrow. We'll be breaking a fast, yes. But there's no more night of Ramadan. It's officially uh, done for this year, subhanAllah. How quick this month came and how quick it's going. And I would just recommend you guys, if, if, as much as you can, this, please join to donate during this blessed month because, you know, sadaqa in, sadaqa in Ramadan it isn't unlike any sadaqa you can give in any particular time in a year, subhanAllah. So, um, yeah, so if you can, brothers and sisters, right now, we are 422 pounds away, 422 pounds. So if there's two people, in fact, if there's four people that can give 100 pounds each, uh, subhanAllah, 100 pounds each, um, that would really cover it. Um, and I know there's people out there who can do it. SubhanAllah, we had about an hour ago, whilst we were breaking a fast, there was a sister, Sister Sarah, apparently. Uh, I've been told by um, trusted sources that she was the one behind the thousand pounds. Allahu alam uh, is said anonymous cancel. But uh, may Allah bless her and bless the person, if it's not her, the person that gave thousand uh, pounds. So if there's more people, there's, if there's people or more people that can give thousand pounds, please feel free to go to the, the Launch Goods uh, website. Launch Goods has been a very supportive uh, platform. They've really, really helped us also to reach these goals. And it was sort of like a marriage between us, really putting the work in. Allah SWT obviously sort of like green lighting the entire project. And then Launch Goods like coming towards us and helping us by matching. I remember there was like this weekend within Ramadan where we had just four days really to raise uh, 50,000 pounds and we did it, subhanAllah. Uh, the deadline was a, a Sunday and we did it by Sunday, subhanAllah. And Launch Good said that if we do it, they will match uh, every single penny. And so far, it seems like they've kept up their word. Um, so subhanAllah, now we've started off a separate, was well, still part of the same campaign, but it's just a micro campaign. It's for the prayer mats, subhanAllah, we've raised the funds and we've raised the goals. But you know what, what we do Muslims, we Muslims, we never, we're never satisfied with just goodness. We want greatness, we want ihsan. And ihsan also means in this regard to continue to donate, brothers and sisters, continue to donate. Um, but yeah, um, in terms of like the organization itself and like, you know, like hey, they've kind of grown up in East London. Mm. Did you have more friends and Muslims that were sort of like not really invested into religion? See, I don't want to, because obviously I'm sure my friends will eventually, or perhaps they might see this and stuff like that. But yeah. I think, I think the honesty, and I think they can agree with this, is the fact that when we were growing up, we grew up in a sort of environment where a lot of my friends were this would have first generation of immigrants first generation of children from immigrants yeah a lot of our parents came and they worked hard yeah so the local mosque was a lot of elders who were much too out of touch much too out of touch compared to who we were so like uh, growing up 10 11 years old yeah how are you going to connect to a 70 year old movie sub that, that was sort of our understanding our mm -hmm. parents are always busy because of work etc yeah but my friends themselves there were a few there were a few who were very intelligent, who were very dedicated to Islam, who were very connected to Allah. But then the, I think the I think the attraction of the dunya, I think that's how I would put it, the attraction of the dunya was too great. There were other things I'd rather be doing. There were other things I'd rather be playing on my console. I'd rather be going out for football. I'd rather be, you know, being essentially a stupid child. Yeah. Yeah. And that developed from like stupid innocence into 
like haram activities when I grew up, got older, when I turned 16, things were happening when I turned 18, when I got, went to university, it, it was essentially like an avalanche or like mm. a snowball that kept growing into an avalanche. And that's what I would say happened because imagine, yeah. yeah, when you have like a life or when you have a life and you're surrounded by people who were not aware of what's right and wrong. Yeah. And we didn't have the opportunity and also like our ability to connect. We, we only saw Jumma as a, nece- a necessary. Yeah. That was another thing. Like we only saw Jumma as a necessary. Uh, we didn't understand the, we, we didn't understand or grasp the meaning of, of obligatory play, prayers. Like, yeah, we knew all your five obligatory play, prayers, but there's always a the thing of, oh, we'll leave it. And eventually you, you push yourself further and further away from it. I think I was the worst case scenario because I started to adopt atheistic or like ag- agnostics or beliefs. Yeah. Where I took where a lot of people were still believing in Allah, but then I replaced Allah with just God. Mm. Yeah. And I know the word just means God, but I feel like there's a sort of, you know, meaning behind us referring to Allah as Allah. Yeah. But yeah. then also, then I would start believing in Darwinism, start believing in um, the theory of evolution, I start believing in um, the end of the universe, etc. And I was so attached to the idea that the universe would end in trillions of years, where I never would ad- like adopt the sort of idea that, you know, perhaps I should be worried about my grave. I should be worried about my impact that I would do in this life. And is that because you felt like a billion, billion years from now, you you won't be here anyway? Or exactly. Trillion? I felt like a, I felt like I would be a speck. In, in the grand scheme of things, I felt like my life was irrelevant. There was a certain level of like individualism, but then it was to the point where I felt like I was unnecessary. Uh. And I went along with that because if you're unnecessary, then you does, it doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. And if it doesn't matter what you do, then you get to waste your time and be stupid. And I justified it like that, I guess, in a much more convoluted way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, brothers, this is the You can hear here clearly. Uh, sort of justifications, quite wild justifications that were made about the insignificance of the self. And I feel like the prayer does the opposite. It actually tells you that you are significant Mm -hmm. and that you are important and that you are interacting and you have access to that thing that that everything arises from. You know, that thing that, you know, we call God, Allah, you know, Mm -hmm. Allah, and most importantly, that, um, you know, that, that everything... We return to Allah, you know. It's also uh, when I read the translation of Al Fatiha, yeah, whilst I was trying to learn the Salah, the the one thing that's always stuck with me is the owner of the Day of Judgment, mm-hmm. or, sorry, or the King yeah. of the Day of Judgment, depending on the yeah, author. absolutely. But it's always that it's that constant reminder, like seventeen times a day, because of the seventeen compulsory rakats that you pray, seventeen times a day you remind yourself that this life it ends with the grave, it ends with that, and this entire life is to wait for the Day of Judgment. But to work towards it, to ensure that on that day that you're one of those who are in the shade. Yeah. Yeah. And that it gave me a purpose. Because like I can say, oh, perhaps I was a good person, perhaps I was a kind person, etc. But I know that there was a lot of things I did wrong. But now since since I've like taken that step towards Allah, I feel the need towards like just constantly trying to improve myself. Yeah. Not just like in education, not just in like my Islamic knowledge, but also yeah. like in my personality, my behavior, and the way I characterize myself, my treatment towards my family, my treatment towards my mother, because there was a sort of person I was. And I'm not saying that if you're not a Muslim, you're a terrible person towards your mother, but I know it's a huge change. Mm-hmm. That's the sort of thing that like I'll forever be grateful for. And I know that like I would never be able to make up what my mother has done for me. Yeah. But now I have the opportunity to give her back Salah. Yeah, and uh, I want my mother to learn salah again. And I want her to return to five compulsory prayers again, and I want I want the same for my family. Yeah, and I feel like that's the opportunity this, this, that salah has given me. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think uh, yourself sort of having this opportunity to go back to the salah, reconnect with salah at a much later stage in your life is also kind of like a blessing in disguise because mm. uh, one of the problems that we face as Muslims sometimes is that when our children grow up brought into Islam is that they do not understand the um, importance mm. and significance of Salah and how much weight there is behind it. and it's very difficult because you're kind of born into a thing that is sort of like a default position for many people in your family so it's not as special because it's something you've seen over and over again mm. and obviously there's cases where that is not the case where like you find young people being very enthusiastic about the prayer um, but like I think the fact that you sort of lived your life, came back with a much more deep understanding about who you are and like your place in the world, 
makes it so much more mm. um powerful subhanallah of course i think there's a certain level of like when, when i learned the idea the concept or the teaching of the fitra yeah when i because i spent a year trying to understand islam to yeah. see if it was right for me when i learned the concept of the fitra there was a sort of like a, a flashback of my entire life yeah where there were moments where there were moments in like I think Ali calls it his jahiliya, yeah. But like the moments of my ignorance where I realized that I was the fitra was there. Yeah. Where like that where you know the, people say that the fitra will be strong enough to testify for you on the day of judgment. Yeah. Or against you rather. Yeah. That I realized that it was there my whole time and I used to push it away and I used to take another sip or I used to carry on with whatever I was doing. But it was always there. There was always that thing of where I would look at the environment I was within. And be like, am I really here? Yeah. Like, am I really doing these things? Yeah. Because I've just watched someone do something absolutely ridiculous, mm-hmm. and it's like, it was there the whole time. Why did I never? Why did I never come back sooner? But I'm glad I come back now. Alhamdulillah. Absolutely, and I guess that's um, okay. Mashallah, our sisters, we are still uh, had two. What was it? Two hundred, three hundred. We still four hundred and twenty-two. You see, I can't even do maths. I'm so tired. We have still 422 pounds away, brothers and sisters, 422 pounds away, which means if there's four people that can give 100 pounds right now, now it's the time, inshallah. Please uh, donate uh, um, generously. I know uh, many of us, many of, many of you already have, uh, but you know what? Uh, officially, the moon has not been sighted for tomorrow, which means there's another day of fasting. And it also means, subhanAllah, that we will have to have we won't have the opportunity to give within ramadan at least for another year so uh that's just like sort of um the realization of this that we've really reached uh uh you know the end of this month and uh it's not just a ordinary month it's a month full of blessings a month of quran a month of like sacrifice and a month of weakness bodily weakness you mm. know but spiritual strength so um yeah that's why I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you guys brothers and sisters 100 pounds is going to teach 16 to 30 people 16 to 32 people 16 to 32 people these prayer mats are made out of cotton um and also subhanallah we were talking about a uh, prayer mat stay prayer mat stay that's going to be uh, an event that we're going to organize in may where people will have the ability to come to a designated area somewhere in central London and pick up the prayer mats in person. So we will have a, a good crowd there. We're going to have um, the likes of Sheikh Ali Dawa, the likes of um, Smar Sujana and others. I'm so, sorry, did you say Sheikh Ali Dawa? Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know Inshallah. why I said that. <laughs> Inshallah, Inshallah. Um, I was meant to say Sheikh Mohammed. But Sheikh Ali Dawa, yeah, yeah. Um, he will be there. Uh, Imam uh, Haider, uh, <laughs> really Alama sure. Sheikh uh, Jabi, all of these guys will be there. Inshallah. All these great giants of uh, people. Mashallah, may Allah preserve them. Um, yeah, and you will have the opportunity to meet the team, the opportunity to, uh, yeah, have to get these prayer mats. I, I, I can. Well, I can already see. So, I, inshallah, I see the day already. Inshallah, I see it. It's going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be kind of the first few days when the sun is coming out again. You know, it's kind of preparation to summer. Inshallah, inshallah you will have like loads of like peep brothers. Some brothers who are from the chat will recognize each other. Um, yeah, it's going to be ice cream. We're going to have free ice cream. I'm pushing for the free ice cream, by the way, because ice cream is like my favorite food. Fair enough. I don't blame you. But ice like... cream is my favorite food. Like, I love good food. I never had, like, alhamdulillah, I always had food. Uh, I never starved. Um, involuntarily, I've never starved. I always had food. Alhamdulillah, my parents always take, took care of me. Who? Tahir. Tahir. Mashallah. Yeah, so I always had food, but, like, I'm not really foodie. So I, I haven't had, like, exotic food. Or there's like, you know, there's so many, like, you know, like food that everyone talks about. I've never had, for example, like steak in, uh, I had steak, but I never had the other thing, the, the crappy, was that? Uh, lobster. Lobster. I've never had lobster in my life. No, I feel, like, I feel like it's a bit overpriced. I don't know. i kind of grown up with the mindset. If the food costs more than £10 a person, I'm not paying. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, there's, 
So ice cream, therefore, like despite of having all this food that, you know, we had my ice cream is like my the favorite one. I love ice cream. So I'm going to push definitely uh, for that day for the uh, uh, pre-med day to have like an ice cream van where you can. <laughs> yeah, where you can have like uh, unlimited ice cream. Inshallah, you have unlimited ice cream in a tire. You, you, so uh, Salah Plus Day, Mats Day, Pray Mats Day, Pray Mats Day. It's going to be in May. We're going to invite half of London to come over and pick up the prayer mats. Everyone is going to have the ability to pick up one prayer mat. Yes. So it's going to be in May because we are getting our first shipment in May. Inshallah. Inshallah. So prayer mats day, prayer mats day is going to be a very good day. Uh, like a fun day out, you know, learning. Uh, you know, you meet all the brothers who've been able you you got to learn over Ramadan, um, yeah, and then we'll see, Subhanallah. And remember, brothers and sisters, all these prayer mats are for free, so there won't be any charge. You won't charge any. No, nobody will be charged. Um, yeah. So, are we are we getting like, bro? Let me have another. Just try. Maybe we just got a fair bit, man. Oh. You know, it's, you know when something tastes like water instead of like ah, uh, this the ice is melted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, could we potentially get your brother? To... To... Yeah, it would be it would be nice. Ice coffee, ice coffee and uh... ice and latte. Latte, yeah, and uh, potentially uh, what's that thing called? Brown. Not the other one. Cookie dough. Cookie dough. Yeah, uh, that's what he likes. He likes a yeah, cookie dough. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that I'll would just be, have a tea. If that's, that's right. cool, if that's cool, of course, yeah. yeah. Okay, may Allah bless you, uh, brother Afghan. Brother, by the way, for those who don't know, brother Afghan is uh, brother um, uh, Sheikh Sheikh Ali Dawes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sheikh Ali Dawes brother, younger brother. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's so also he, the you uh, also the star of um, the marriage documentary, you not? Know? Yeah. yeah, he yeah, plays he's the, he's the, young the younger of version of Ali in, in the marriage documentary. Um, which, uh, yeah, subhanAllah. But brothers and sisters, prayer mat's day, it's going to be in May. Oh, that rhymes. Prayer mat's day is going to be in May. But as before we go to the prayer mat's day and before we think about the big things that we want to do and achieve, we are 422 pounds away, I believe. Yeah, 422 pounds. 422 pounds, brothers and sisters. If there's, is there someone I can give to at 22 pounds right now? And that's no milk. Maybe let's start there. Let's stay no there. Like 22 pounds. Yeah. Um, and then we need about four people to give 100 pounds. SubhanAllah. Four people to give 100 pounds. And you know, brothers and sisters, when I think about this, yeah. Um, the idea is so simple. It's such a simple idea. The day itself is so simple. Uh, yes, correct. The idea itself is so simple, you know. It's um, subhanallah. Like, I imagine. I just, I don't know. Just imagine the Sahaba seeing this. I don't know what they would think, to be honest. But I, I, mean, I think what would freak them out is like, uh, let alone the idea of transliteration. Yeah, you know, the one thing I was uh, concerned about when I first received it was, can I put it on the floor? That was actually one of my concerns. I wasn't sure if I, I, I have a pin board in my room. Yeah. So I pinned it onto the wall. I was standing there reading it, but I did a little bit of research. And apparently, as long as it's not the Arabic, yeah, then it's permissible, especially if it's for the sake of Allah. You're learning Salah. Yeah. So there are fatwa saying that it is permissible if it's for the sake of Allah and it's a translation, literation of the, of the yeah. Arabic. So I'll... I think I was a bit relieved when I saw that. So of course, yeah. but whoever's and also designed has done a good job. Because the um, the one thing I actually forgot, yeah, was a uh, it was the so I didn't know the when to pray when to read Subhanahu Rabbi Allah and Subhanahu Rabbi Lazim, mm -hmm. whether it was in Sajud or Rukul. So then the opportunity this provided is that it has illustrations, and it told me when to pray which, and that, I think that was the sort of like guidance I needed mm -hmm. on when to when to read what mm -hmm. and how many times I should read it, etc. Yeah, brothers and sisters, these prayer mats are free, free of charge. You can go right now. 
to salaplus.com and you can order yourself uh, a pair of those and uh, subhanallah it's not as unlimited you can order if you think that you need three of those of course you're gonna have to type in one time you're gonna have to order them again maybe perhaps under a different name you can order as much as you have. In fact, if you're a family of five, you can order five prayer mats. SubhanAllah, we can make that happen. If you're an organization, if you're a Dawah organization, huh? Sorry? Okay. Yeah. If you're, if you're, huh? No. Yeah, if you are a Dao organization or an Islamic center, please do get in touch with us as well. We have looking to start sending these off to like um, prayer, you know, um, hubs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah. Also, give some examples to excite the chat because uh, I know one, we have a brother in Netherlands who is excited. To, he's looking forward to the one in Netherlands, right? So what other examples are you looking for? Oh, you mean brother Eric? Yeah, brother Eric. He's excited for that one. Yeah. But... Uh, but what exactly what the, about what, what the, exactly? What other states and countries do you guys plan on going to? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, in that way. Oh yeah, so subhanAllah, um, we actually before Ramadan, uh, because I'm sort of like in I because respond to most emails pertaining to uh specified orders. So if it's like individual orders or just generally orders that we deal with, um sister um our admin does it. But when it comes to like bulk all this and stuff, I've been like sort of talking to people. And subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, just before Ramadan, there were two people separately. They probably don't know each other. Um uh, so yeah, so there's so there's so there's two people. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So there's probably two people, subhanAllah, two people that um, message us separately from, uh, uh, yeah, from uh, out of out of Germany. They, oh, out of Germany. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we have we received two emails Inshallah. out of Germany, two people who emailed us and they were saying basically uh, that they, uh, yeah, that they were basically uh, interested in ordering an entire box when I I have some friends who go to different universities around the UK one of them goes to Durham and Durham's like a small city up north and they were discussing how uh, they have no mosque there the whole like whole really? city no mosque they have a few hundred Muslims so not a huge amount but a few hundred Muslims quite a few reverts as well but they don't have a mosque so they actually pray at the university so for example I believe the Eid prayer they were telling me um, just a little while ago so the Eid prayer is actually going to be in the university hall so imagine your whole city the only place you can go to is a university that lends you out the hall. Mm. Yeah, for Eid prayer, Eid, for Eid Salah. So the idea that like the Muslim community is growing in all of these places. Yeah. Like in my head, it's like, inshallah, maybe in a few years, places like Durham, yeah, which is a white predominant town. Yeah. yeah and other places across the UK, um, they will have places like that for reverts to come in or for Muslims who have like left the straight path. Yeah. And then they've been guided back. Yeah. Yeah, brothers, sisters. So um, in order to make that dream happen, in order that dreams f f happen that, these prayer mats that I'm ha holding right now, that all these prayer mats really reach all the areas in the world, we will need the resources and the support, the dua, everything to really make it happen that in Durham, not in a few years, maybe in a couple of months, that people start receiving, inshallah, these prayer mats, brothers and sisters. Um, that's the aim of this project, is to really be all comprehensive. So today we are raising funds for the prayer mats, as you can see here, brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, we already have prayer mats packaged. Um, these are all international orders, or the majority of them are international orders. They have names on it. For example, this is going to go to Netherlands. Um, the other one, let me see. This is going to go to Czech Republic. Hmm? Czech Republic. Yeah, Czech Republic. Yeah. Um, yeah, traditionally Christian country, but I think due to sort of like the influx of communism, they've kind of turned to a very atheistic uh, society, actually. Uh, the Czech, Czechs don't usually tend to believe in God no more. But alhamdulillah, there's one brother, no. the Czech Republic. Um, then there's another, uh, yeah, so a person from some USA. Uh, then we have... Hold on. We have another person from Germany. Uh, 
Yeah, what else do we have? Was from the USA. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah, there's plenty of people from all over the Belgium, you know. So, like, there's plenty of people from all over the place. And brothers and sisters, what we've been doing is, uh, if you look at, uh, uh, we've been writing names down. So, we used to write from an amazing soul. Uh, but what we tend to do now is make, is we encourage uh, the recipients of these to make dua for the person. So, for example, here, it says, make a dua for Mrs. Nazim and Javid. And this is going to go to the USA. SubhanAllah, and this is the beauty of this. And then here we have another order. It says, make dua for Muhammad Hassan. Uh, this is going to go to Belgium again. Um, and then we have another dua or another. Yeah, so here we read from Muhammad plus anonymous uh, plus Radu, Radu Sian. This is going to go to Ireland. So yeah, this is how this is the this the things of the affair. This is how we are dealing with these, and then these are all primates that have the name on. Uh, so here, for example, from Amazing Soul, from Amazing Soul again. These are all anonymous donations, by the way. Uh, but then we have here make dua for Zishan. Uh, we have another one here make dua for Zara Suleiman. And that's the sister, mashallah, yesterday and today, who's donated, subhanAllah, again, me from an anonymous soul. So, brothers and sisters, we're trying to personalize every single prayer mat, matching it with the donations. Huh? Oh, yeah. So, we're trying to um, personalize each uh, prayer mat that goes out so that, you know, when people... Receive it, they can straight away make dua for the person. So, subhanAllah, not only are you giving a salakah, you're also most certainly um, guaranteed to attain or gain a, a, a dua, uh, make, uh, you know, make, make someone make dua for you. Uh, if it's a new Muslim, mashallah, you know, the the, the ratio of, of dua has been accepted just because, you know, new Muslims don't have any uh, considerable sins on them. So, they're kind of like fresh babies. And uh, they tend to be all quite sincere as well. And then obviously, um, yeah, so that is, is like beautiful. And then obviously Muslims who come back to Allah, who repent. So and in and, and, and that level of sincerity, with those type of dua. Basically, you want people like that to make dua for you, subhanAllah. That's the exact people you want um, people to make dua for you. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, subhanAllah, we have Brother Haider here. He's going to talk more about his story again in a minute. But in the meantime, before we do that, I felt like we can introduce him. Could we please play uh, uh, Sister um, Brother Hader's uh, video? Oh sister, God. yeah. Yeah, Brother uh, Hader's video, please. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, we're going to play Brother Hader's uh, story, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. Of you. Um, is there two? Um, Javi, there's two videos, right? Or is there only one video? Yeah, can we play the other one that we haven't played yet? Yeah. So the one they did in the other room. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're going to play that video, subhanAllah, of Brother Hader, um, of uh, his story and, and Byron's story. And, and these there were two people who received these prayer mats and it led them to be here with us, raising funds for, for this, subhanAllah. Start of the year to be honest it's been ongoing for i'd say on and off about two years the first time i went to a mosque and prayed yeah was just after college ended actually okay after learning about the culture the people i it was it was on and off i never had like strong feelings to come towards is uh, uh islam straight away yeah and and that changed when i was speaking to my friend Hader about it when he was having doubts himself I learned, I learned a lot from him when he was struggling. And then when he eventually reverted, I guess I kind of felt it as well. Because mm. on the spot, I was like, I, I kind of want to revert as well. It was, wow. it, I felt at the moment. And obviously, mm. I was nervous to start. Yeah. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I've been mm. growing up in a 
a very traditional British household sure. where Islam isn't exactly uh, celebrated a lot over mm. here. And um, I had I'd no idea what to expect apart from what I've learned in the last two years, which isn't a lot, but it's enough clearly to uh, to be here right now and learn with you guys. So that's, that's pretty much my story. Mashallah. Okay, so yeah. um, by, uh, Byron, you have something uh, on your lap. What is that? Of course, the pray mat that <laughs> the prayer mat that I was gifted from my friend Haydar. Okay, so Byron, alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, learn how to pray and his friend Haydar for the Salah Plus program, inshallah, brothers and sisters. We are trying to fundraise for that. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Yeah. So, yeah, subhanAllah, that was the video you saw there of Brother Haydar and Brother Byron, just kind of this sort of like talking uh, about, so illustrating their journey to Islam and how they in influence each other, subhanAllah. Uh, brother uh, Haida is someone who had uh, immense struggle with his deen. He was questioning it. At one point, he didn't really identify with it. And he's come back to Islam now. And he's ordered the prayer mat, these prayer mats, four months ago. SubhanAllah, four months ago, Brother Haida ordered these prayer mats. Um, and yeah, and now he knows how to pray and he passed on his prayer mat. That's what this clip was all about that you saw. So, brothers and sisters, SubhanAllah, we are still, I um, think, Hold on, how much money? Um, yeah, we're still 22 pounds away, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters. To 22 pounds to reach the 100 mark, and then 422 pounds to reach the 500 mark. So, brothers and sisters, if there's anyone right now, brothers and sisters, the donation has kind of freezed. I don't know if people have gone to pray, I don't know what it is, uh, but uh, the donations have freezed. So, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, we really need uh to you know really reach our goals for our brothers and sisters please if you can right now if there's someone that can give 100 pounds 100 pounds or if there's two people that can give 50 pounds in fact or if there's four people that can give 50 pounds so just that we kind of get there we keep the donations up subhanallah yeah just to correct you he says that over the respect of prayer it's not just a cloth to wrap around yeah i read that is he saying that you're disrespecting it by wrapping around the mic? No, that's not disrespect. What are you talking about? Yeah, well, first of all, where's the disrespect? There's no Quran on here. It's not Quran. It's a prayer mat that is actually on the floor usually. Yeah. The disrespect. So is it disrespectful then when we put it on the floor as well? I'm putting it around the, the mic so that people can see it. Yeah. And this is also... It's true that we Muslims have, you know, we have things that we, we consider sacred. And this is a learning curve for a lot of people. There's very few things that we have, we consider sacred in terms of objects in Islam. We don't, we're not like the Christians, nor are we like the Jewish or other traditional or Hindus. Okay. We don't deify objects. Okay. We don't deify objects. We don't worship objects you know what i mean there's not much in in islam where we have respect towards objects like that where you know and then the only thing that uh we venerate and we, we put respect on is the quran and it's not because of the quran it's a book or anything it's because it's the word of allah yeah and and then you chat what what else what do you what do you think what other objects do we venerate to the extent that i can wrap it around the mic how is that disrespectful subhanallah explain to me how it's disrespectful I'm, I'm very interested you know i keep it here so that people can see that it's the prayer mat and also that it's practical you know people carry this in their pockets you know but people will put this in their wash machine people will put it on the floor they'll put it on wet floors you know they will put it outside outdoorsy you know, we are, we're not, um, what's it called? Subhanallah. You know, uh, there's no Quran on this, no Arabic Quran. There's just descriptions and translation, the transliteration of the Quran. But I appreciate you for your advice. But I don't think I'm disrespecting uh, the prayer mat in any form. Subhanallah. Uh, these are prayer mats are quite dear to me. Uh, and I'm happy what they do is change. You've had an uh, interesting question and response. Yeah. Well, no, sorry, not in response. It was an interesting question. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I understand it correctly, but I'll read it word for word. Yeah. Is which salah have you printed on the map? There are different types of salah. Some are right, some are wrong. How do we know which one of you are doing is right? Now, I'm assuming he means the actions on the prayer map. 
which salah? Salah, so like, because uh, the difference between salah, there's no difference between. I mean, salah. there are no difference between salah, but there are difference in detail mm. as to what constitutes the salah. Okay. So there are, for example, the Maliki way of praying is that they do sadl, which means to put their hands near. Oh yes, sir. right. They do that, um, and obviously, I don't do that. I mm. don't follow that, but there's some people who follow it. Um, and we we are pretty much you know this the I mean the the salah that's described here is 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 pretty much sort of the salah you know that most sort of like Han Hanifi or Hanbalis would would pray you know yeah it's a standardized version of salah the salah that you know um, that we we mm. we pray according you know which is sort of more like Hanbali. Uh, but this is not to say that this salah is in is the is the only way to pray. Yeah, you know? of course. There's differences, of course, between Shafi'is and, and Hanifis, how we pray, or uh, Hanbalis. Uh, but that's not the point. No, of course. This imagine if that was the point, then nobody is going to pray. Subhanallah. You know, remember, brothers and sisters, these are people who are learning how to pray, and to believe that once you learn how to pray, that's where it ends, is the biggest mistake. What when you know how to pray, when you have a bit more knowledge, then you can start doing your research and finding out which you think the best salah is. But not for someone who has never prayed before, or for someone who's lost his prayer, or for someone who was born a Muslim and doesn't pray. I don't think uh, they will be interested in knowing which is the right prayer. Praying first and foremost is the, our 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 um, our goal is to really just get people to pray. Subhanallah. Um, and then from there, subhanAllah, slowly but surely, they can, you know, increase their prayer and perf perfect their prayer, you know. Inshallah. Um, the way the way it was shown to me, because I was a bit confused early on, because uh, my family is technically Hanafi. Yeah. But, um, one of the videos I watched uh, initially before receiving the prayer mat, yeah. it was by, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of him, Sheikh Asim Hakim. It's a very long, like one hour video. Yeah. How to pray Salah. Yeah. Um, but essentially, it was uh, explained that the four madhabs um, in other sunnah they uh, have differences of opinion on certain like, actions during the salah yeah but then they're all right because they all have their own defensible points for each of them and we don't we don't compare between the madhabs we kind of just we understand one another we're right we can pray side by side by one another and you see that in, i realized that in the when i went to Dawawi. yeah people right next to me were praying uh, with yeah. the maliki form etc and oh. as muslims uh, we we should realize as other sunnah that is what we're yeah you know so Okay. Ibrahim uh, Nasser. Yeah. Oh, it's the brother. It's our beloved brother from uh, Dearborn, Michigan. Yeah, mashallah. Did he, um, yeah. Yes, he did. How much was his donation? Um, he's on the board. So in total, from we're not sure what the split. Where's, where's on the board? It's just right there number, at silver, but um, it's at four thousand five hundred and ninety-seven pounds. Five thousand. Nine hundred. I think he's the one that gave the thousand. Is it? Yeah. So put to five so, nine. Five nine. Yeah. Zero, yeah. Yeah. Subhanallah. So that. But was... no. But is it in dollars or pounds? Because. That was a problem with time, so we didn't understand. No, I think your brother told us that it was someone else. Um, it was him. When we get a. Uh, yeah, it was him. Can we get a dry wipe eraser, please? Yeah. A dry wipe marker, please. Brother Ibrahim, mashallah, may Allah bless you. The, Marshall, actually, yeah. I want to say this to the audience. When I when I first I first, first or second night I came here, and uh, Ibrahim Manasseh has sent me in a donation of a few hundred dollars, a few hundred pounds. Yeah. And uh, well, he had uh, donated a few hundred pounds, and his exact message was, "Make dua for my debt." Mm -hmm. And that's on that. This is the, yeah. thing, the reason why I like coming here. The reason why I like coming here is uh, the lessons I learned, the hadith that I'm taught. Mm -hmm. Like it's an opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. Uh, it was then followed up with the hadith regarding if you make dua, if you, if you make sadaqah jariya, you'll prevent calamity. And mm. nobody has ever become poor from giving sadaqah jariya. Mm. Yeah, all sorts of lessons. I never knew that before. Yeah, okay, fine, I've only been a Muslim for four months, but the opportunity to learn these mm. and also witness people commit to good deeds. Not only that, then Ibrahim Manasseh then went to Tarawi a few days later. I think it was the same night a few days later. And then had asked 12 of his, I think 12 of his brothers yeah, to then organize and see how much money they could put together. And then they put in like more than $1,000. SubhanAllah, yeah. Yeah. And that's the beauty I keep on seeing. So what was the amount just to confirm? Five nine? Yeah. So yeah, so the thousand Jabi? pounds. What was, was the amount? Five thousand nine hundred. 
5,900. Yeah, uh, so from the Bosom Dibble, Michigan, then Ibrahim Manasseh, it's 5,900 pounds now. SubhanAllah. Which, <laughs> which has kept you in third hey, place. Oh, oh, no. I said I don't need to be bullied, but I didn't take all from the ball. You have to listen, bro. You see that, don't you? Huh? You said you don't need to be Yeah, it was him. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah, so we, um, brother Ibrahim, so we had some uh, false intel. Hence why I said uh, trusted sources, but those sources can't be trusted because we were told that <laughs> the it Sheikh was, Ali Dawa. Yeah, it was someone else who gave it. But subhanAllah, may Allah bless you, may Allah bless the community. You guys have been integral, integral to the entire project and the operation. And I hope that we can really have close close knits together and, and, and remain close in the future, working together with this panel. I know how much you wanted to partake in the dawah, and I think you have all the right tools and the heart and the courage to do so. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to oh, really give you the ability. He's even online now. That's you too. Of course. Yeah, sure. Hey, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you guys doing? Um, I just wanted to call in because <laughs> I don't want, uh, you know, people in general thinking that I'm telling you to correct the... No, absolutely not. You no, know, that's... Just to show off that it's 5,900. It's not the point. It's just uh, obviously people who donated to me. Yeah. You know, I, when I add it all up, I'm going to say, see, this is what I brought. This is what you guys yes. brought. And, yes. You know, so I don't want no misunderstanding. I don't do this. It's right. only the right way. Yeah, it's only the right way, subhanAllah. And it, it should be known. It should be known that there is a community out there in Dearborn that is supportive and that is propagating the name of Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. People need to know this, of course. Yeah, it's also the beauty of the fact that he had initially made that donation with the people attached, and he had left a comment saying that I had gotten people to donate this, etc. We had left the name on the board as just Ibrahim and Nasser. Mm. He had then contacted us saying that please change it from my name because it's not just me, mm. change it to the people of Dearborn, Michigan. And then Beautiful. he made a call out saying, If you're if anyone's watching from Michigan or anyone from America, yeah, please donate to this cause because he it's believes in it. And it's the fact that this man had the, uh, what's the word? The, not even the humility, something else, but the ability to then share this and then take his name away because yeah. people could read his name every single day yeah. and say, oh, Ibrahim, when I say, Ibrahim, when I say, may Allah, like, bless him, yeah? Mm. But he changed it to his community because that's what he cares about. So one of the, this, this individual, Ibrahim. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, uh, Ibra uh, Brother Ibrahim, you know, in Surah, Surah Al-Baqarah, it talks about, writing things down you know when there's transactions between yeah. people and the this is exactly what like we, that, yeah you have to yes mashallah so that's exactly what we're doing here so i know we know for a fact uh that you're not doing this to brag or or anything subhanallah may allah bless you yeah uh, trust me i won't <laughs> I, I'm a, I won't do something stupid like this just to like you know to brag or something you know yeah yeah sure Stuff how, like how you doing uh, i mean it's uh the moon site uh, the moon has not been seen which means uh, Eid is on Wednesday. So, how do you feel about that? Another day. It's better for us, you know. Yes, yes. More but like, uh, it, but it also means it's the the last day, which is also upsetting for us. Last night, yeah, yeah. yeah. very upset. It's very, very. Um, you know, off camera, it probably brings you know tears to the eyes. You know, you don't. Yeah. Wanna, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not a good day when it's the last day. You know, it's a good day because they. You know, usually they say the end of Ramadan yeah. and it's the greatest days, but like, of course, yeah. it's very yeah. sad. You know, because you don't know when you're gonna die and you don't know if you're gonna Anyone. make it. You know, another That's year. Why yeah. people, if you're watching, you know, like donate. Don't people don't understand? Forget. We, I know when you guys say like this might help. You know, sixteen to thirty-two people, a hundred to two hundred people. Yeah, for, man. If you teach those people to pray, then they have kids and they teach their kids to pray. Yeah. That's what's 16 to 32. You're teaching generations to pray, you know, more than two people. If someone yeah. has five kids, six kids, he teaches all of them to pray. The fact it's also the yeah. Qadiri, you know, especially when we're, we're nearing the end of Ramadan. Yeah. And this is give even a dollar, give even a dollar, a pound, give anything, put your name to it. You know, yeah. Mahayama, on the day of judgment, everyone's going to be asking their mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers, their kids, you know, give me just one hasana. Give me just one. And no one's going to give anything. Even the prophets, Yomar Qayyama, think about that. Yomar Qayyama, yeah. even the prophets are saying, nafsi, nafsi, myself, yeah. myself. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, subhanAllah, obviously, like, 
every I know a lot of people they have a lot of good intention, you know, to want to give uh they want to give sadaqa. And sometimes it yeah. is hard, you know. Some people they have yes. family members, they have to pay for things and things like that. May Allah make it easy for them because I know a lot of I mean, people out there they do I have mean. the niya. You know, I mean, subhanAllah, it is hard because that's what made, you know, for example, Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr Sadiq so great when he yeah. gave all his wealth away. It's not something easy to do when, uh, you know, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi asked him, he's like, what did you leave for your family? He's like, Allah wa Rasulah, Allah and his messenger. Wow. And Umar ibn Khattab, he gave half his wealth and he's like, I kept half for my family. So like no one did what Abu Bakr did, you know, like, and that's what made him obviously the top, most top tier companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, when you when you give up something like that, when you look at your family and you're like, you know, I'm a, I'm gonna keep you in Allah's hands. Absolute trust in Allah. Yeah, absolute. Like the plan, he like not even an, an ounce of doubt. Mm -hmm. Allah's gonna take care of my family. That's that's what makes you top tier. Subhanallah. You know, you mentioned that as well. I think there's a different riwayat uh, of the same hadith where it talks about how the Prophet actually prevented. Uh, Umar bin Khattab from giving all of his wealth because he knew that Abu Bakr was capable of doing it but anyone wouldn't have been capable yeah. like just because of the sheer belief <laughs> so yeah it's true well it's true so that's why your story brother Ibrahim and the story of the brothers in Durban who are, have plenty to worry about you know because especially the Yemeni community over there there's plenty of disasters happening in Yemen right now as we speak mm. Yeah, may Allah make it easy for them, man. I mean, all I over mean, the I world, mean. man. There's a lot of people. I mean, I mean, yes, there's a course. lot of people suffering, man. Yeah, a lot of people. I know we live. We're in. I'm in America. You're in the UK. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. You know, we're living yeah. lives. But Allah, sometimes, for example, uh, give a shout out to a guy on Instagram. His name is the Real Raith. You probably know him. You probably don't know him. Yeah. If you go on Instagram, he covers his face and his voice, right? And he okay. goes around like the Middle East and things like that, mm -hmm. and he talks to poor people. And he usually like he just says, "What's your condition? You know, what's your what's your uh, yeah. the, what's the, your the wish? Real life. What's the real name? life." Do you mind sending it in just how you spell it in the messages in the um, private messages? Let's see. Or in yeah. the comments, to look at that. Because yeah, we would love to see what the work he does. Let's see. But it's not even that. He shares it online, but he covers his face. Mm. That part, I realize, if you look at the world nowadays, a lot of people they like to give charity. They like to do it facing the camera face, face and they're the looking world. like this and they're passing it over to the person. Still I post right, it right? Uh, in the chat. That's his thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What he does, he goes around, he asks people like, what do you want? What's your condition? And subhanAllah, like you look at the conditions of the people. Like uh, there yeah. was a mother, she was a mother of uh, like three boys and two girls. No husband. Her husband passed away. And he's asking her, like, what have you? What's going on? You know, what's your, what do you, what's your payments? She would say it's five hundred dinar, you know, yeah. they're not, and they cut off our power three days ago, and wallah, he would, we've been drinking only uh, tea and so... bread. And subhanAllah, it's like, man, you start doing like I start scratching my head, like, what am I complaining about, man? Mm. What are mm. we complaining about? Every day we buy coffee for five dollars, like. We're living our lives. We have cars. We have electricity. We have water. Alhamdulillah. Wallah. Like, Allah. it makes you think your hasab yom al-qiyamah starts to make you think like, hmm. what yeah. is Allah? Because Allah says in the Quran, He says, ثُمَّ لَا تُسْأَلَنَّ يَوْمَ أَذَنْ عَنَ النَّعِيمِ Yeah, yeah subhanAllah. He says, you will be questioned about your na'im, your ni'mah, the blessings that Allah gave you. You will, you will surely be questioned about them. Yeah. Your eyesight, yeah. your drink, your, your rizq, everything. There's actually a story, um, a story I came across recently. Uh, if you don't mind, Ibrahim, if I share it. Yep. Um, the title of the story is You Bought Me Dates and You Did Not Remove the Seeds from Them. And you may be thinking, what's this about? But essentially, this is a phrase that some Arabs have said in history. There's a man by the name of, uh, oh, I mean, we all know this, Omar bin uh, Al Khattab. Uh, he, was, he was wandering around um, the city. And he saw Abu Bakr Siddiq in the early morning, sorry, early evening, yeah. heading out to the outskirts of Medina mm -hmm. um, after Salah. And he would enter a small house for a few hours. And you may, th may be thinking like, okay, he's entered a small house for a few hours. And then he would leave and then go to his own house. And Umar, 
Omar knew everything about Abu Bakr Siddiq, but he didn't know about this. He didn't know what this house was. He didn't know who lived in that house. Nothing. And many, many days had like passed after the uh, after uh, Abu Bakr had passed away, mm-hmm. and uh, Omar still didn't know what the house was. So he decided. To, sorry, no, this was I've gotten it wrong. Days had passed, and the um, the Caliph of the Believers is still visiting this house, and Omar still did not know that what Abu Bakr was doing inside. So Omar decided to enter the house after Abu Bakr left, so that he can see with his eyes what is inside. And and know what Abu Bakr was was doing after Salah every single day. When Omar entered the house, this very small house, by the way, yeah, he found an old woman, like a very old woman, mm. and uh, she couldn't move, and uh, there was no one else in the whole house, and she was also blind. She was blind, yeah. Subhanallah. And uh, Omar was surprised. He was genuinely like astonished, and he was. Uh, he said by what he saw, and he said he wanted to know what the what was so secretive about this. Um, person and why Abu Bakr had such a secret relationship with this old blind woman Yeah. so he asked her what does the man who comes here every single day do in your house Yeah. yeah. referring to Abu Bakr Siddiq and, uh, sorry I just lost my line and, and she, the, the woman said Wallahi I do not know my son this man <laughs> comes every single day he cleans he sweeps the house mm-hmm. Yeah. he cleans he sweeps the house he prepares food for me and he leaves without talking to me. Yeah? Doesn't say a single word during this whole thing. Doesn't ask the woman to thank him, essentially. Yeah? And then this was a few days after the Abu Bakr Siddiq had passed away. And uh, Omar oh, had... Uh, Akbar, Allah, Omar had, like, you know, obviously, buried, like, been there for his burial, I guess, and uh, decided to return to this house. Yeah? He had done everything. He had, he had, sweep the, he had swept the floors. He had uh, pr- cleaned the, the room. He had prepared some food for her. And uh, the first day, the woman has said, "Did your what happened to your friend?" And Omar said, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Did your friend pass away?" Mm. And he goes, "How do you know?" Mm. Well, she's a blind woman, and she can't move. Mm. This is the thing that she can't move; she's blind. Mm. And she says, "You bought me dates, and you did not remove the seeds from them." Allahu Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah. You see, this is this is the beautiful relationship between Abu Abu Bakr and Umar bin Khattab, yeah. uh, which so is the ending of the story is what gets me. Okay, here. sorry. It's okay. Um, it's Omar bin um, Omar bin Khattab. He uh, crouched on his knees. He fell on his knees. Yeah, and of he, course. His eyes filled with tears. Yeah, and he said the famous phrase: "The caliphs are tired after your Abu Bakr." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should we cry for Abu Bakr or should we cry for Omar or cry today about the feelings and morals that have collapsed and deteriorated? Deteriorated. That last part isn't a part of the story. That's been mm. added on by whoever's posted this. But it was. It's this sort of. Like... It's it's just this beautiful thing between mm. this beautiful relationship of what like I kind of I, I get a little glimpse of when I look at the top donors mm. when like people kind of competing, you know, yeah. and it's a competition that is filled full of love and hope that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accepts it. Uh, Umar Khattab. He, he couldn't beat Abu Bakr. Like Abu Bakr was always two steps ahead, mm. <laughs> even to the smallest detail, like. The date, the, seeds of the, the seat of the dates. Subhanallah, what well, great human the, beings. The, the care. The, he, he was a caliph. Wow. He was a caliph. This man was, the, he was the first caliph yeah, after the Prophet Muhammad wow. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Well, I have goosebumps still, right now. Well, I do as well. And uh, first caliph after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he still took the time to care for one old woman yeah, who was yeah. blind. To the point where he didn't, he was afraid of her perhaps either choking on the date or mm. breaking her tooth or anything like that. To remove the seed. Yeah, I, I have a I have a niece in my family, yeah, and when I give her some dates now, yeah, I even I forget she's a she's a young child, mm. and even I forget and she's like biting into it and she hurts her tooth. I, I'm a grown adult. I'm giving it to a child. Yeah, I should be more aware. But they care, like on the, the first, level of care. Yeah, the first week of Ramadan, I realized, and I was just like, and we know, um, and brother Ibrahim, I don't know if you know about this as well. We unfortunately in the UK we have a crisis with like. Uh, loads and loads of family members putting their like elderly into like care mm. care homes yeah, it's the same thing in america and like the abuse that these elderly people receive in these mm. care homes sick people. is horrendous it's sick people absolutely sick people there have been like exposés about it like video recordings and, but it's not even resulted in a national change the, the, the yeah. thing about britain yeah is that this country is what the, the fifth most economically largest country in the world and yet mm. our elderly or well, the elderly of this country, rather, yeah, 
because I know that many of the Muslim community we don't accept this. Mm. I think the population of the elderly homes is ninety eight percent natives and Christian mm. or atheists. But um, yeah, this the idea, the concept of leaving someone in there, and then for weeks, perhaps even months, and for some people for years not seeing their own child, their own imagine their own son or daughter not coming to visit them, their own grandson and granddaughter not coming to visit them. Yes. Yeah, so so um, the, uh, yeah, it just shows you, it shows you, and this is. Wow, and look, these are like, these are the companions of mm. the Prophet, okay? It's not even the Prophet himself. Now imagine the level care that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had. Course, imagine that. You know, we know of the famous story of the young boy and the bird, you know, the young, the bird passes away mm. and the Prophet asks him, what happened to the bird? Is the bird, knowing the bird has passed away, okay. but just to show the level of empathy that, from the smallest bird in a community, an animal in a mm. community, to like the strongest warrior on the battlefield. You know, the prophet mm. was intensely uh, connected to every single part of what makes a community. And I think, subhanAllah, Wallahi Muslims, this is something that we are emulating. These are our, these are our heroes. These are our exemplars. These are the men and women that we look up to, you know? Yeah, subhanAllah, yeah, yeah. they had, I was just going to say, subhanAllah, they had absolute control of their, of their mindset. You know, wow. they're not wild people, right? Like, yeah. Like you said, subhanAllah, they, they're able to control their emotions and discipline and mm. all that. They see a child, the Prophet Sallam, he understands yeah. to be, you know, to show empathy. But when it came yeah. to, for the sake of Allah, subhanAllah, mm -hmm. it's, it's absolute control of mind and emotion and being able to understand situations not like wild people you know we've got people <laughs> joining the uh, ali dawah chats showing their private parts a wild animal subhanallah. Beast, subhanallah. You know, like, subhanallah like, yes 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 absolutely that's such a beautiful and, example that you bring in and i wanted to also man just another point like when you think about it like abu bakr Sadiq and umar al-khattab you know the companions when uh, you see the Prophet Sallallahu die. You know, yeah. that's, 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 especially Abu Bakr Sadiq being a Muslim basically the all 23 years. Mm -hmm. Like your best friend passed away, you know, like, and all you want to do is enter Jannah with him. Mm -hmm. Like he wanted to see Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam very badly in Jannah. So subhanAllah, it's like it makes you, it, it kind of gives you an understanding of why they were that way. You know, Abu Bakr was it like Abu Bakr was that way because he knows he's gonna see Jannah. He knows he's gonna see the Prophet. He yeah. knows he's gonna see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a yeah. knowing, like he knows. Yeah. Uh, like he knows he's not losing anything. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of this uh, the Ummah really needs to get back to, you know, and knowing absolutely, absolutely. You know, like Allah says, li, uh, worship your Lord until the certainty comes. Be certain that you're gonna die. Be certain. That's why many times the Prophet says many times. He says, Man amana billah wal al -akhir. Many times, like in the beginning of a hadith, it says, Whoever believes in Allah and the last day, then yeah. for example, will say, say good or remain si silent. Why is he saying that? It's wow. annoying. Like whoever believes in this. Whoever knows he's going to face Allah, you know, and the last day, like whoever believes in Allah and he's going to face the last day, then do this. SubhanAllah. That's why you see the Muslims who are true believers and they know they're going to die. They're very, very different. You can tell the difference in ibadah. You can tell the difference in character. You can, you can just tell a person who knows, he's, you know, uh, that he's going to die and face Allah. And the, and the one who's half-half Muslim, you know, wow. a part-time Muslim, you can tell. SubhanAllah. That's by the way, power. by the way, before we continue, uh, mm -hmm. can you? There's an annoying person in the chat. Who's this person, Tayyib uh, Khawaja? Who's this person? Just saying some random stuff. Yeah, no, it's not making any sense. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, if you don't stop, this people. maybe give him a timeout. Is it? Yeah, just a bunch of uh, nonsense. Yeah. It's... Okay. Well, I'm, um, yeah. Time him out for now, inshallah. Go ahead, uh, yeah. go ahead, brother. Yeah. Okay. He's banned him out. <laughs> He's banned now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we want to like keep like a very cool, like super, like friendly community that, you know, it's an exemplar. You know. 
We've had a really good community this month, haven't we, on the chat? Do you want to say that in the cam and sit down? Hey, yeah, please. Yeah. Join us. Uh, but yeah, subhanAllah. He, he, uh, Brother Jabi was just saying that we had a very beautiful community. And um, yeah, we want to like, you know, Brother Ibrahim, we want to keep this up, you know. We want to make this an ongoing thing. Uh, and especially because there are people out there who, you know, and Allah, may Allah accept it from them. They're very active during Ramadan and they sort of kind of with away throughout the year. But we want to yeah. be a community that is here 365, you know, and um, and that's inshallah the aim here. So people like yourself as well, like I said before, when you went on the phone, um, you know, we hope to like stay in touch with you closer and, you know, pot potentially even work with you on some capacity because we know if, that you're very. If you have if you have an Instagram, tell Ali Dawa uh, to give you mine. Okay. To the both of you, you know, because I know Ali yes. Dawa, he rarely checks his uh, Instagram Yeah, yeah, messages. I will, I will I, ask him, I will ask him, if inshallah. I, yeah. If I ever come to UK, inshallah, I'll message you and tell yeah. you I'm coming, you know, see all the brothers yeah. and st things like that. Exactly. You, Because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm more responsive online, so you, inshallah. you get through me before you get to, <laughs> to him. <laughs> how, yeah. how, by the way, how is, uh, like, Speaker's Corner, for example, if you guys go there? I know it's very different on camera. How is it when you guys uh, go there? Is it just like a small area where you guys debate, or is it just a giant park? Oh, no. Just follow um, this X Sunny, the X the, um, the Sunny that we can't pin the donation. But it's in the description. Yeah, so we can't X, pin the donation. X the Sunny, the, um, the donation link can't be pinned in the comments, but it, you can find the description of the video. Yeah, yeah, so it's in the description. So if you check the description on YouTube, you'll be able to find the yeah. link there, inshallah. So yeah, by the way, brothers and sisters, we're still raising funds. We're still a fundraising. Uh, just to double check, someone has asked, is this cause zakat uh, eligible? Um, no, we, ha we haven't um, We haven't um, had a, a clarification or a fatawa that uh, legislates this to be uh, zakat compliant. So f as for now, no. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I'm like you. I don't like to deal with uh, zakat stuff because I don't want to be liable in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I do a lot of charities for like different stuff here in Dearborn, yeah. but like yeah. they always ask me, is this zakat eligible? I say like, look, I don't want you to give me money for something, you know. Absolutely. And obviously, Absolutely. Like, Subhanallah. Yeah, but that, to your question, so how much? Uh, what's what's the this this uh, state? We are, so we are 362 pounds away, brothers and sisters, 362, three pounds away. So if there's three people that can give 100 pounds, subhanAllah, three people, which will six, I will teach 16 to 32 people. But like, like brother Ibrahim was saying, this is just, you know, the, the bare minimum. Think about it in, in ways of generations and think of it in a way of thousand years. Imagine thousand years from now on, people are still praying because the origin can be traced back to the donation you're given. To these primates but brother ibrahim to your question that you were asking about um speaker's corner subhanallah so speaker's corner is actually just the corner it's literally like just a, a small area of a big <laughs> of a big oh, park. okay You're right. okay so, yeah, the park hyde is park is the park okay speaker's yeah, corner is park. Park. <laughs> okay. yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah speaker's corner is a uh, protected piece of area where i think every sunday um all free speech unless it's treasonous is allowed in the park so it's been protected for since, like, I read the history, it's like 1890, something like that. Mm. Since 1890, Speaker's Corner has been a thing, part of Britain's history. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's, yeah. it's been a bit towards the Muslims. Yeah. Speaker's uh, Corner has done, a, has done a lot of amazing yeah. work, man. I've, I've been watching Speaker's Corner, man, like probably seven years. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's That's, been, um, it's been mm -hmm. a while. That was... Um, Seven years, six years, seven years. I would say that's sort of like the golden era of like the second wave of Speaker's Corner. Mm. Like, because that's where like the Muhammad Hijabs and um, yeah, Hijab and other people are kind of emerging and starting to kind of build a bit of, of like a buzz. Um, because before that, you have like very early Speaker's Corner, which is kind of connected more to like the 2010s and like 90s. Um, yeah. and then it changes kind of like in 2016 it, 15 it changes and it was really nice because it's not it's it's like uh it's quick crossfire you know it's not yeah. like a 30 minute debate he speaks nonsense yeah. and then you have to debate what he said in 30 minutes it's just no you 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 can pin people down on points 
And I yeah. think, to be completely honest, like worldwide, worldwide, it, it was a public view of dismantling every other belief other than Islam. Yeah. From the world. Mm-hmm. Speaker's Corner was a pure, like, was a pure demonstration that atheists don't know what they're talking about. That Christian yeah. Christianity makes no sense. Like, yeah. And subhanAllah, that's why, <laughs> uh, you know, what do they call it? Muslim corner now? The Muslims really have taken corner. over. Like, because <laughs> Christians can't, like, when you talk to Christians, for example, they can't make da'wah for their belief. Yeah. yeah. Christianity no, no, makes no sense. They can. It's, it's very funny. They can make da'wah. Uh, there's an individual called Bob. Oh, I'd love to meet him. Bob man. the Builder? I, no, sorry. I'd love to meet him again. I met him once Yeah, when I was strolling past the speaker's corner. This was about last year summer when I was still confused about my beliefs. And it's honestly, Bob the Builder, I don't, know yeah. blessing, um, I don't know if it's a blessing for Allah. But I then got and asked him, I said, um, what what Bible should I read? Because I was confused. I was honestly, I was confused because I wasn't sure if I should read a Roman Catholic Bible, a Protestant Bible, KGB, um, the English Standard Version, etc. I asked him, what Bible do you think I should read? And his immediate response was to insult me. The immediate response was to insult me. He went, he literally, he said, he said to my face, he's like, all you Muslims, and I, I, my immediate response, I'm not Muslim. Mm. Yeah, he was like, don't you, don't lie to me. I know what you're like. All you people trying to come here. Well, mm. I'm just like, bro, relax. After about 30 seconds, I, I was so shy. Yeah, so after mm. 30 seconds, I was like, I'm not taking this anymore. Mm. I left, I was with one of my friends as well, you know. Mm. And we're both just like, oh, okay, we're never coming back here. Mm. Yeah, but it was just one of those moments. Like, imagine he had said something else. Cause I like I go to the box bookstore at least. Yeah, subhanallah, he, yeah, he so turned that, you away from from nonsense. Yeah, yeah, he you. scared me off it. He scared me off it. Like the thing is, I still I, I own Bibles now. Yeah, I own Bibles now. But Alhamdulillah, yeah, when I read it, but I compare for example, if you compare the KGV to the ESV, yeah, and you see the thing. Like, had he had given me a recommendation that day, I don't know where my life would be. You know what? Is so know. Wait, you know what? Is so funny about speakers Allah, corner. Allah, that's Allah, that's a, that's a powerful story. I might actually retell him. I would say, oh, by the way, thank you for. Uh, Sending one one of one of uh one of what one of our friends over. He was kind of considering almost looking into the Christian Bibles, but you kind of send him to the Quran straight away. So I just mm. wanted to thank you, uh, just to pull his leg. But um, brother Ibrahim, you know the thing with Speaker's Corner is that um, okay, the surface is sort of like the videos that go viral, which are sort of like the Christian. But and you've said this before, so uh, brother Ibrahim, that the uh, the the topics or the subjects have kind of become stale. It's kind of the same conversation over a decade now. Um, but there are very, very, and I think you will thrive there. The very, very interesting conversations off camera. A lot of times, like I had like one of my best conversations off camera with people where you really like, there's no ego involved and there's just pure exchange and discussion. Well, no, no, that's what, that's what I was going to say, Wallah. When, when yeah. he was talking, mm. I was going to bring it up. And yeah. it's just a personal like belief that I have. Yeah. That Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm-hmm. this is what I believe, Allah, mm. but Allah guides who you want. But I yeah. believe if you if you have a lying heart, if it's a, like mm. a lies to you, to yourself, it lies to people, you know, yeah. if, uh, you're just a liar in general. Mm-hmm. Like Allah won't guide you. You always notice the people who who listen, who 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 actually sit yeah. with you and listen, and don't and yeah. don't have a bias. Yes, the fitra, the fitra comes out. They're not lying to themselves. The fitra yes, comes absolutely. Out and they become Muslim. It's the people who are so hard rooted, like, so, like Subhanallah, Abu. Like for example, uh, Abu Jah. Abu Jah was so he's yeah. a liar. Yeah, he lied about the Prophet. He was so rooted down his disbelief. He's just a lying heart. Mm-hmm. That's what some people need to do. Need to like, and then I like, for example, getting back to speakers' corner. I know speakers' corner can get like a, intense. A lot of emotions are there. Everyone's trying to prove the other guy wrong. Yes, Subhanallah. And it it, it it comes with a lot of baggage because Subhanallah. I always go back to the eye in the Quran where, like, Nuh is giving da'wah to the people, and they say, and they tell Nuh, "This is not the way of our forefathers." Yes. So it's kind of a baggage of like, how can my forefathers be wrong? You know, how can my yeah. lineage be wrong? You know, it's kind of it's yeah. kind of a hurtful thing, you know. You don't want to tell someone your your father's in hellfire or things like that. But subhanAllah, it's, sometimes you do kind of, be, you have to be harsh sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's like, a, you know, if you have a son and he just keeps acting stupid, you got to be harsh with him sometimes. Like, give him a smack yeah. in the head, you know, like, stop being dumb. But subhanAllah, guides who he wants, you know. May Allah keep us guided. You know, like, I mean, I mean, I mean, the heart, I mean. the heart can be turned. Even the Prophet talks about before the day of judgment, 
you know, there's going to be so much confusion, which we see right now. Some people yeah. become Muslim, they wake up Muslim, one day they're atheist, one day, subhanAllah, like, so much confusion. If you stick Absolutely. with the, Absolutely. Islam, is the only um, is the only way. And, and 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 one thing that I find so unfortunate, um, if if there was one thing I would criticize about Speakers Corner, is that all the big channels kind of focus on like the circus and they focus on like it's like pay per view almost. You know, people like <laughs> they they know that you know if I put up this video where people are like insulting each other and pushing each other, that's going to get loads yeah. loads of hits. So it's it's turned into the circus full of like psychopathic people yeah. and, and, and the people on the videos right are the people that are being yeah. filmed they know i'm about to be worldwide so i can't be yeah. seen as yeah. stupid you know so but it's, you it's, know it's, brother it, ibrahim i don't think sometimes and i've i was in this situation before where we you know when you dare and speak as corner and you the day you come visit us you will see what i mean when you on the ground it does not feel like the whole world is watching it just just feels like it's you and a couple people talking you the cat because the cameras are all situated in a yeah. way where you don't really see them so yeah. there has been many cases uh we had a brother of us who passed away uh brother um um isa rahimahullah allah uh, yeah, i remember him yeah yeah subhanallah big you remember boy, right? Isa, right big yeah yeah allah yes allahu akbar um what's this in oh, oh, the pool is awaiting. Oh, okay yeah uh um yeah brother isa he passed away subhanallah during lockdown Rahmiullah. And subhanAllah, I mean, that brother, when he passed away, prior to him passing away, it was just me and him just having conversations and just exchanging ideas, you know, me learning from him. When he passed away, I was receiving messages from everywhere, Canada, America. And I was like, that was the first time I really, I really realized that, you know what, these videos are actually having an impact on people. Like, this is not just us having to chat any longer. You know, um, so yeah, it's it's true. A lot of these people clown oh, themselves yeah. and they don't understand that the entire world. I love world that brother, man. He was very passionate. I love him. Oh, man. yeah. Oh, yeah. He was. Um, oh, <sighs> man. You know the way he was on camera? That's the yeah. way he was on camera. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, more I like. like that. Very, very straightforward, passionate. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, hey, brother the... Ibrahim, you've been watching for a long time. You know everyone. Oh man, I remember back on even the the Rastafari guys used to go yes, there. Yes. Titans TV, no, Sara, no, no, no. all those non Muslim. Please, brother, guys. you need to come visit us. Wallahi, you're, you're, <laughs> oh, you're part of a very oh, man, interesting oh. epoch of Dawah. Wallahi, you've been there for a long time. I understand now. I understand now. Um, Mashallah, may Allah bless you. Uh, just a clarification someone in the back chat is saying that Akh Ibrahim. Oh, so he's going back to when yeah. I said, you know, even the prophets yeah. will say, uh, I meant to say the prophets are going to say myself, myself, not the prophet. Yeah. The prophet obviously is going to intercede, yes. intercede for us. Yes. <laughs> Every, all the prophets yeah. except the prophet. Well, exactly. It's a exactly. Um, and, and you, do you guys yeah. have callers, by the way, in the back chat? Yeah, yes. we have other callers. So if you can come back later, and Yeah, I'll come back. <laughs> I don't want to hold them yeah. up. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to talk more Maghrib? to you. I want to talk Maghrib? more to you because you know a lot of stuff from the from back in the days. It's nice. <laughs> Inshallah. Ibrahim, how long until your Maghrib salah? Allah, we're about to pray out. So another three hours. Three hours, okay. okay. Inshallah. Okay, mashallah. Allah, take care. Habibi, love you, bro. May Allah bless you. Awesome. Assalamu bye bye. Ah, man, that was, that was. That was good. I had like nostalgic uh, vibes. It was good to see up. that from you, man. It's good yeah, to see yeah. That from he you. Like he hit he hit like spots that you know mean a lot to me and not a lot of people because a lot of people who watch now speakers going to don't know about that time. You know, see, I watch a lot of old videos as well. Yeah, okay. A lot some topics have already been covered. Yeah, yeah, and a lot, a lot of my guidance yeah from that year was I would have the head my YouTube in the background. Yeah, yeah. I'd be doing something. I'd be, be listen to him i was like oh my god that makes so much sense mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and sometimes i take notes as well so one of my favorite persons is uh have you heard of him i'm sure you have uh hamza hamza lion hamza's den yeah i mean uh, he is one, uh, he's a classic a, he's character brilliant. even Mashallah. his like arena um stream that he does like once a month incredible but you said you have we have uh, more callers in the backstage yeah so and also like, what's the chat saying i mean you can check the chat from here right yeah, yeah, keep this chat engaged. Yeah, whenever course, you see something, so brother Ragnar, yeah, brother Ragnar just recently a few minutes ago he mentioned that uh, he would be you he would be beaten if he had gone to 
speak of school and my brother I, i'm not someone who is well versed <laughs> in islamic dawah yeah I'm, well, I'm new to islam for gonna say but i don't think that yeah, if we if you were to go there and you were to go there for of course if you were to go there for um you know a cause for the sake of allah yeah perhaps you may not win that single debate but this is this is an ongoing thing it's not one you battle learn and doesn't grow you will learn you will learn you will learn yeah and you're not you you technically aren't defeated because yeah. if islam is the truth you only continue to learn it, yeah. and your iman will be strengthened. And also, referring to your your name, Ragnar. Ragnar is a is a Viking yeah. warrior, and warriors are not made in a day, right? So yes. you it takes the time to become Ragnarok, uh, if you like. Uh, but yeah, we got more pre, um, callers. But before we go to the callers, inshallah, what we can do is see because I've seen that we've had uh, donations coming in. But brothers and sisters, if we can just kind of like speed up a bit, you know, uh, reach uh, two hundred and fifty pounds. So we are exactly 100 pounds away, 100 pounds away, or 300 pounds. If there's three people that can give 100 pounds, remember. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying 100 pounds away from like 250. And then if there's three people that can give. Yeah. Yeah, but. I, no, that's that's how you, you, you should hard do it, bro. Don't worry. Uh, so, yeah, if there's. Uh, if there's uh, so yeah, we're hundred pounds away from uh, reaching uh, two hundred and fifty, and if there's two people, they can give hundred pounds to Muhammad brothers and sisters. So, so yeah, um, should we take the net and another call? Sure thing. If someone wants to show their camera, then the... oh, salam alaikum. Yeah. Wa alaikum salam, bro. Brother, how are you? I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Oh, <laughs> my brother. Mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. This is um. This is a brother that was with us as well. He was doing one-to-one -one sessions with us. Oh. Your beard has grown. Yeah, <laughs> it's strong. Your beard has strong. grown so much. You look good, mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. It's going well. Things going well. Salah's down and now and stuff as well. So, alhamdulillah, it's going well. Wow, man. I remember um, months ago when we were talking... Um, your beard, I was like, yeah, Masha, he has a bit of something going on there, but now it's, uh, it's, it, it has color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it literally has color, MashaAllah. Um, yeah, no, brother, uh, Kyle, brother Kyle, right? Uh, Jake, Jake. Jake, 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 that's it, brother Jake, yes. Brother Jake, uh, from, um, uh, Milton Keynes? Milton Keynes, that's Yeah, yeah. Him. That's the one. That's well, the you one. run so many people. You no, not at all. Not at all. I know. I know the brother really well. Mashallah. Yeah, yeah. He was sort of like one of the first few people that I spent time with. Mashallah. mashallah. Very keen. Very, very eager. Mashallah. How's it going, brother? Uh, how's it going? What are you doing? Yeah, it's going well. Busy, busy. Lots, lots going yeah. on since reverting. Um, yeah. I got a brother teaching me Arabic and stuff now as well. So yeah, like, yeah, it's crazy. Like lots of learning, but. Like, alhamdulillah, like, it's going well. Like, everyone's yeah. been helpful that I've come across as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I remember you were telling me that you were doing classes in, in the mosque. You were going to, you were attending some classes there. Um, Yeah, and you were just doing that and doing work, isn't it? Those two things you were kind of focusing on. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Mostly that right now, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. How, how was Ramadan for you? Yeah, alhamdulillah, it was good, like... I think before going into it, like I didn't really understand the hype on it, and then yeah. like, mate, like <laughs> I don't know, like first day, like before Ramadan, you struggle to get yeah. up in the morning, right? Yeah. Like most people struggle in the morning, like oh yeah, I can't get out of bed. First day, like three yeah. in the morning, I didn't even mm -hmm. set the snooze on my alarm. I turn it off straight out of bed, like it's different feeling. Yeah. And I was like, this is what everyone goes on about. Yeah. When people tell you, like, oh, no, like, so excited for Ramadan. It's a different experience. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. 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 Um, but for, for the viewers watching, this is Brother Jake, subhanAllah. He's, like, a, a potential. I think he's the first guy that um I was doing the one-to-one -one sessions. I remember, subhanAllah, we, we were praying through WhatsApp together. <laughs> I, had, I had my WhatsApp in front of me, and he was praying with me. It was so beautiful. Oh, man. Um yeah and obviously i was i was ill for a little while and then just things happen um but mashallah he i knew that he would he would do well because he had a, a community behind him he was very involved in the community right you 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 have like yeah. people yeah yeah, yeah 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 so 
it's it's so beautiful that you're calling and I, obviously i can see that you know there has been progress quite quick progress as well i can just see my there's so much nur like light in your face <laughs> well, light in your face mashallah yeah, uh, now I'm going to take a shower. Yeah, asking. Yeah. So, brother, how long ago did brother you take a shower? Brother, Jake, when did you? Um, I took it September. So, yeah, September. It's um, how's how's it been for you? Because um, no, I have a friend here. Yeah, his name is Byron. He's a he's a white revert as well. And yeah. The thing in my head is like because I can speak South Asian languages, speaking Arabic is a little bit. It comes a little bit easier, I think. But perhaps if you have some advice for him, his name is Byron. Um, he was on here yesterday. So what, do you have advice? Um, you advice? What, what during like learning stuff or just in yeah, general? Learning, learning the salah because uh, I think it would be useful for me to pass it on to you. Actually, Jake, before you give the advice, I remember yeah. when we were going through stuff and I'm telling him things and he's just like, Oh, do you mean this and this? I was like, Yo, you're already yeah. so <laughs> wow, okay. like, you know so much already. Like, there's not much I can teach you. And like, so I was quite impressed by him. Yeah, he, he's quite an intelligent one there. Yeah, mashallah. So, I mean, general advice I'll give is with your salah don't like if you're going to learn it like the words i'd say all right let's just give an example monday i've learned these two words don't leave the rest of the week it's like if you go example if i go gym every week on a monday i'm not yeah, going to see yeah. the, the same um stats if that's the right word that i'm going to yeah. see if i went four or five days a week so learn yeah learn two 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 three words whatever you're capable of one on the monday then make, right. make sure you've learned it and then Tuesday or Wednesday do another couple of words then the end of the week you've got loads of them down Subhanallah. and just re repeat it like I'd read it a couple like five times and then I'd close the book read it five times and then in my head throughout the day I'd just repeat it so like just repeat it through my head know that I've got it and then the best thing is just implementing it in your prayer if like even if you don't know all your prayer like you're better to just try practice what you can in it even if it's just subhanallah like it's better than doing nothing and the little so, words you do implement it into it and then gradually that'll be stuck in your head every time you're doing it wow brothers and sisters here you can clearly say subhanallah there's definitely a new breed in the town of reverts mashallah he took a shahada four months ago the new reverts are not playing subhanallah they are really serious about this business so for those brothers who've been Muslim for a long time, there's new competition, friendly competition to <laughs> say the least. You really have to put the work in, subhanAllah, because we have people like Brother Jake who are really eager and very determined to learn the deen and, and, and implement this, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm honored, Jake, that we spend time together through this one-to-one -one, um, Salah sessions. And I'm happy. And also, you know, um, the invitation is still up. You know, if whenever you want to come down, please let us know. You have my number. Yeah. Uh, let no, us no, um, down. We spend a day together. Yeah. Yeah. Inshallah, it'll be good. Like, I'm free under this month and stuff. Like, whatever's best for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be good to come down. Yeah. So, we actually, what we're doing is we're planning a prayer mat day. So, it's like, a, it's going to be like a get together, like a meet, meet up where we're going to like yeah. tell people to come down. To like a given location in central London, and then people can come and pick up their prayer mats. Obviously, you already have your prayer mat, but like, yeah, yeah, you can come and help us. In fact, you know, um, yeah. and then we're gonna have loads of people coming down. Um, I'm trying to push for like an ice cream van as well, so it's gonna be free ice cream and stuff. Um, yeah, so like to come for people to come down and just you know meet everyone and see that you know this um, journey of learning how to pray. It's it's really a bigger. A bigger community behind this, you know, and people behind this that really, um, yeah, we're all helping each other with what we can, you know. Yeah, no, inshallah, inshallah, that'd be good. I think most important as well, like any new reverts as well, like I struggled with this, is like there's a lot of stuff that Allah gets put on you when Allah you Allah had a beautiful donation, 100, uh, 100 euros, mashallah, mashallah. Sorry, brother Jake, it happens. Sorry, no, it's all right. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, you were saying about you were giving tips. Yeah, just ask like make sure, like go mosque regularly. Like when whenever when I first reverted, I was going a couple of times and then I kind of yeah. left it a little bit. And yeah. like you feel like you feel like you pull away from it. There's certain things that yeah. you will struggle with, but go down yeah. to the mosque. If you're not if you're not sure about stuff, you're struggling with it, just speak to like the share commands down there. Or even yeah. any brothers like like you're quite friendly with, just ask them the questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very important, very important. And um, yeah, this is one of the things that 
I think we were talking about as well. It was about just the idea of like, you know, going to the mosque, knowing people in the mosque, you know, uh, feeling comfortable enough to going to the mosque. Because I think some people, um, uh, um, bro, check the stream right now, please. Thank you. Check, um, check the stream if you can. As soon as possible. Please, quick, quick, quick. Yeah, second. <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry, bro, bro, Jake. I just, uh, Ali just uh, gave me a okay. call. Don't worry. It's all good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I remember we were talking about this because you were, you know, obviously you're telling me, oh, there's a brother that teaches and I'm going there. I remember talking to brother Aaron and other, other brothers. They felt a bit uneasy going to the mosque because they didn't know how to pray and things yeah. like that. Um, but I think you overcome that once you overcome that. And I think that's why Salah Plus or the one-to-one -one sessions uh, are very good because they're kind of like a prepar preparatory um, sort of, you know, measure for, for people just for confidence. It doesn't mean you have to do it, but if you don't feel confident, I think having someone just like one-to-one -one and just kind of intimate is kind of easy. I feel like that's what our, our sessions were about. They were very Yeah, intimate. no, 100% they were. I think yeah. definitely for anyone new, like... It is scary, like going to mosque as well. Like first time yeah. going, it's a different environment. It's like it's not what you're used to at all. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. Everyone generally like, I can, like just from my mosque personally. I can't speak for many other mosques, but I think they'll yeah. probably be pretty similar. People want to help you. Like the help I've got, like that I've had from brothers. I haven't gone out and asked them. Like someone's mm. introduced me to someone, and they they've offered to help. Yeah. Like the classes I have with the brother that was spoke mm -hmm. about before, he offered to yeah. help me and then we just kept doing it regularly. He was happy to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's most most this is basically what happens with most organizations, mosques, you know, anything like that. There is always like we try to have these things for free for reverts and people who come back to Islam because we understand, first of all, there's no price that we can put out upon. Again, for those who are just tuning in, this is Brother Jake. He's one of our uh, students. He's been with us at uh, one-to-one -one prayer sessions. Now, mashallah, a couple months later, he's really in there. He's integrated himself into uh, his local community and he's been taking classes. And I'm so happy to see him that he's like, mashallah, that's all nur in his face. Um, very, well, I, I'm so honored, well, I, Jake, honestly, I'm so honored to have had uh, this uh, opportunity to be with you and talk to you at the early stages of, of your Islam. Um, but yeah, um, subhanAllah, this is an encouragement for anyone who's watching right now, who's maybe considering to revert, you know, uh, I know brother, there's another brother called DK. He's a very young brother, mashallah, very um, not charisma. And he had a friend, you know, Jake, a friend from Essex, uh, Essex yeah. and, he, uh, and the friend from, like he basically said, he wants to become a Muslim, but because he's white, he he he, he finds it a bit odd. He would he, he feels oh. like if he comes to the mosque, he would be the odd one out, you yeah. know. And I I I understand his concerns. I understand the concerns that it can be quite intimidating. But I think us having this conversation here on life right now is the the biggest testament that Islam is yeah. is a religion where color absolutely has placed no role whatsoever, you know. And uh, that we are trying to build, you know, a community where these things are less important, and that is really about the character. Uh, and, and and wallahi, before before it's about your skin color, it's about the smile that you give me. <laughs> you know, that it's more important to me than your skin color, Subhanallah. You know, um, um, but yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's beautiful that someone like yourself. You know, you you clearly have integrated, and you 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 feel at home. You know, and and that's unfortunately it's not always the case for everyone. No, um, no, of course not. Like some some yeah. brothers struggle a lot with uh, and with family and stuff as well. It's not always yes. easy for all of them. Yeah. Exactly, because you 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 said that. Sorry, right, come, right. come back after, yeah. Um, because you said your family is was okay with it, from what I remember, right? Yeah, yeah, they're okay with it. Like, there's a lot of things I still struggle with with them and stuff as well. But yeah. like in general, like they're they're fine with it. Nice. Like, no, it's no issues. Like, yeah, um, there's actually one thing I wanted to share because I heard you just mention it briefly a few minutes ago, and it was a hadith that helped me out a lot. Uh, so... When I read this back in uh, February, mm -hmm. see, I, I took my shahada in December, so a few months just after you. In December, I felt like I was doing well because I was like learning, etc. In January, yeah. I felt like I was doing better. February, there's a little bit of a dip, and just before I had fully memorized my salah, mm -hmm. and it's a hadith that helped me a lot. So if I, if you don't mind, I share it with you. It's a, it was reported by Abdullah ibn Amir um, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam awesome. said that verily the faith of one of you will wear fit 
will wear out within him mm-hmm. just as a shirt becomes worn out. Mm-hmm. So ask Allah to renew your faith in your hearts. The source for anyone who's in the comments is uh, Al Majam Al Kabir mm-hmm. Al Dabarani, mm-hmm. uh, fourteen sixty six eight. Yeah. But the point is, is that you mentioned how um, you start going to the mosque regularly, but then mm-hmm. there's a little dip. And then you start going to mosque again. Mm. This is normal for a Muslim. Mm. Our, our man is supposed to kind of fluctuate mm. because it gives us a chance when it gets low. Yeah, it's a test, or not yeah. a test per se, but an opportunity yeah. for you to make more dhikr, to make more yeah. ibadah, to remember Allah to a greater extent, so it mm. rises again. Mm. And sometimes you'll be tested at those moments of lowness, and sometimes yeah. you'll be tested at those moments of highness. Yeah. yeah sometimes when you're a moment of low iman, you could receive a very good thing in the dunya, for example, a pay rise or a new yeah. job or yeah. loads mm. of money and stuff. Like that. Yeah. Money is a thing that you may receive, but also a relationship offer. Perhaps uh, if the, when your iman is low, Allah may test you with, for example, yeah. a woman. Yeah. But if you are, if you choose to remember Allah and your iman raise, rises, yeah. that woman may be replaced with a more righteous wife. Well, in the future, wallahi, you know what shocks me right now? Yeah. I'm actually being aware of the moment I'm in. I'm in a moment with two beautiful, actually four beautiful people, uh, three beautiful people in person, and then another person on the other hand. So, like, this is so beautiful. Like, Brothers, reverts who've come recent to the dean and are really carrying on the flag. This is beautiful. Like, I'm so thank you, Haida, really, for allowing me to have this. Um, and and brother Jake for having this uh, uh, moment with you lot, especially towards the end of Ramadan. So, brother Jake, you've called in like at the right yeah. time because <laughs> this I'm is going to give you more energy to like have you know go through and continue to do what we're doing. Um, for those who are watching, brothers and sister, that's brother Hayda and brother Jake here. Both of them were part of the Salah Plus um, uh, uh, um, class of 2023 slash 2024. Um, <laughs> and yeah, mashallah, they're here. They've, they've, they're progressing very fast. So brothers and sisters, we are a charity and we work with what we have. And subhanAllah, this Ramadan was incredible in terms of what we've been raising. But it does not mean that we stop there, brothers and sisters, because imagine this, there are hundreds of... I'd say thousands of people, of course, they're all unique in themselves and, and no one is like Jake or no one is like Haida. But I'm saying in terms of quality, there's so many more people out there who are suffering. Uh, brother Jake, I was talking um, about this video I saw early on and it was this video, I think in Huddersfield or somewhere like outside yeah. London. And um, there was like Tarawir was happening. And there was this lady, she was at, you know, when you come into the mosque in like, you know, the area where people put their shoes on, yeah? Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, so she was there on her knees, facing the Qibla and just like, like bracing herself like this and just listen to the Quran. Like that image will probably never leave my, my head yeah. ever again. It's good. Because she was like, she's yearning, meaning that she's yearning for this. There's people who are yearning for this. They don't even know what it is. It's just that they're yearning for this. And, mm. and, and, and subhanAllah, I feel like the fact that brother Jake, I think one thing that you've done so well, which I was struggling when I became Muslim is that you made sure that your salah was on point as soon as possible. And I think that was has anchored you and has given you the strength, even when you had the dips, to continue. Yeah, um, I think I that think really... even even mm-hmm. after like learning, um, yeah, Fatah, mm-hmm. like when you start learning stuff like the alphabet, like like not yeah. saying that you have to do that, but like at some point it would be good for people to do it. Yeah. It makes yeah. it easier for actually pronouncing the words in it because you start yeah. to learn where the letters come from and how to pronounce these letters. Yeah. So when you actually recite the surah, you, you're you not just doing it from a transliteration, which is yeah. from it basically written in English from an Arabic. Mm. You're actually learning it from the Ar- Arabic letters R, and you start pronouncing yeah. it a lot better. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So brothers and sisters, you're watching, we're 250 pounds, 250 pounds away from the next uh, target. If there's two people, if there's two people, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, look, I'm excited. I can't even uh, strike... Uh, straight sentences but i'm just because i'm so excited but brothers and sisters if there's two people right now that can give 100 pounds 100 pounds is going to teach 16 to 32 people and remember what brother ibrahim munasa was saying earlier when we when he was here with us it do not think of it in terms of numbers we can't put numbers there's no number that equals quality okay Quality is something that you can't really measure. So do not think of it in, in, in that terms. I'm just giving you the terms so that you have an understanding on an operational level what happens with the money. We're raising purely for the spray mats. SubhanAllah. Brother Jake, you caught me by surprise, SubhanAllah. I'm so happy that you <laughs> called in. 
But like that's I say, brothers and sisters, this is nothing is staged here. We are not staging anything. These are purely things that happen. We've worked, uh, we've tried to work as hard as we could, and we had these beautiful uh, opportunities to meet so many incredible people, um, like Brother Jake and, and, and Brother Hayda. And I am sure, I'm sure that we will continue to meet loads and loads of very interesting people and people who really need Islam in their life, um, like the lady who was, you know, like listening to the Tarawih or the story that Sheikh Mohammed told us about this lady who knew what the Quran was mm. before she was even a Muslim, subhanAllah. So, um, yeah, speaking of Sheikh Mohammed, Sheikh Mohammed has just joined us as well. So, people, if there's any questions you want to ask in terms of fatawa, so any, you know, uh, you can start calling in now. Um, Jabi, if you can put the stream up link in the comment section. Sure, you want to say here? Um, also, there was one thing I wanted to ask the chat to ask Jake or Jake to ask the chat, which I've forgotten now. Um, but yeah, brother Jake, please, um, for like Shawal, because we might be here in Shawal again, like, yeah, uh, the following month, please join us. I will actually send you a message on yeah. WhatsApp, and let you know, yeah, yeah, do that. Up, just catch um, up with you, yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Um, I want to ask yeah. a question as well. Yeah, um, yeah, there's a couple of questions I want to ask yourself, but I'll do that when we catch up later in the month at some point, if that's okay. Okay, no, it's perfect. It's perfect because Sheikh Mohammed is here. He can answer all the questions. <laughs> inshallah, inshallah, it's, it's a big inshallah there. Yeah, but yeah, most questions uh, he will be able to answer. Inshallah. Allah barakatuh. Yeah. So Jake, ask okay. ask away. Yeah. Anyway, so basically, um, of our one sessions. Oh, mashallah. Salam alaikum, brother Jake. How are you? Okay. Alaikum salam. I'm good. Alhamdulillah, I'm good. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm okay. Jazakallah khairan. How's everything? How's Ramadan? Yeah, alhamdulillah. It's a different experience. It's great. Yeah, I've been enjoying it. Alhamdulillah. Rabbi Which is good. Even, I think, the other day, I did uh, Tahajjud at the mosque, and alhamdulillah, it was crazy. Like, it was basically, the Tahajjud was Mashallah. a bit of Tarawir. Like, there was as many people as Tarawir for it. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Allah Yubarak. MashaAllah. So, what are your questions, my brother? Um, the question was... Um, a lot of my family drink, like, when they do meetups, it's all involved with basically they'll have music, drinking alcohol. That's what they do when they meet up. And yes. I'm often invited to these stuff. And a lot of times I say no. And then kind of sometimes family kind of look at you like you're, well, basically say it's like being an extreme version of it. It's basically yeah. what I should do in these situations. Because, like, as well, my mum has her wedding in a few months, uh, next month, actually. But it's okay. going to involve alcohol. So what I should do in these situations to not also go against my mum in the same way as well. May Allah make it easy for you. I mean, there are I mean. uh, there are always, you know, what uh, there is a good saying that if you put in advance the good gesture to the people, then they will excuse you for your shortcoming. Mm -hmm. Meaning, now you said your mother is, uh, you know, her, her wedding is in one month time or something. Now, why don't you from now until the day that she will be married, why don't you, for example, every single day do something to her? Um, send her a gift, uh, take her out, take her to a trip, take her to a picnic. Do this, yeah? So, and then she will understand that that day, if you are, uh, is she going to do it in a church, by the way? No, no, no church. Uh, none of my family are religious. They're all atheists. So, where are they gonna do it? Like, is it in the and and, and if you go to the registration office, for example, with her, yeah, then fine, no problem. Yeah, go with her to the registration office. Yeah, so no problem. But when it comes to the party that involved alcohol, etc., you know, you just ask, you know, the permission from her that you do you can't attend it and just leave it. Yeah, you okay. See how it is? But these are the things. So you don't, you know, when you have family members that they are like that, for example, they have their own things, which is non-Islamic, you know, uh, you could say uh, things that they do. Now, that's why you try to shower them with with kindness, you know, to show uh, like giving gifts, you know, inv invitation, things like this. So at least they will understand, yes, you may... Because you, because of your faith, you cannot attend these things. Then, at the same time, you are not totally isolated from them, and that is how it is. The same thing for Christmas. Many people they will say, okay, on, on day of Christmas, people they are, you know, my my parents, my relatives, my brothers, my sisters, they they don't like when about the Christmas. We say the same the same situation. 
you have to do certain certain things before Christmas, and then when it comes to the Christmas, they will say you have already, you know, uh, um, giving them many gifts. You have already did a lot of good things to them, and then when it comes to the Christmas, it's going to be an easy thing. You understand? Yeah, because I think we spoke about Christmas the other week about like obviously not doing it, and then I kind yeah. of didn't understand why they kind of said it looked basically kind of and not in a bad way but they said it's a bit extreme not doing it because to them it's just presence like yeah. they don't so do right. any re religious practices but the way they see it is just presence yeah. the point is one month before christmas just send them gifts yeah yeah send them presents send them gifts do that and then when it comes to the christmas they will not say okay he just ordinarily sent it, sent us this yeah. gift last month or this the beginning of the month etc that's what you're supposed to do inshallah yeah I guess the that... same, same with any other events because, like, I don't know, we, like my family does Easter, Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, like, same like, thing. Like, like all exactly of it. Yeah. Same. same thing. Mother's Day, all of these things, is not as, you know, as serious as Christmas and Easter. No, no, of course. Even though, even though best to avoid it, you know, to give them better, you know, better options, better, you know, better things in different days. But if it happens, I mean, it's not as serious as the Christmas or as serious as the Easter. Because the Christmas yeah. and Easter has religious perspective. It has religious, you could say, um, side of it. So that's why we shouldn't be participating. In it. And regarding the Mother's Day, it's just instead, as I mentioned to you, one week before or two weeks before, send her gift, do something. And then after that, when it comes, she will, she will not, you will be not missed, basically, because you already yeah. did okay. uh, something. Does that but help? Yeah, yeah, it does. But I guess I only have a question. It's best to just completely avoid these days, but obviously send, yeah, exactly. like I said, gifts and stuff before. So it's kind of under, understand more from and it. I know, okay. And I know, I know, uh, like, for example, um, a sister, she asked me this question before, and I give her this tip. And actually, uh, because she didn't attend the Christmas party with them, and then... Uh, you know, one of her siblings, she, they were saying, why she didn't come? Look, she became Muslim. She's not attending. Her mother, the one who used to criticize her the, the year before, she was the one who was defending her. She said, no, she was good to me. Yeah, she was saying, yeah, she was, she sent me only two weeks ago. She sent me a good gift, you know, expensive gift. You know, sometime, you know, one month, last month as well, she sent me this, she sent me that, and she's even, she sent me uh, a meal on this day, on that day. So, her mother was the one who was the year before she was saying bad things about her. Now she started defending her to say, yeah, she, she was good. She's she, yes, because her faith, you know, she doesn't participate in Christmas, but doesn't mean yeah. she doesn't send me gifts. Do you see the point? Yeah. Yeah. No, of course, obviously if you're not doing these things like being obviously not like if you're still being good, but not doing these extra things as you said, and then suddenly you start Absolutely. dropping everything. They're going to look at you as if it's a bad side. But instead, if you're doing yeah. good things, they'll see a good side of it. But you've dropped this because of that, then they'll be more understandable. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Is there? Do you have any other questions, my brother? Um, I had one other question. Um, oh. It might be looked as really bad, but it's basically a situation I was kind of stuck in as well. But I've left it to the point I don't really know what to do about it. Okay. Um, basically, I had two friends of basically opposite sex gender, which I knew before reverting. Yeah. And one of them basically is friends with the fact, not like friends, friends, but like they'll message my mom occasionally or my sister. Yeah. And obviously this isn't allowed. And it's basically how to leave it in a good way as well, where it doesn't leave any negative situations. And basically how to explain it to my family as well when it's brought up for them to kind of understand why, because it's quite a normal I thing. I I don't understand. Like these friends, they contact you and you you don't you don't communicate back to them, or what is it exactly? Um, it's basically people like females that I've been friends with, but obviously it's not allowed, is it? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not allowed. Um, and it's basically how to leave it because they they know my family, and if I tell them I can't be friends with anymore, then like my family are going to come to me about it as well. I mean, you don't have to, to I will, you know, you, you could leave it in a good way to say to them, you know what, I'm now a Muslim, etc. So explain to them, say it to them, and let them maybe your approach, this approach, it could be a way for them to reflect and 
maybe to start thinking about Islam to say to them, no, I'm a, now a Muslim, and in Islam we shouldn't be having this kind of, uh, you know, uh, this kind of friendship between us. No problem. From time to time, if I see you, say hi, you say I'm from. No problem. But yeah, you know, I prefer to, uh, you know, to keep myself away from this. That that's because in Islam we shouldn't have this kind of relationship. You know, they might say to you, but it's only friendship. And we know, yeah, you you came from that background. Is there a true friendship between opposite gender? No, not really. Like, yeah, there's yeah, nothing there. Not... But like, it's not the uh, same yeah. as like a guy and a guy. The friendship ain't the same. Like, yeah, I know. A guy is a guy. As as they say, there is a what's his name? There is a. a I think I think he's a, a presenter, American presenter. Even though he's, um, I think I don't know if he's atheist or whatever. But anyway, he was saying. He said something actually. I I respect what he has said. He said I think his name is Steve Harvey. I think yeah. He said there is no friendship between men and women. He said there is no friendship between men and female. He said there is no. Yeah, you know what he said. He said there is no friendship. And then they said, well, women. They were you know all his audience. They were women. They said, why are you saying this? Uh, well, you know because women are some sometimes they look at it from you know they might from women's side they have you know thinking that it's only friends. But actually, for men, it's not. There is no friendship, as he said. There will be if there is always. He was waiting there, as he said, for a crack in the. <laughs> yeah, he said, like, a hole, of crack, a crack in the door, or, or a, a hole in the door, or something. Then you will find this person who has a friend sliding himself into your life in a way or another, <laughs> and that's what he was saying. Yeah, it was. It's funny the way that he said. So the point is, that's true. I mean, they say it's a friend. There's no friendship. As soon as if she is in a situation, then you know that friendship is going to go from the window, and then there will be a different thing. So that's why there's no friendship, and uh, it has to be preserved in a way, uh, you know, and with modesty, with with the Islamic boundaries. Say, I would I would just say because they also because they're like family friends. Because I was in a situation like this uh, about 11, 12, 12 years ago. Um, and I did the whole abrupt thing. I was like, "Look, I'm a Muslim now. I can't be friends with you no more." Yeah. And these friends, they hate me now to this day. They don't. I would say just kind of wean it off, especially because they're family friends, you know. Yeah, There's people I've that kind, I, I've kind of tried weaning it off, but yeah. like I even had it the other way. I didn't reply for like a good couple of days, mm. and then like it was at the point where like oh they were gonna call my sister because I didn't reply. They thought something was wrong, so then my oh, sister yeah, I mean, called me like. Yeah, sure. Mine is a little bit more recent, but um, I had uh, two friends from my college, but one from secondary school, one from college. So I've known one for nine years now, mm. and I've known one for about five years. And uh, the way I kind of dealt with it back in about February time was uh, that essentially I said that, look, um, I, as a Muslim, I'm not supposed to be doing this to non Muslims or yeah. Mm. I said uh, I'm not supposed to be like, like essentially talking to the other gender as much as mm. like, in this sort of way as well. We used to talk about very intimate topics mm. regarding ourselves but about regarding their relationships mm. and stuff like that or that whenever we saw each other they would give me a hug etc mm. but it's become a thing of like you you set the kind of, when you meet each other if you do see each other in public and they normally give you a hug and stuff if you set that boundary there there's uh, if they're good friends they'll understand mm. that's what i've realized if the, those two friends of mine they're good friends and they kind of they understood it and they understood where I, it came from but obviously like sometimes if some people are emotional etc they perhaps may not want to Mm. understand it perhaps they may they just be straight yeah. away angry with you yeah. in my opinion if they're immediately angry with you if they're immediately quick to complain mm. if they're quick to have this like anger or like this problem with it yeah and they start complaining to your mother to your sister etc to your family members or to your other friends perhaps the friendship wasn't this that wasn't yeah. what you thought it was like, yeah. that's my opinion yeah. every, every situation is different you're, you're that's right that's why i believe it should be explained to them yeah to say to them you know i'm this is my situation now I respect my faith, and that's why we shouldn't have these kind of friendship. No problem. If, if we see each other mm. randomly, yeah, you know, just say hello, hi, whatever, and then but you like, move you on. Know, no like, problem. Ask them how their mother is, of course. Yeah. Like, if you know them and you know your family, if you see them, ask them how their parents are, uh, ask them how their siblings are, yeah. stuff like that, yeah. Perhaps, like, um, even if you're not married and stuff like that, yeah, perhaps one of them could be a potential spouse, stuff like that, yeah. You keep it halal. Yeah. Course, like, I think Jake is just a bit concerned because of his uh, yeah. family members, because yeah, it's course, a lot like, at once. You don't want to do everything yeah, at once. No, I'm like, because it's more, I'm happy to, not obviously like happy probably sounds a b bad word for it, but like, to like leave the friendships one thing, but then it's getting backlash after is what I don't yeah. want to do. So the best way as, as, as a mission to you is just explain and 
and that's what and if they are if they behave in a in a in a bad way that means that's not true friendship that's good that's good that you are you opt out from this kind of yeah. friendship if they behave in a respectful way they respect your opinion they respect wh- wh- what you take and then that's it and actually that shows that they are true friends they may they may that's why make dua for them that allah to guide them to islam etc and move on in your life that's how it is explain yeah. to them they have to be explained basically yeah i'm always yeah. in favor to make things clear you know so everyone knows what they you know what they owe what they what they're supposed to do etc so i I'm, i'm in favor of that allah barak fik Yeah, no, 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 that's very helpful um, towards the situation, to be honest. Allah barak fiq. May Allah reward and bless you, my brother. Is there any other questions that you think that you wanted to share with us? Um, I have one other question. Um, I think it'll be probably be the last one. I don't want to take up too much time. There's probably other people waiting. Um, it's basically, um, before I've come as well, I had debts and stuff, which um, <coughs> probably seen as river. Now I think it is. the term correct is mm-hmm. but i obviously saw if you were to pass away with this it would basically mean or not even pass away like pass away or have it now you at war with a lot of panel tala if that's correct okay so let's say i had these before but i say i was to pass away tomorrow what would the situation be on it because like because i'm still obviously trying to pay this stuff off but it takes time i didn't understand what... like interest Yeah, the interest. So he has a debt. He's paying for Okay, uh, if you, uh, your your debt was before Islam, Allah, Allah will wipe all your sins before Islam, and you know, and then, but of course, you still owe the the debt, so you have to cover it. You have to finish it. Yeah. So carry yeah. on, carry on paying it, inshallah, and then that's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. That's fine. No, that's that's it. Yes, Jacob. There's a question I have for you, but uh, yeah. perhaps it may benefit some people. Um, at the age of 18, I got life insurance. Okay. And uh, now I'm 21. I still have life insurance, but I'm obviously now I'm a rebate for Islam uh, for the last four months. Is life insurance permissible? This is uh, something I'm confused about. What do you mean by life insurance? So that if if I was to... So my life insurance has two bases to it. So if I was to become ill with a terminal illness, for example, cancer or something else that put me in hospital, yeah. uh, or put me out of work specifically if I was out of work, Um, they would give me um, about 50% or like 30% of my life insurance total uh-huh. um, to give to me in order for, if, for example, if I had a mortgage or car finance or if I had bills, medical mm. bills, if I went private, et cetera, or just to give to my family, et cetera, they would give me that money uh, ahead of the time. And then when I pass away, I'd get either the rest of the money or if I never took that money initially, I'd get the entirety of my life insurance. So Yeah, that's not permissible. Not permissible? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I just cancel that out. <laughs> that's not permissible. So, so, but you know, it's uh, yeah, that's it's like gambling, and uh, you know, you may pay for nearly 80 years of mm. you know, paying life insurance, and you will not benefit from it, except you know, you will be pay- paying more than that, or 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 the other way around. If something happens to you in two, two, three days' time, then you know, they will pay more than what you paid. Mm. So, what's the justification of this difference? So that's why it's not permissible. Okay. Yeah. Is that clear, Jake? Jacob, is there, Jacob? Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, that's been really helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. All right, Jake. Cool. Look after you. yourself. We're, oh. we're privileged. We're, where do you live, by the way? Where about you live? Uh, Milton Keynes. Milton Keynes, mashallah. Okay, there is a good mosque there, isn't it? Who uh, you, Do you go there? Uh, Which one? There's a couple. I think there's one, you know, one of the one of the sheikhs, Abu Suhaib, he goes, he teaches there. Do you go to that uh, mosque? Uh, Al Rauda is the one I go to. I don't know, Allah. I don't know what the names. Yeah. But anyway, inshallah, may Allah bless you, my brother. Do you have support enough support around you, people to, to support? Yeah, alhamdulillah, I got lo- lots of support. Yeah, a lot. All. Yeah. yeah. And we are here, inshallah. You are, we are your brothers, inshallah. If you need anything, let us know, inshallah. All right. Yeah, inshallah. Thank you. Barakallah, Fik. Yeah, brothers, mashallah. This was Brother Jake. I um for those who watched uh midway into the conversation, he is a brother who <coughs> has been a recipient of the one-to-one mm-hmm. sessions, and he's also been a recipient of the prayer mat, subhanallah. Mm-hmm. He received the prayer mat, he used it to learn how to pray. He had sessions with myself. 
uh, and mashallah today you see him here quite independent by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's been independent yes Allah has really surrounded him with beautiful brothers uh, so yeah this has been beautiful and Sheikh Mohammed has also joined us uh, brothers and sisters we are 240 pounds away 240 pounds away from reaching our next target um, the donations have been a bit slow but as for those people who are watching subhanallah it's this is how clear it is in how transparent their whole entire project is subhanallah brothers and sisters we are really having an impact there is an impact being made in society in london outside london milton Keynes, uh in canada in america there's people who are benefiting from this and as you can see brothers and sisters here right now i'm surrounded by these prayer mats and guess what every single prayer mat that is being sent is a story it will turn into a story inshallah there's someone who's going to use this and is going to start praying with it and then eventually perhaps you know if allah wills will be on here or will help somehow in some capacity or it's going to give the prayer mat to someone else or it's going to start uh, you know his prayer a prayer hub in in wherever he is so subhanallah brothers and sisters this is what we we should kind of listen to what um brother ibrahim Munasser was saying earlier about instead of looking at this at 16 or 32 people view this as generational you know these are people who are human beings who will have children and will continue um this very chain um, that leads back perhaps to the prayer mats so brothers and sisters if there's two people that can give 100 um, 100 pounds if there's a person that can give 50 pounds uh, just to sort of round it up and should really get the uh, campaign going we have reached thirty thousand pounds there was a thousand pounds donation today from the brothers in Dearborn. So this is incredible. It's been an incredible day, uh, but we want we don't want to stop. Uh, this is the last uh, night of uh, of um, Ramadan. There won't be uh, another um, uh, you know another night prayer on everything. This is today is the last day. Um, for tomorrow is the last fasting day and the last time of us breaking the fast for for this year. Um, so please if you can i would just really encourage you to maximize as much as you can in terms of your badat but also in terms of sadaqah so if there's anyone who hasn't given anything or anyone that was waiting for the last minute now it's the time to do to really donate go to our launch good uh, page and 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 please leave a generous donation we 250 250 pounds away from the next uh goal please um yeah 240 sorry yeah um but yeah so um so yeah how did you find it how did you find it uh brother hey how did you find that conversation because obviously it's someone so the, he gave me a little bit of comfort you know yeah but strangely enough because the thing is with me and byron yeah though we've been friends for many years friends for many years I, i'm not I'm, i don't think i have the ability to teach well but um because i don't know enough but it's the fact that even someone like jake who's uh jacob i'm oh, sorry is it jake or jacob jake jake, jake brother sorry, jake uh, yeah so brother Jake, he's the he's in the position that Byron is in, but the much later stage in his life. Mm. Well, not myself and Byron are quite young, mm. um, but for his ability, with, from September to now, mm. to then enjoy Ramadan, to learn his salah, to even like saying Baraka, uh, Bakar, I think Barak it. Yeah, I, I can't even pronounce it. Mm. Yeah, but it's, it's it's amazing to see, and it's like it gives me hope for myself, also hope for like my friends, like friends like Byron. Mm. Which I love when I want to see like my other friends uh, take the shahada. Yeah. So, yeah. Subhanallah. There seems to be a very, um, a, a very interesting uh, type of people that that are coming to Islam. The last uh, since lockdown, Subhanallah. The the, the, pe the, the people that come to because I've seen different uh, eras of people coming to Islam, mm. um, and and Mashallah, this uh, this new ilk of of, of people, very um, Subhanallah. I don't know what it is. Um, very eager, very determined. You know uh you know when we came to islam in 2005 7 yeah it was it was like this you know it, we had less access Subhanallah. less yeah. access to islam there was not much around uh, and now you know even like younger people are just more interested in religion that was never a thing subhanallah before it was never interesting haider you born in which year 2003 yeah 2003 yeah subhanallah it's an interesting year yeah. In uh, in 2002, actually, that is the year where I decided to start seeking knowledge. Mm. And uh, 
I remember uh, something you know important at that at that time I was twenty years old at mm-hmm. that time twenty and a half. so nineteen to twenty years old so at that time I remember that I, I need to do something about my life mm-hmm. and the thing is uh, one of the things I was saying in my in my mind uh, you know I wanted you know to bring people to Islam. Uh, because I, that's the idea of me mm. seeking knowledge. I wanted to. I said to myself this, and even I was saying, in my in my mind, that every single born from now onwards, yeah, if I have to be involved, at least in a way or another, to do what I can to save them from the hellfire. So I was thinking like this. Uh, that is, <laughs> so that's the. It's noble. Yeah. That's how I was thinking. I was saying. Subhanallah, it's uh, to, to see because, you know, I start, to, because at that time you'll start observing things. One of the things that you observe, uh, you will see, uh, you know, children with their parents. Mm-hmm. But their parents, they're not practicing back home. When I came, you know, moved here to, to England, and this was the first time I came, it was in 2005. And I saw these young children, that's 2005, then went back and then came back uh, in 2000, uh, uh, 2008. Or 2007, sorry. Uh, so I remember I used to see these youngsters, children at the age of two or or one, you know, playing with their parents. And I was saying, Subhanallah, mm. those those children, 20 years down the line, if we if I didn't do something, they're gonna be uh, adults and they're gonna be away from Islam mm. if we didn't do nothing about it. And that is the idea. The idea is. We should make Islam to facilitate Islam mm. in every single house. Mm. That's what we want. And at the end of the day, we are not meant to guide the people. Allah is the one who guides. Mm. We are only a tool to make sure that we we try to deliver the message of Islam to the people. And the guidance is Allah is upon Allah Taala, not upon us. But the point is, we have to be concerned about now. Think about now. So that's why you have to think in a holistic way. Don't don't just only think about you are guided, alhamdulillah, to send and that's it. No. Yeah. Think about now from now on, from the day that you become Muslim all the way until you have a firm, inshallah, knowledge. This is these are time which is basically is waste if you are not giving da'wah and helping others mm-hmm. to bring them to Islam. No, I think that's one of the reasons why um, that's one of the reasons why I want to learn because when I speak to my non-Muslim friends, it's like I feel like they could use it. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, I think Byron's um, Shahada was one of the like key moments of my year last year. Alhamdulillah. It ended on a good note, and it's like, Alhamdulillah, we had spent that year discussing so many different topics, but for it to resolve in Islam, that's the one thing that gave me like a different feeling. But, um, right now, I have another friend, and the... Uh, Mm-hmm. I honestly do think I think I mentioned this the other day. He yeah, thirty minute conversation speaking about what salah is. Is this uh, Tyrone? Ty- Tyrone, yeah. Tyron, yeah, yeah. The only he's a uh, one thing that's holding him back. And it's like, it's such a strange thing. What is it? It's a uh, he said to me, oh, you know, he, he, this is a, a paraphrase of the sentence. Says, uh, you know, Islam seems very like enticing. It seems like really interesting, and I say, uh, I see how you and Byron have changed so much because of it. But it's just like I can't give up drinking. Like I, I enjoy drinking my whiskey. Mm. He's a big whiskey drinker. He spends money on his bottles and he enjoys it. He likes to sit down and sip on it and stuff like that. And it's like, and it's just a, it's such a small thing. And to me, it's such a small thing. That it's, that's holding him back from, and that, that that's holding him back from accepting Islam. And I don't know what to say to him. What well, would you say, Sheikh Muhammad, to someone like that? Wallahi, you know, uh, you need to know that t- you know the Tawheed is a priority. Mm. So him to accept Islam mm. and to do the righteous deeds, even though. He is drinking, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. That is better than not to accept Islam. So, and we are not expecting people to change overnight. So, of course, we have to be lenient. We have to be mindful about the people. They they need the time. They need they need the space in order for them to change. You don't talk about their personal things, and this is something which is. I, uh, subhanAllah, since I involved in Dawah, you get many stories that I came across. I remember one brother, mashallah, a beautiful, amazing, revert brother. 
he used to fundraise, he used to, he used to be cycling, you know, he used to love cycling, and he always fundraised for these organizations, etc. And he said, and he was young when he embraced Islam, he was 18 or 19. But because he was, even at the time, with the social media wasn't that strong, but he was known, like, he would post posts that he mm -hmm. trips on Facebook, things like this, to, you know, to fundraise for good causes. And especially for Palestine, that brother was passionate about it. And anyway, but he told me his story that as soon as he, he what the things that made him to be to think about Islam is basically he 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 doesn't like the injustice that's happening to the people, especially in Palestine. Yeah, mm. so that made him to, to mm -hmm. the triggers you could say the thing made him to wanted to help them, and then of course if he wanted to help uh, any cause of Palestine in the UK, Alhamdulillah, you'll find mainly Muslims who are the one who are dealing with these things. So because of this, he was involved with, with many brothers, and alhamdulillah, he was given da'wah, then he took shahada after some time. The issue is, uh, he has his own lifestyle, you know, someone who's... But the good thing in him, he is able for him to give up drinking, etc., because he's a sport person, yeah. he likes sports, he doesn't like to destroy his body. Uh, so for him, it was something, it, it add up actually to him, in his mind, yes. Only made sense. It him. makes sense, yeah. Yeah, uh, mm. drinking is not good even. Mm. Yes, I know it's not good because when I'm when I'm drinking the night, the day before, he said, the, mm. the, day, the day after, I may not cycle. I, the things which I love to do, yeah. So anyway, uh, so uh, alhamdulillah, that after he took shahada, the issue is that he had a girlfriend. Mm. Yeah. No. Now, that is where the problem I will say that the way that some people who doesn't understand the right advice, they didn't give him the right advice. So initially, they start saying to him, the brother, uh, you know, you are not allowed to live with this girlfriend, you know, in Islam, etc. He's just a new Muslim. He's literally less yeah. than a month in Islam. So because he's passionate about Islam, he went to her, he told her, listen, we cannot live together. And even the brothers who told him that even though he said, you know, you do nikah, some of them, he said, no, you cannot do nikah with her because she's, you know, she has to be a Muslim. Mm. So he went to her and he told her, uh, you know, I, we cannot live together because, uh, you know, we have to do nikah. And we cannot do nikah because you're not a Muslim. Then, because she loved him, uh, that, then she said, okay, I will, I will become a Muslim. Okay. So she accepted. She went to the masjid. She took shahada in the masjid, and as well, the, they did the nikah for her, for them in the masjid. So they lived in halal way, alhamdulillah. At least, yani that's, yeah. that's something, yeah. which yeah. is a solution. Yeah. Now, this is, the problem didn't stop here. The problem is, the, the brothers, unfortunately, some brothers, they lack of wisdom. You know, you don't talk about these things. You no, know? I agree. Uh, so they start saying to him, oh, uh, how dare you, you are, you are married to a Muslim, to this woman, and she's wearing this revealing clothing, etc. You're like a the youth, like, you know, someone who you see. And he said, they said, they told me the youth, which has, I don't know what means, that he is, he doesn't have any jealousy on his, on his, on his woman, something like that. And subhanAllah, and because of this, he went back, he started fighting with her. She said, you have to wear hijab, this and that. And then she said, she said no, I, you know, I, I need time. Mm -hmm. So things went bad between them. And then she left him. She said, you know what? I don't want this. So she left Islam. She left the whole wow. thing. Yeah. Wow. And she went back to her, to her life. Uh, so, and then he told me this. I said, I wish I approached you before. Why well, he said, I didn't know. I said, the brothers, they would keep saying this to me. And I didn't know. I, I wanted to do things right. You know, when someone is a revert, mm -hmm, of course, they, they of try course. to do things yeah. in, in, a, in the right way. They try to do that. Yeah. And so, and those people, they will show him things are black and white. You know, it's, you know, it's either this or this. SubhanAllah, even if she stayed her life, yeah, uh, doesn't wear the hijab, she's still Muslim. And at least, mm -hmm. yeah. So the same thing as a brother as well. He took shahada with me, I remember. And then I helped him, and he had a girlfriend. We did we did his nikah and everything. But he used to be a musician. He was, you know, that's that's his field. He was studying, doing. He was a musician. Uh, I didn't talk about it. I didn't mention nothing about it. So uh, some brothers, I don't know for some reason, they said to him, "This is haram. You can't do this." 
The brother, he was wearing thaw in the day when we did his nikah. You understand? That's how much he was passionate about the deen. So he came to me, he said to me, is music haram? Yeah. And I said to him, I believe it's, it's haram, but this is not the main important thing. I mean, yeah, it's a, there are, you know, you need to know that uh, there are something important, learn about your deen, you know, protect yourself, protect your alhamdulillah. And his wife took shahada you know, as well. Mm. Uh, but because some brothers, they keep nagging on him. And some of them, they said, oh, don't listen to Sheikh Muhammad. You know, he is just wanted to sugarcoat it for you. You understand? And because of this, he had to listen to it. Until he came to a point, he had to choose. So he left Islam because of this. Yeah. To that extent. So so, so the, the point is, and Allah is very sad. Himself and his wife, they just left. Both of them left? Yeah, both, both. Both, they left. They came together. So all these stories, it tells us, few things tells us that we shouldn't be rushing into judging others we shouldn't be you know take it easy in dealing with things especially the, the rulings of islam you know uh, we shouldn't be yeah i understand some brothers they wanted the good they wanted the khair for the brother but from the place that they they they, they wanted good they ruined basically the whole thing so that's why it is advised for the reverse to have a source of information that's uh, actually, I did a paper actually at Regents Park Mosque about the rivers. And I, I put this point. I said, the problem is that for any river who goes to the masjid, any masjid, you'll find everyone is a mufti. Every single person giving fatwa. Yeah, everyone is telling him, oh, raise your finger like this. No, don't move your finger. Everyone will say something to him. So we'll be confused. Someone who's just a new Muslim wanted to practice salah. And then you, you, you get him confused. Yeah. yeah, he was using this primer. And someone said that it has and, pictures. Uh, no, no, we were, we were at uh, ELM, Islam yeah. Mosque, and uh, next thing you know, there's six people sitting around us, and he was so overwhelmed because I couldn't even get a word in. Yeah, and sometimes I didn't even know if I should say anything because <laughs> lots of the wearing clothes, they look like they're yeah. more religious than I am. This was uh, back in February. Yeah. And, and what they said to him? They were saying, oh, yeah, Aki, you don't need this. You just say SubhanAllah and then you learn the time. Someone else was saying, no, you have to learn it straight away. You have to memorize it. Someone else saying, you need to memorize the Arabic. And you see, that's the problem. That. He's like, I can't. Like, but Byron made a joke because he's trying. Byron's a very jokey person, right? He, he tries to push things off as a joke sometimes, yeah. And he responded, well, I don't need to speak English properly. Let me like learn this one. Yeah, like, let me take my time. Yeah, he's trying to like get them to slow down. Like, even I'm trying to do my best for them. Like six, seven like, brothers in total. And it's a bit awkward because you're sitting there. Surrounded by all these people, yeah, and you don't know because they're all arguing with one another, mm. then they're arguing on top of you. You know, Sheikh, this reminds me of you know, you know, this uh, very famous hadith of those two companions who gave advice to the person who had a wound, yeah, and they asked him to make well, the, no well, wound in uh, his head. the head, yeah, and they asked him to make uh, ghusl. Ghusl. and he passed away and he died, yeah. And what did the Prophet say? The prophet said, they killed him, Allah killed him, he said this. So, what they have done. You know, they that the man he had a, a serious wound in his head and he had an, a wet dream in the night. Mm -hmm. So he woke up and then he said to them, I cannot take the shower because the wound is deep and fresh. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that I could do something else to do tayammum or something? They said, No, since we have water and you have no excuse, you have to take a shower. So he took a shower and he died. And then when the Prophet ﷺ was informed of it, he said, they killed him, Allah killed him. He said, verily, that the cure of ignorance mm. is to ask. Yeah. The point is, mm. any, that, you know, not everyone is fit to be, to give fatwa or to advise, etc. Yeah. And subhanAllah, there is one brother, maybe you know him. Um, this brother, he took shahada with us some time ago, and then in the park. And, and uh, subhanAllah, he is... Uh, so he used to ask me a question. He was living with his girlfriend. I never said to him anything about it at all, nothing. Until one day he came to me, he said to me, yeah, the brother, they said to me, I just feel guilty because I live with this girlfriend, what should I do? Yeah? yeah. I said, okay, now you need to learn about your deen. I saw a thing, he said, why you just, you just, you need just say it. <laughs> say that as it is. I said, what do you want me to say? He said, everyone, they say it's haram. I said, yes, haram. I didn't say it's halal. But, you know, what is the... If I said to you it's haram, okay, what are you going to do about it? Okay, now. Mm -hmm. Suppose I said this to you. Mm -hmm. 
And then he said to me, yeah, I, I'll speak to her. We have, we'll do our nikah. I said, if you want to do your nikah, I will come and do it for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's, mm-hmm. that's the only thing which I could yeah. offer it. Yeah, yeah. After some time, subhanallah, it's, um, you know, it's a bit as well awkward situation that you tell, you tell this is the Islamic marriage. You're going to be imam is going to be coming and so awkward for her yeah. i understand mm-hmm. yeah and then she said oh i'm not ready for this it's a serious thing wedding you know how they think yeah about yeah, it. yeah 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 anyway and then uh, and then he came to me he said i don't know what to do etc i said i was trying to tell you <laughs> yeah i told <laughs> you and now yeah. I, I said to you what what you're gonna do now it's yeah. a, he said i don't know what should i do i said Akhi, now you have to choose at the end of the day uh, you tell her that you want to do the nikah properly, and since I said, I said, uh, I said is she Christian? They say, yeah, kind of. <laughs> you know, I was. I said, means means she's not Christian. They said she's kind of agnostic Christian. She say I'm Christian. Yeah, I said okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> I said even though she has, if you know, if you wanted to be allowed to be married to a woman, she has to be Christian at least. Not necessarily practicing Christian, but to identify herself as a Christian or a Jew, then fine. But if she is not sure about her identity, mm. that means you cannot say she's a Christian. That's another problem. Uh, <laughs> so, he opened up himself. Yeah, yeah. Look what mess yeah. he was, is, is in. But alhamdulillah, he's solid, the brother. Okay. And he spoke to her, and then after that, he said, oh, I'm not going to, that's it. I'm done with this. Mm. Wow. I'm not gonna... Alhamdulillah, and he left her. Alhamdulillah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you a story. Uh, and later on, alhamdulillah, we found, we helped him, we found uh, for him as uh, other sister. Alhamdulillah, the things went well. The point is that, you know, th- you know, it is difficult in the beginning of someone's Islam yeah. to bring all the rulings of Islam in one go. It's just so much, it's a very yeah, overwhelming yeah. feeling, basically. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yes, Haider, what you wanted to say? Um, so, I've, I've mentioned this before, but my Also, if you can push, like, numbers after Wait, wait, actually, just before we do that, let's give the, the viewers a quick update. Uh, where are we at? 226 pounds into the next target, guys. If someone can get us, we need two people to donate 100 pounds each. And uh, the word 100 pounds, what does that do? That teaches between 16 and 32 people. Yes, yeah, 16 and 32 people, bro. 16 and 32, but as Ibrahim Munas said, 16 to 32 people isn't even what. 100 pound teachers 100 pound actually goes to teaching 16 to 32 people and then the generations after them so yeah. Like, yeah yeah because those people go on forth to have children those children yeah. will be muslim those children will be raised <laughs> yeah. or he they will learn the salah from their parents those children will then have mm. children in the future inshallah yeah and over and over and over again until the day of judgment i don't have a math uh a maths equation for this but the probability of 32 Honestly. people i mean you have the down the generation to, to, to say possibly Possibly, of course, Allahu Alam, yeah. yeah. But possibly thousands of people yeah, of from course. your 100 pound donation. Yeah. 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 So we have 226 pounds to reach into our next target. So, inshallah, if people can be generous, Salah yeah. Jariah is the opportunity that you And as, as you can see, brothers and sisters, mashallah, you know, um, you know, just sitting here, subhanAllah, I feel like when Sheikh Mahmoud was talking, I actually forgot that we were on a stream. It felt more like just sitting here and talking and uh, enriching ourselves with these stories. I actually forgot that we were on a stream. But brothers and sisters, as you can see here, I'm surrounded by all these prayer mats. And all these prayer mats have something in common. They have something written on them. And it says, make dua for Sarah Suleiman. MashaAllah. Sister Sarah Suleiman, she is on top. She's the top donor. She came yesterday and within an hour, she donated over 9,000 pounds. I mean, Allah accepted from her. Um, we have her name on here, a couple of these. And what happens is whenever someone gives 50 pounds, you write your name on here. Uh, and it's just symbolic to your donation. The 50 pounds does not equal a prayer mat, but it's rather symbolic. And it's a way of encouraging people to give because these are going to go to Muslims, uh, reverts, Muslims who are learning how to pray, born Muslims who are learning how to pray. Haider, who's today here with us, he's one of those. Uh, so this is uh, Make Dua for Om Yusuf. This was donated by Yusuf, Brother Yusuf. We were talking to him three days ago, and he said, please, can you make Dua for my mother? Please make uh, write my mother's name, mashallah. And we wrote his mother's name. Yes, this is uh, So Make Dua for Ahmed Agina. 
again we both make uh Dwarfer um used to three times and make Dwarfer Zishan. So, brothers and sisters, if you want this to happen, please donate 50 pounds. We'll be writing your name on this. And these are the prayer mats that are within the these uh packages. Um, they are made out of cotton, they can be easily folded. You know, you can fold them very easily. Uh, they have transliteration, there's no Arabic, there's no Quran on these, so you can put them on the floor, subhanallah. Uh, they have instructions of the prayer and the things that you say within the uh, um, um, the things that you say within the prayer. Uh, it also gives you a beautiful breakdown on like the amounts. This is literally what my daughter is learning right now. She's, uh, I think, four years old, five years old, mm -hmm. six years old. She's richly learning. She did different names of Fajr, Dhuhr. She knows all of them now. Yeah. She's learning this. I was quite surprised when my wife was testing her. Um, so, yeah, so you have everything, the entire prayer on the prayer uh, on this prayer mat. These are guided prayer mats, very practical. Um, they're not clumsy, they don't do, they don't, sh they're not shiny, you know, like Ali says, they don't turn into chairs or anything or magic flying carpets. Look at this, you know, this, all you do is this, you fold them, you fold them, you fold them, and boops, disappearing. Okay, that's how they disappear, subhanAllah. And that's when it's time to pray, you pull them out again, you put them down, subhanAllah, and then you utilize them. Very, very simple, very, very simple idea extremely effective and we've seen the effectiveness of these prayer mats subhanallah by the quality of people that allah has really uh, allowed us to be around with uh, we had a conversation with brother jake early on he called in he had a one-to-one -one prayer session he has one of those prayer mats you've seen brother byron you've seen brother aaron uh, in fact there was a video a very powerful video uh with sister giselle she was the wife of brother aaron who was a uh, recipient of the one-to-one -one session who has who had also ordered the prayer mat she called in on his behalf not being a muslim and you know the stories uh that uh, sheikh muhammad was just telling us about you know a, a brother a river brother becoming muslim <coughs> you know a brother becoming muslim and then having a relationship with a you know non-muslim and a niqah and all of these things let me show you uh, a moment when this actually happens something that's actually recorded for you to see uh what we've been doing here by the permission of Allah SWT. So, um, brother Jab, my beloved brother Jabi, if you can put uh, the video of Sister Giselle in, on. And uh, this is uh, just a glimpse as to what is happening and what we're planning to do. And we want to have plenty more of these opportunities. So, brothers and sisters, if there's two people that can give 100 pounds, if there's two people that can give 100 pounds, that's going to teach 16 to 32 people. We're 246 pounds away from reaching the next target, brothers and sisters. Today is the last night of Ramadan, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, the last night of Ramadan. So please maximize your 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 good deeds. And yeah, when you're, whenever you're ready, my beloved brother. Send you one of these guided prayer masks as well. Or you can borrow no, your no, husband's. Or yes, borrow your husband's. Yes, no, no, I it. want my own, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not a Muslim, um, but my husband is a revert. So my first question about Tarawih, yep. and if a person has trouble praying um, Tarawih standing up, um, and I know that he um, there's an option for to sit down while doing it. The standing is better. But the mandatory prayer that has to be prayed standing, unless if the person has uh, an illness that prevents him from standing, that he can sit down. How long have you been a Muslim? Oh, I'm I'm actually not a Muslim, um, but my husband is a revert. So what my suggestion is, if you become Muslim yourself, keep this between you and your husband until when the time comes when you feel confident to mention this to your family, that's fine. You can go to our website, salahplus.com, and you can order. If you want, Ali, sister... I know you can... it already. Because my husband has it, and he actually told me uh, a couple of days ago. He said, "I can." Got, pray. Has he got one of this? Oh, has he got yes. one of this? Yes, and he can pray without um, reading the prayers now. See, you know, Subhanallah, this is this is this is profound. This is profound. Look at this. This is a sister who's a Catholic. Her husband is a Muslim. Who's a revert? A revert yeah. Who ordered the guided prayer mat and now can yeah. pray without using it. So. I testify. I testify that there is that there is no one, no one worthy to be worshipped, worthy to be worshipped except Allah, except Allah. And I testify, and I testify that Muhammad, that Muhammad is the messenger, 
is the messenger of Allah. Of Allah. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulu. Rasulu. Allah. Allah. Takbir. Alhamdulillah. One second. We just realized. Is this Aaron the one you've been teaching how to pray salah? Uh, yes. He's Aaron. Oh my gosh, one second. Guys, this is profound. This is Aaron. The word is the word is his instructor. The word has been teaching him how to pray salah. So this is his wife. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we talk about salah instructors, and people don't really understand. The word Sheikh Mohammed and the others, there's instructors, yeah. We didn't even know this, yeah. The word has been teaching a brother, and he talks so highly of them. Aaron, this, Aaron, that. And subhanAllah, where do, we don't even know it's his I wife guess, who's accepting I Islam, subhanAllah. Even though I was helping my daughter to learn to pray, she did better with the mat than... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, um, brothers and sisters you just seen that. There was uh, the moment bro uh, Sister Giselle took a shahad about three weeks ago or four weeks ago, subhanAllah. It was, I think, the first week of Ramadan. Yeah, um, yeah subhanAllah, she took a shahada. She's been very keen on praying. She's called in a few times. She's donated herself to the cause uh her husband has called in yesterday we had a conversation with Aaron yesterday um it's just a very beautiful blessed uh, couple uh who are very um enthusiastic about uh and very euphoric about uh this uh project the Salah plus project so brothers and sisters I mean there you can see it was it was um it's an evidence uh or or, or proof as, as you know and again brothers and sisters do not think that it's us who are doing this it's really we're just being the means you know a means to something that allah wills in the world and the same way you should view this as an opportunity to partake in that will you know the will of allah SWT, to really encourage and, and 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 donate as much as you can because subhanallah those two individuals, uh, Sister Giselle and Baba Aaron, do, they, do, they don't live in the UK. They've never been to the UK. We've never met them um, in person. They're far away from each other, uh, far away from us. Uh, but yet we were able to communicate with them. And yet Islam has found the ways to them. And this is the biggest proof that it has nothing to do with us, but with uh, Allah's hidayah. But, but there's a caveat to this and there's a detail to this. And the detail is that the donations that you are given are the means to this for happening. You know, because brother Aaron, um, she's such as her husband, he ordered his prayer mat. I asked him yesterday, three months ago. Now he does not need it anymore. Not only that, he becomes a center point. He becomes a, 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 a an evidence uh, for, for, for the power of Islam. Um, and subhanAllah, this is one thing that I, uh, I find quite remarkable about, about Islam is that even the people that know little about Islam can have a transformative change that can really entirely change a human being. The person who's changed so much may not actually know much about Islam, but the change that they make is so huge. For example, someone stopping to drink, someone stopping to go to uh, clubs and parties, People go to therapy for these things. Subhanallah. Years and years, they can't stop. They take years to change. And some people, they take the shahada, they understand how he does understand Allah. They they leave it, you know, quicker, much quicker than you you would be without without any um, external in, um, motivation. And, and again, this shows you, subhanallah, this shows you that there is power and strength in Islam that you can't find any, anywhere else. So brothers and sisters, all we're saying is that if you can see this right, this prayer mat here, subhanAllah, it's not only it can change. If the person who receives this prayer mat, you know, and believes in Allah and his message and believes in the day of judgment and really puts this effort into this and takes this in, they will change, subhanAllah. In fact, they will improve, I should say. They will improve as human beings, step by step. Everyone has their own levels. Everyone has their own pace in how they can do it. But we've seen it with our own eyes, subhanAllah. We've seen it with our own eyes, how people changed. And um, Brother Haider, maybe you can talk about this a bit more. Um, maybe start off uh, just briefly, because got a brief overview, uh, how you sort of came back to Islam. I mean, it started off when you were uh, going to Al-Andalus and... 
taken over. How, how did you become Muslim? <laughs> how did you become Muslim? No, wait, so you said, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Muslim. Yeah, no, no, but where, where, I mean, that's a joke. Where did you start? Uh, where did started, it... it started off with a, a big change in my life. Yeah. Um, I was a university student. And to not like, give away too much of what I used to do. Yeah. If you are a university in the UK, perhaps in America, you may understand this. Um, if you're in certain societies and um, sports groups, like for example, rugby in the UK, perhaps American football in the US and stuff like that, or ice hockey in Canada, the activities you get up to in your social sets, you know, in, your, um, in your socials, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, they can be quite haram, I guess. But I was essentially like that two, two to three times a week out late night, um, keep my mother awake up all night, all night, and I never used to care. I used to just do whatever I wanted, waste my money, all of that. And, um, there was a moment where I changed because I decided to leave university for other reasons, completely unreal. Yeah. And the thing is, I never left university because I was in a like in a situation where I was failing. Mm -hmm. I was getting my my grades before I left were like eighty two percent in my, some of my dissertations, some of my essays, sorry, and seventy percent in some of my coursework. Mm -hmm. So I was doing well. Wait, wait for me. Yeah, he yeah. will join you. Um, so I was in that situation where I was actually doing well at university, but I dropped out because I, I didn't see the future in the course I was studying. Mm. And uh, out of nowhere, uh, when I was clearing out my stuff, that's when I found the Quran. I dropped out from a place that it shouldn't have been in. in yeah. From there onwards, over the course of a few weeks, I'm like, over the course of a few days, I started reading it, didn't really like, understand it. Yeah. And that so one day recommended a different coffee for the as I purchased it. Yeah. Pardon me. And um, made a lot of uh, decisions after that. That led me towards reading, like reading the Quran, finding out that such such, such thing as the Tafsir exists, finding out that such thing as the Sira exists. I never knew that the Sira of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam existed prior. Um, understanding what the Hadiths were and what the Hadiths meant, and how many Hadiths there were in the first place. I never knew that there were thousands. I thought maybe a collection of a hundred. So this was my like sort of curve that I experienced, and then from there onwards, over the course of a year, I kept on questioning Islam, I kept on like trying to test it to my sort of like agnostic or atheist mindset mm -hmm. and eventually over time what it led to was a constant reading but uh, constant reading or watching videos and taking notes and all that it led to a moment where i had to um where i was on a live with sheikh muhammad here and i questioned uh, and he questioned me saying that um why are you not a muslim mm -hmm. and I, my, my only response was well because i don't know salam i don't know i don't know I, I don't think i'd be a good muslim yeah i don't know if i could stop sinning i don't know if i could stop like, doing certain activities over that and his response was, oh, the fundamental is Tawheed, so take your Shahada land and inshallah in time you will. Like, you know, these are things from the Shaitan where you question yourself, you put doubt in front of yourself. Mm. And that sort of statement kind of made me realize that, that I do believe in Allah. Mm. Why have I not taken Shahada? So I took my Shahada on that day, it's like December 8th. On a, this was on live stream, right? Yeah. yeah, it was a Thursday. I remember the day. It was a Thursday, but it was either 7th or 8th. I should probably check the calendar. But um, yeah, that was the day I took my Shahada. And from there onwards, in January, I received my salam at started praying and by February I hadn't, I hadn't when did you it. order your salamat? I ordered it probably like December 10th, December 11th. How did you January. so how did you find out about the salah I was plus? These okay. I was watching these streams. That's okay. how I found out about it. Um, I never heard of such a thing before. Like I've seen um the salamats that you can hear like listen to out loud. And prior to my salamat actually arriving I used to watch these YouTube videos like an hour long explanation of how to pray salam. And uh, I think those helped but the opportunity that the salamat had provided was that I wasn't like if you have something playing, yeah. like if you have a pray map that reads it out loud or you have a phone playing, you're listening to it, you're like, mm -hmm, I'm listening to it, okay, poor, cool. okay, nice, it's a lower part to go down to the pool, etc. Um, you don't really learn it, you don't, you're not forced to try it yourself, yeah. And uh, what happens is that I would be reading the salama and I would be forced to, by the way, for those who are watching, uh, brother Hayda's talking about these salamats right yes. now, right? These are the salamats that he's talking about. And uh, what I did was I started reading it, and I would be forced to learn how to say Alhamdulillah, yeah. and then I used to listen to recitals and I would like try and learn it as best as possible. Yeah. I think now I think my pronunciation is decent. You're yeah, not perfect, of course, but it's decent. Mm. And um, yeah, so I, like for me, it's like something special because when I when I started like, memorizing it, it only helped, it only came through when I was reading it continuously over and over again. And eventually, when my salah reached five times a day regularly. Yeah, okay. When it, I went to reach five times a day and regularly I was praying it, that was the opportunity that I had. Mm. Well, from there, then a few salamis okay. um, took me out there onwards. Yeah. Okay. Now, 
yeah okay um so yeah mashallah so that was the story subhanallah so from the stream um yeah yeah, yeah. 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 so yeah from the stream to sister zara um Sulem, um she's she's online yeah one yeah okay yeah get it let's hear it yeah yeah okay hello assalamu alaikum alaikum salam how are you sister zara you okay alhamdulillah alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Sorry, i didn't know i came to the live stream i was just wanted to watch it jazakallah khair may allah reward and bless you sister how are you how is everything you doing well alhamdulillah 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 rabbil alameen allah barak fiki so I completed the, you know, the uh, thousand pound they didn't allow me last night. Um, so I actually uh, gave it today. So Alhamdulillah. You, so you gave it today, the day. Oh, it's yeah. yeah. The, it should be yeah. adjusted. Yeah, yeah. Jazakallah <laughs> khairan. May Allah reward you and bless you, sister. Jazakallah khairan. And may actually, Allah may, from all of us. Ameen. May Allah reward you, sister. May Allah Azza wa Jal reward you. And, and Sister Zara, I wanted to share something. Yes. That Sister Dara, she was even saving for her Hajj. And yet she gave this because she said Allah is the one who gives the risk. But she she prioritized this and she said Allah Azza wa will give. Wow. And that shows wow. the sacrifice that people who so does Allah. for the sake of Allah. May Allah reward and bless you, sister. Wallahi, mm -hmm. I, wallahi that's something, yani the more you see from the Muslim Ummah, the more you see khair in this Ummah, that people who do their best in order to serve others. And inshallah, definitely, inshallah, sister, Allah Azza wa Jal will, will help you and will make it easy for you. And mm -hmm. what I will do, inshallah, I will do my best, inshallah, ta'ala. Regarding the Hajj, I have in some, some suggestion, inshallah, I will, will be in touch. I have your details, inshallah, and uh, we'll, we'll sort out something, inshallah, ta'ala, for you, sister, bi ta'ala. Oh, I will try to. Exactly. Yeah, inshallah. Hopefully this year, I may go Hajj this year, inshallah. I hope I will go this year. If I go, inshallah, we'll see. I already spoke to some uh, organization, inshallah, we'll see, inshallah, ta'ala, what we can do. Uh, because someone who, who, who did this, uh, you know, that shows, you know, uh, the, uh, a pure heart you have. May Allah make it easy for you, and may Allah you know, increase you in all khair, my sister. Amen. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. I'm going to get off because I didn't know I'm live. I thought I just... No worries. No, we are, we are privileged actually talking to you today. Zakallah khair. Zakallah khair, Shaykh. All right, inshallah. Look after yourself. Look after Zakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Love khair. Assalamu alaikum. You guys said that if someone were to donate a thousand pounds, it could be laid up to Qadr. Yeah. Because of the increase of a thousand pounds or more, it would be at least a minimum of 30 million pounds. Yeah. If you do the quick maths, then that 9,000 pounds you donate, right? 10,000. 10,000 pounds. Yeah, 10. It would be 300 million pounds. Yeah. Like, Imagine the scope, like nobody in their life could donate, for, even billionaires would never donate 300 million pounds. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that, oh. but for the day of judgment, 300 million pounds worth of reward. Yeah. Rather, may Allah, reward. Azza, may Allah Azza, Azza, increase that in all khayr. I mean, get you from me, sir. Allah back here. Yeah, brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, on. that was uh, Sister Sara, mashallah, may Allah bless her. She had, uh, she's done an out, outstanding performance yesterday, subhanAllah, incredible, credible. She came through and gave ten thousand uh, pounds, and which we which we've learned now was actually um, her hard-earned money that she was been saving for Hajj. Um, subhanallah, I'm I'm speechless. I'm really speechless. Um, and that's just a shouldn't lie. That's a testament. It's a testament to how powerful the Islamic community is. How powerful Muslims are. You know how powerful Muslims are because of. The beliefs that they carry in their hearts, the belief they carry in their souls, and because they expect, they expect, you know, uh, their rewards to be accepted. And I remember one thing that Sister Sarah said, and she said it very in a very subtle way. She said, "May Allah accept it from me, no, may Allah, not even from me. May Allah accept it." Subhanallah. It just shows you the humility behind people like this. And we were talking earlier about Abu Bakr, and we we're talking about Umar ibn Khattab. Radu Anhama, who were human beings, Subhanallah to me, or man to me, you know, Raju, man that um, are my heroes. And we talked about the idea of the date, the date that had no seat, you know, uh, Abu Bakr, who was going around Medina serving the people. Watch this. This is Abu Bakr 
he's the leader of the Muslims, the Amir. Yeah, the Amir of the Muslims, subhanAllah. And what was he doing? What was he doing, subhanAllah, brothers and sister? He was serving the people, he was serving that blind woman. He was serving that old lady who had no support system and he wasn't speaking to her. He wasn't communicating with her, subhanAllah, brother and sister. What he was doing, subhanAllah, was serving <coughs> selflessly just before he passed away. So Sister Sarah, she reminds me of, of these people, subhanAllah, of these great people of the past. He was selfless, you know. So right now, brothers and sisters, the, the, the brothers are praying. So maybe what we can do is switch the camera over. Let me see if I can do it. So this is going to be an in-person, in-studio prayer. Um, and then we will resume after. I'm going to go make my vodou, but I'm going to see if the camera can capture the brothers praying. Um, so let's make the stream a bit more in, in, um, engaging. And also the chat. I'm going to engage more with the chat in a minute, inshallah. Allah 
سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم Just start telling the plane to sister lies. Is it that one? Yeah. So it's only playing a car. Yeah. I'm going to make a door. Guided prayer mass as well. Or you can borrow no, your no, husband's. Or borrow yes, your husband's. Yes, no, no, I want my own, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not a Muslim, um, but my husband is a revert. So my first question about tarawih, yep. and if a person has trouble praying um, tarawih standing up, um, and I know that he um, there's an option for to sit down while doing it. Standing is better, but the mandatory prayer that has to be prayed standing, unless if the person has uh, an illness that prevents him from standing, that he can sit down. How long have you been a Muslim? Oh, I'm I'm actually not a Muslim. Um, but my husband is a revert. So what my suggestion is, if you become Muslim yourself, keep this between you and your husband until when the time comes when you feel confident to mention this to your, to your family, that's fine. You can go to our website, salahplus.com, and you can order. If you want Ali, sister... I know can... it already because my husband has it and he actually told me uh, a couple of days ago, they said, I can got, Has he got one of this? Oh, has he got yeah. one of this? Yes, and he can pray without um, reading the prayers now. See, you know, Subhanallah, or... this, is, this, is, this is profound. This is profound. Look at this. This is a sister who's a Catholic. Her husband is a Muslim, a who's revert. a revert, yeah. who ordered the guided prayer mat and now can yeah. pray without using it. So, I testify. I testify. That there is. That there is. No one. No one. Worthy to be worshipped. Worthy to be worshipped. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I testify. And I testify. That Muhammad. That Muhammad is the messenger. Is the messenger of Allah. Of Allah. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Alla. Alla. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. 
أنا أنا محمدا محمدا الرسول الرسول الله ألا تكبير الحمد لله 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 الح
along the way introduced me to Islam. I invited everybody. And my mum came and she had a little hijab on. Well, she had a scarf sort of wrapped around her head, which kept falling off, but she, <laughs> she gave it a go. Um, and my male friends came and it was just beautiful. I, I just, yeah. And I felt the imam gave them the most beautiful um, talk before I took my shahada, but it was the most beautiful experience ever. And people were crying and cuddling me. And I, at that point, I felt like I was a Muslim. And that feeling has never left. So your mom, uh, I'm guessing by what you said, isn't a Muslim. She's not a Muslim. But uh, has anyone else in your family converted to Islam? So funny enough, um, so my brother uh, followed Islam because he knew, I mean, I would always speak about Islam through the year, from 17 until 36, I would always speak. So he found Islam through that. And um, like myself, sort of was walking down the road with a friend who told him how to do the Shahada and he he did that years and years ago and he would fast and stuff and he was always sort of by himself and he would ask me any questions that he had um but I kept saying to him do your shahada properly do your shahada and he'd said you know what I'm not practicing the way I should I'm not perfect and I think there's this idea that as uh reverts we should be perfect before we revert but that's I now know that that is not true so it, he reverted in May. He finally, um, on the on Eid, um, we, we went to Juma and he reverted. Unfortunately, I missed it. I didn't realise he was going to do it. But my dad also reverted in January, um, which was beautiful. I mean, I couldn't breathe when I found out that he reverted. It's, you know, he's 63. He's lived 63 years as a uh, non-practicing Catholic. His family, my granny is um, a practicing Catholic and my auntie is a Christian. And they're, you know, really religious um, in Grenada. And to, to see my dad become a Muslim was just the most beautiful thing ever. So now there's out of our family of six, there are three Muslims and three non-Muslims. Inshallah, um, I pray that there will be more. So with Salah, I mean, in the beginning, I remember, because I'm dyslexic, so it's really, really difficult. Just basic phonics, I find quite hard. And um, with the transliteration, you know, you, you'd look at it and there'd be like three A's in a row. And I'm thinking, right, I can't do one A, let alone three. <laughs> so um, I normally learn best with listening and then following along. So I reached out to um, a sister that I met um, at an event recently, um, just asking her about um, just to go, because no one ever went through the prayer with me. So I've sort of been on a solo journey um, and, and sort of relied on namaz to, to, for learning the prayer. Um, so I reached out to a sister who, as I, as I said, I met, and she um, referred me to um, Salam. So... What did you think of today? How do you feel now that you've you know, been walked through this? Amazing. Actually, you know, I have struggled um, with Salah. Just, you know, the wudu, I found it's, it's a very simple, well, it's, it's a simple task. But um, I realized just from speaking to yourself and the brothers that I actually overcomplicate it. So um, as well as the prayer, there's a lot of things that I've been sort of just from from the app, you know, extra duas that we're in, actually, it's not that they don't need to be in there, but I need the basics. So praying, um, I have a, a much better understanding of praying and actually it's a lot simpler than I thought because I've kind of been doing it the harder way. Um, and so I'm gonna sort of stick to the basics, perfect those and inshallah, um, add some duas. May Allah make it easy for you Thank to you, absorb these words and implement their meanings, you know, into yeah. your life as well, inshallah. Jazakallah khair yeah. for, for contacting us and, you know, using this service. And now you have this prayer mat, inshallah, to take with you and, yeah. and take it wherever you need. Yeah. Thank you. And you really, as well, with, um, with my dyslexia, um, simplify things, which um, is really helpful. So this prayer mat was donated by Omar Mohammed Ibrahim for you. So you get to take this home. Um, you can Thank have a look you at it. so much. That's very kind. Thank you so much uh, for donating this. This is going to be a game changer for me.
Yeah. So, yeah. Salaamu Alaikum, brothers and sisters. We're back. Salaamu Alaikum, we're back. Sorry, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, keep oh, yeah. do your thing. Do your thing. Oh, I know it's back on the door. Right? Totally. We're out here. It's on us. Yeah, it's oh, oh no. it's scary, man. Yeah? Yeah. Salaamu Alaikum, brothers and sisters. We are back. I hope you guys enjoyed that break. We just went to finish the after the show. And uh, now we're back. Sheikh, what is. Uh, SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. We had 100 pounds donation. 100 pounds donation? Yeah. Oh, 100. 100. 100. 100. So, so guys, what does that bring to... us to now? Guys, what does that bring us to now? What is the current? 114 pounds away from the next target, inshallah. If we can donate, if we can all donate, then inshallah, we'll reach that target soon. Guys, 100 pounds. What does that mean? The word 100 pounds. How many people does 100 pounds teach? 16. Is it only 16? 16. 16 to? 16 to 32 people, guys. Yes. 16 to 32 people. And here's the thing, it doesn't end at 32. Mm. And it's the thing that a lot, a lot of people forget. Because 16 to 32 people, it only seems like a classroom full of people. But inshallah, those people then go forth to have children. Okay. They'll then go forth to have friends, colleagues, you know, family members who will then take, take the shahada and learn about Islam and learn the salah. So those 16 to 32 people you have the potential of teaching. Is will, true? Will they, by the way, if you to Oh, I don't know. Who cares? If it's... You just threw us off, bro. Yeah, I don't even know where I was. Yeah, you can be doing that. Well, that made happen. No, but we on life. Bro. <laughs> okay, so yeah. where were we? Said, Alhamdulillah, man. I'll say it again. Alhamdulillah. 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 Threw us off again. Is it true? I mean, Ali put it. Yeah. Yeah, but Ali puts anything on his post. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. <laughs> You can't yeah, agree. Yeah, All right, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. So, guys, brothers and sisters, like we were saying, 16 to 32 people, that's what you have the opportunity of minimum teaching. But those people will then go forth to have children, yeah. friends, colleagues, family members who will take the shahada and learn the salah from them because that is the opportunity you're providing. Your donation of £100 doesn't just go to 16 to 32 people. It has the opportunity to go forth to perhaps a thousand people generation after generation imagine their children learn salah from them you you'll be rewarded from that then their children onwards and their children onwards and their children onwards share it for what i'm saying is it true or false that's absolutely true and that's okay. why there is the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said whomever taught an ayah or helped teaching an ayah will have the reward of this ayah as long as this ayah is being recited it's not as long as the person reciting it as long as this ayah is being recited Meaning the reward comes from the ayah. So if you teach someone Fatiha, as long as he recites Fatiha, you'll get the same reward as him. Well, I mean, if this person ayah. taught an ayah, even an ayah. So so if this person taught another person, this ayah will keep what? Uh, Being recited. Reward. Yeah? So you will get the same reward, the originator. And all the way, as long as we recited until the day of judgment. You know, one of my favorite eyes is you know, so very sad yeah. for No way, no way. 200 euros. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Allahu Akbar. My favorite, one of my favorite eyes from the start of the Quran is Salat yeah. al-Mustaqeem. Guide us yeah. to the straight path. Yeah, that's uh -huh. the opportunity you're providing. But Salat al-Mustaqeem, guide us to the straight path. Allah is the one who guides. We are simply the tools. Yeah. Your donation, your donation provides the opportunity for people to be taken through that straight path. Yeah, with the mercy of Allah. So that is what you're providing. Yes. Allah. So please generate them generously. It's almost the end of Ramadan. Perhaps it yep. will be the last day. We're not sure. 100% we'll wait until the moon. Inshallah is sighted. But you have the opportunity to earn, in, earn an increased reward, inshallah. So please donate generously and you'll, this will be going to a good cause. The award, if we could get the camera on the wall, the wall, could you show us the prayer map for some of the new viewers who may not sure. see it? I like that. The touche. Good way of uh, getting the attention. Away. By the way, what's the meaning of touche? Touche is like when you... So when someone makes a point, mm -hmm. and that point is so well made that it, it's like perfect to the moment. Yeah. So they say touche. And like, what is this? Where did this word came from? This French, French word. It's French. French. Yeah. That would. By the way, I keep being amazed by you in certain things. That I, I know that you speak German. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Seriously, I, I thought, found this out recently. No, the other day. I was here, and then he was talking French. This guy I know, <laughs> this definitely, this is not German, so he speaks. And I said, that would you speak French? And then I said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> SubhanAllah, is this, this multitask da'ya, Allah <laughs> barak <laughs> MashaAllah. You know, that would, why don't you, instead of this, yeah, you know, invite your audience, so German speakers I should, I should, and French speakers. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, we have a brother, what's that guy called? That's a brother from Germany. Um, he has a very strange name. What's his name? 
brother Regenbogen or something like that. Yeah. Regenbogen or Ragnar. I know he has a strange name, but yeah, he's he he calls in sometimes. Okay. He's from Germany. Yeah, yeah, mashallah. Um, yeah, it's uh, alhamdulillah. It's um, yeah. What about the French? The French, they are they used to be French. They used to call in, right? Oh, yeah, Those you, of them, you, you sure you don't speak Italian or something? Like no, no, not yet. Oh, okay. Arabic is the next language, inshallah. Inshallah. What? So we leave the producers to producing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, got, so let's yeah. Go back to the prayer mat. Sorry, where were we? Yeah. So yeah. If we could get the um, camera on the wood, please. Listen, I want you Dawood. <laughs> listen, uh, this is the task. But, but Afghan, Afghan, put the camera on Dawood. Dawood, what do you need to do? You yeah. need to explain about this prayer mat in three different languages. Uh, I try. Ah, yeah, please. I try. Yeah. Please. Three different languages. There. I want to see that. Please. And and uh, you need to explain about it in English. Yeah. Then to explain about it in, in, in German and yeah. to explain about it in, in French. Okay. Would you like me to come and hold it for you? I'll be your ring girl. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll jump up for you. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. That's going to be interesting. So we're doing telemarketing now. Sit down, sit down. Get me that stuff from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, from there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Jabi. Put the camera By the way, my French is going to be the weakest, but I'll try. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, you know. Yalla, Jabi, put okay, the camera so, on both of them. Okay, this is the prayer mat. Is, uh, that's a proper... Okay, we're going to try to explain the prayer mat in three different languages. Um, SubhanAllah. Okay, so this is the prayer mat. It's made out of cotton. It has an instruction on how to pray. Uh, it's transliteration. And basically, uh, it gives you the opportunity to follow the prayer step by step. It's for free. You don't pay for it. And uh, you can go to salaplus.com to order it. Walk us through each of it. So what does it start with? I, I think I'm not going to go as much in detail. Oh, okay. Just in English. Just in English. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. So um, so at the beginning, it starts off with Al-Fatiha, which is the compulsory <laughs> aspect of the prayer that you have to recite in order for your prayer to be accepted. And then it has a portion of the Quran as well. What is this? A, a kafir. One yeah, one yeah, Al Kafir, which is the to show the surah, um, show the surah in the Quran, and then it has all the movements from ruku to sujood, you know, and then the standing, and then uh, it finishes off uh, with um, the atayatu, uh, lilahi, and uh, the sal salutation he sent upon the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then it has uh, the takbir at the end. Uh, oh, so yeah, bro. it's the entire uh, thing. So can we go in French now? Uh, yeah, let me go in German first. So that's German just, first, okay. To the people okay. of Deutschland. So that's this uh, Gebetsteppich, that's uh, Anweisung hat, wie man zu beten hat. Es hat uh, verschiedene uh, Positionen werden dort beschrieben. Uh, also sie fängt an mit der al fatih dass die Offenbarung und die Öffnung des, des Gebetes ist und uh, hört auf mit dem Takbir am Ende. Uh, es hat auch uh, noch zur Beschreibung der äh, verschiedenen äh, Uhrzeiten, wann man betet. Äh, und äh, es hat auch noch was noch. Ähm, sorry? Ja, äh, und hat äh, dann die, die verschiedenen äh, Units oder die verschiedenen äh, Kombinationen, die man betet äh, pro Tag. Und äh, ja, die ist, äh, die ist das aus das ist eine Baumwollematte, die ist ziemlich praktisch und die kann man auch äh, zusammenfalten. Now in, in, uh, in French. Okay. Uh, oh, Someone donated 100 pounds, you know, he said, yes. from a free Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Keep speaking German! Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, now the language is the baguette. The language is the baguette. Okay, uh, oh, that, that's, this is going to be very difficult because there's a lot of technical words I do not know in French. Uh, but uh, I will try. C'est ça, c'est un tapis, tapis, tapis à prier. Il y en a l'instruction, ça, ça parle de euh, toutes les euh, de différentes positions que tu dois, tu dois faire par an de, de la prière. Euh, il y en a, la explique, ça explique toutes les euh, positions de la prière et la, ça explique aussi le, 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 le temps différent quand on doit prier. Les musulmans ils prient cinq fois par, par jour. Il y en a l'instruction et bien l'explication des des les mouvements qui ont fait compris et oui c'est 
j'ai oublié comment on dit ça en français, mais il y en a le, le mot là pour euh, la matérielle. C'est en, en, en anglais, on appelle ça cotton, en allemand, c'est euh, en allemand. Euh, on, on appelle ça bon volet, mais je ne connais pas en français. Peut-être oh. si, peut s'il y en a quelqu'un là dans le chat qui peut me dire euh, le, le mot pour bon volet ou coton. Je crois que c'est coton, peut-être. Je ne sais pas. Yeah, this is it. MashaAllah, Allah Mubarak. Yeah. Oh, you're a very talented man. I wish I knew this before. I would have asked you for French classes as well. Yeah, well, I, I'm not fit to give French classes. I can give German class. Yeah. German class, Any other languages? No, no. There's other languages as well, but I'm... Did you know more than 6,000 mosques are opening up across, are being built and being, inshallah, soon to open up across Europe? Really? 6,000? Yeah, 6, mosques. And as Ali um, hopes, yeah, and as a team at Salah Plus, you guys are working hard on And there's one in the Slovakia soon. One in Slovakia soon. <laughs> yeah, brother Eric. Are, inshallah, opening up across Europe, yeah? Inshallah, let's see. Six, Where's brother Eric? Salah Hubs. He's not on today. He's not on today. He's working. He's working. Perhaps he's working. Perhaps he's working. He's working. Yeah, he was... Brother Eric was meeting uh, friends, uh, some of my friends in Holland today, oh, and, and, and uh, they went to visit him. So inshallah, he's gonna. You, you have a friend in Holland. Yeah. They, uh, your friends in Holland. Are yeah. They, are they German or what are they? No, they're like one uh, is Turkish. Okay. Yeah, practicing Muslim, mashallah, and uh, Gulet is Somali. <laughs> ah, mashallah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they, good yeah, brother, good brother, mashallah. Uh, but they were they're helping him with. Uh, you know, integrate him into the the Jama'ah there or, yeah. and also potentially work. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. May Allah make it easy for him. I mean, I mean, I mean. So I think he's maybe with them, he's breaking their fast with them, praying with them. Maybe that's why he's doing mashallah. So where we reach now? What's where we reach now? What's the So we had another like well, donation? Yeah, so someone gave hundred pounds and said let me read this. Two of us seventy pounds away from the next Subhanallah, we did it, man. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah. Thank you, Allah. Uh, so someone says, someone who benefited from a free mat. Who did what? Someone who benefited from a free mat. Yeah. yeah. So the person. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, brothers and sisters, we've been saying it, we've been saying it, we've been saying it over and over again. We have noticed a trend. People who directly benefit from this are more willing to help. This is why we can confidently say that if you give 100 pounds, you're not only teaching 16 people, which this is going to cover, it's 32. But in reality, in reality, it's beyond that. It's generational, you know? And subhanAllah, I remember, okay, that's this, um, so there's this lady, uh, she's uh, a, 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 a scholar, um, but she's not like an Islamic traditional scholar. Yani. She's, she's not an, an al alima. She's more of an uh, academic. But she's really liked by a lot of Muslims. And her name is Angelika Neuwert. She's ger a German scholar, it's Orientalist, but she's one of the good people. Yeah. And she, uh, she made this, uh, she had like this lecture. She was giving this lecture where she was talking about the Quran. But she's not Muslim. She's not a lot. I, I don't think she is. Okay. Maybe she is. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> But she's always very, she talks very positively Pro about Islam. Pro-Islam, kind of. Yeah, yeah, very, very. Yeah. Uh, respects the tradition, and it's, she's always very impressed by, you know, Islamic culture. And she says that, um, she was making a joke, she was like, when she started giving her lecture, she was like, well, I'm going to read from my paper, because usually when we go to Islamic, the Islamic, the ulama, they don't have papers. So for, <laughs> they just speak from... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing it with, I'm doing it with paper. You know, yeah. she was making a joke like that. Um, and she was talking about, um, so she did, makes the difference between Quran, Musaf, and Kitab, you know? The, yeah. the lecture was about that, and the preservation of the Quran. Um, and she talks about, and she was saying that, first and foremost, the, the, the Quran is something that was um, recited and memorized and passed down that way. And then she talks about, because we're talking about generations, right? So she talks about the idea that there is a Quran the uh, there is a Quran that's been passed down for a thousand years, uh, just uh, through um, verbal, verbal in, in uh, Azhar for a thousand years. So, for a thousand years, yeah. they've been given um, what's the, the thing? Senate, Senate. Yeah, yeah there's a Senate is... between, and then they they in the 70s they checked the rec recital with the Quran, the actual Quran, and it was one to one, subhanallah. Mm -hmm. And there is as well, there is uh, there are some scholars who have the Quran 
Uh, like for example one of those was uh, like the uh, Ibn Sheikh Masarawi he's, he's in Qatar now Sorry. he's Egyptian he's mm. like Sheikh Al Maqar in Egypt he has one of the shortest Sunnah to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam short ones really yeah, yeah. Who, how many um, people I don't know Allah they, they said it's around 20 something or the, يعني it's, it's a small, small number Subhanallah. like you could t- you could see his his uh, the chain of narrators <laughs> himself <laughs> from his teacher to his teacher all the way and and the way that the people who are taking the Senate is, you know, and it's so difficult, it's so sophisticated. Yeah. They mm-hmm. will not prove you. If you make a mistake with the vowel, you have to repeat, you have to do it properly, and you have to do it with no mistakes. And you know, it's something, it's a mission mm-hmm. to do it. And it's not something which is small. So someone go down that route just to, to memorize yeah. the Quran with, with the Senate. It's a humongous actually work. Yeah, yeah it's not just the Quran itself. During Qaddafi's time. Yeah. Yeah. With all the problems with Qaddafi that he has done, uh, you know, he give for anyone who memorizes the Quran in the country, he deserve the salary of someone who have master degree. Subhanallah. During his time, yeah. Allah never knew. That's how he is. Even if he, he even if he didn't go to any university, he didn't go to any, he didn't get any certificate. You know, his job, the country has to provide him for him a job which is suitable for someone with master degree. Subhanallah. You know, when, when the other day, that's, when that's very said, powerful. Yeah. I never knew this. The other day, when Byron was, mean, was saying over there, um, Dahir, your, your boy was uh, reciting the Quran. Yeah. He was uh, so uh, messed up. Yes. And uh, there was a point, obviously, he's young, he's 14 years old, but he made a, a mistake and you corrected him. Mm. Yeah. Byron was just saying, he looked at me, he goes, How did you know? He looked at me, he said, How did you know? And then I think it happened like maybe a minute later, just another mm. small mistake and you corrected him. Mm. And it was, we had this conversation, I said, But when someone is reciting Quran, the people who are like, you know, who have the knowledge, they they can hear it and they can they can feel it. Yeah. And they know it. And it, that's such a small mistake and you can you can catch it. And that's how like one of the ways that the Quran is uh, preserved. preserved. And actually uh, think about an Imam leading thousands of people, if he made mistakes, so the Quran mm. is actually checked verbally. Mm. Yeah. Three times a day. Throughout the world. So you could imagine every Imam who recites Maghrib Isha Fajr, which is to recite loudly. Mm-hmm. So the people behind him, they are the one who check the Imam recitation to know that if he has said it right or wrong. Mm-hmm. Which means that Imam he has to make sure that he recites correctly. Which means in order for him to rec- to recite, you know, without mistakes, mm-hmm. the people behind the Imam they must have some knowledge of Quran too. Address the Imam to, to mention this. So on a daily basis, the Quran is being checked at least. <laughs> Three times a day in every single mosque in the world. Yeah, well, actually, a quick question. Why is it not recited out loud during uh, Zohar and uh, well, the, the Prophet? That's how it is. We are, we, certain things we, we, we take yeah, it, no you know, we take it as it is, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, if anyone has any questions, drop them in the chat. We do have. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad today. Yeah, subhanAllah. So the point that we were trying to make earlier about, uh, you know, the, the isnad of things and things like that is to do with, uh, you know, the deeds that are performed and are preserved, subhanAllah. Uh, I think Islam is amongst one of the traditions. There's not many traditions, unfortunately, from the uh, sort of pre- uh, prehistoric, uh, not prehistoric, from the uh, late antiquity uh, that you can, you know, really trace back one for one, word for word, syllable for syllable. This is unheard of, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters. And many very, very you know, intelligent people across the globe know this, subhanAllah. And this is why we say when you donate 100 pounds, subhanAllah, what you're doing is you're preparing a new generation. It's almost guaranteed, subhanAllah, that they, by the permission of Allah and the will of Allah, there will not be another generation that's going to carry on, subhanAllah, in this country. When uh, a lot of the Asian, South East Asian uh, immigration, you know, when they came in there, they built mosques. These mosques, they're still here to this day. Many of our Asian brothers, they built loads of mosques here, and to this day, people are using it. Mm. The the founders of these mosques, they're not here no more. You know, actually, Subhanallah. Uh, something I realized, and uh, I noticed this as I was growing up, and I never appreciated it until recently. There was a mosque near my area. Yeah, it's called SIA now, Stratford, some Islamic association. Yeah. And it used to be a singular garage. 
a singular garage, like mm. we park a car inside of it. Yeah? yeah, singular garage. Then it was two, then it was three, and now it's a mosque <laughs> with a whole dome and minarets and everything. Mm. Yeah, they've got a growing community, and they've got to point where they have to extend it as well. Yeah, and, like, and it's a that's in the course of maybe my life for about 15 or years. I've yeah, that. yeah, yeah, so it's one of the. Like, yeah, well, I've Alhamdulillah, the, I have uh, my uh, bit of reservation about the mosques in the UK. Okay. Now, my reservation, I, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to sound like a bit uh, confrontational, but I believe there are certain things we are lacking in our mosques. Okay. Um, one of the things, the mosques are the. You know, the differences between establishing mosques in UK or in Europe in general and to establish mosques in India before or uh, in Africa before, mm -hmm. the purpose is, is yes, to worship Allah, but the main one of the objectives is not necessarily the same. And I will, mm -hmm. I will, I will incite you with this. Interesting. The, basically, in the past, mm -hmm. what happens? Um, Let's say, for example, the Muslims, they went to India subcontinent, mm. they spread Islam, they give Islam to some people. They say, the very said, the small minority who accepted Islam, they are the one who carried on the da'wah, for example, in the India subcontinent throughout, mm. which is nowadays Pakistan and, 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 and uh, India and, yeah, and Bangladesh. Yeah. All that area is just because of the few group, the few people, the group of people who accepted Islam in the first place and they carried on the da'wah in the India subcontinent. So if you put the whole Muslims population mm. in the India subcontinent, it's actually it's around it's around seven hundred million. Yeah, yeah. This is Muhammad Ibn Waqas, right? Muhammad Qasim. Yeah. Muhammad Qasim. Yes. Muhammad Qasim. Muhammad Qasim. Yeah. yeah, Muhammad Qasim is the, his own fault, but actually this da'wah was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this da'wah was, was an ongoing mm -hmm. ongoing da'wah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you see here as well in 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 um, in Indonesia and they call it Malayo countries. Yeah. Yeah. Indonesia, Malaysia, and even Philippines and these areas. Philippines was to be was hundred percent, you know, Muslims in the past. By the yeah, in the past, yeah, before yeah. the mm -hmm. Portuguese came and the yeah, Spain yes, and yes, the Spain yes. they came and changed them to to this mm -hmm. to Christianity. So the uh, in the past, again, some merchant went from Yemen to to these areas, trade with them, give them dawah. This group of people they took. They took shahada, they become Muslims, and then they carried on the da'wah within themselves. Yes. So the organic way in da'wah was going in this way, in this smooth way. Okay. Same thing in Africa. We still it's happening until today. Yeah. Some brothers they go to some village in Africa, give da'wah to a few of them. After one year down the line, the same group who accept Islam, they will bring the whole village to Islam. They will call us. Oh, we alhamdulillah, the whole village become Muslim. We need to make a mosque. Yeah, they will do it. This is the organic way. Mm. In Europe, things is not happening the same. Mm. It's not the same. Mm. In Europe, the motive of the people coming to Europe is not the same as the motive of the people who used to come before. True, true. So they come here, maybe could be for economical, uh, uh, economical reason. reasons, mm. for study reasons, whatever, any reasons. Yeah. And because of the situation, they come here for certain things, their way in establishing the mosques here is basically to protect themselves from the others agree, or to protect agree. their faith really rather agree. than spread Islam to them. Do you see agree. the, do you see the agree. I totally agree. Where in, in the subcontinent or Indonesia or Malaysia, establishing the mosque was a minaret for da'wah, was a hub for da'wah, to give da'wah. Mm. Yeah? So it was these mosques, they were basically... Uh, uh, you could call it a, a, a fortress of da'wah, you, you name it. But at the end of the day, from these mosques, it was the spread of the da'wah. Mm -hmm. So the objective is not protection, rather than the objective is spreading mm -hmm. the da'wah. Now, the mosques which been established in Europe is the other way around. Because the Muslims are here, there is a need for having a mosque because they need to protect themselves from leaving the and the, for their children, they want to protect the, the religion of their children, etc. So that's why they have established the mosque to protect their deen and to preserve the, the deen and the deen of their children in order to make sure they have a mosque, they go to mosque and they're Muslim oh. to, to have to, uh, to be linked to this. Yeah, now this has a positive thing in some aspect and it has a negative thing from other aspects. Mm -hmm. The positive thing, yes, it could it was a reason for protection for uh, of the and preservation of Islam 
of the generation. Now we have third generation of Muslims and fourth generation of Muslims in the UK. And all of them, alhamdulillah, they are practicing Islam. Uh, you yeah. know, we have, they are, uh, yani, of course, mainly, yani, they, we think good about the Muslims, etc. Now, the negative things about it, that it did not do or did not help the organic da'wah to happen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you don't find a masjid run by reverts. Because the, yeah. the you don't find uh, a, 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 a culture of European culture, let's say, of Muslims. You don't have this. You'll find even either a brother or a sister, a brother, if he accepts Islam, as well accepts it sometime, uh, maybe five months down the line, you'll find him wearing shura al qamis, for example, because he wanted to, be, to feel belong. Mm. Yeah? Mm. He, this person, wanted to feel belong within the Muslim community. Yeah. So he'll try to adapt their culture yeah. in order to feel belong. Yeah, yeah, and I assume you maybe you may face certain. I used to be. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah, when I became. Yeah, uh, as Muslim well. Muslim. One of the things that they say to them, as soon as they embrace Islam, they say, "Okay, what's what's what the name you wanted to choose?" Yeah, yeah. you understand. The the problem is it's okay yeah, to choose the name, but who said that the person who embraces Islam has to choose a name? Absolutely. Uh, as long as his name doesn't, for example, doesn't have shirk. Mm perspective then what's the problem with the name do you understand mm. yani for example the name of umar khattab is not islamic name mm. umar yes predates yeah. it was named of the people you understand uh yeah so there are certain names that the prophet Sassim changed it that has shirky perspective mm. like abdullah abdul uzza things like this yeah, that yeah. the prophet changed all or things or or, or, or no, not harb. It's okay. It's fine. But he didn't prefer it for his ch grandchildren. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He didn't. He wasn't against it, but he didn't prefer it for his, his grandchildren. Now, uh, there are certain names that gives kind of, uh, you know, give uh, you know a status for the person to say, like one of his wife. Her name is Barra, means pious. He changed that name. Ali He said mm -hmm. Juwayri. You understand? He said instead of using that, no. You choose other name. That's the, these names that gives you like a, a purification, like mm. as if you are pure, real from mm. immune from mistakes, etc. My point is the uh, you know, that's why I'm I am in favor to change if the name is Angel to change you know, these names, for example. Uh, but even though still is not that serious matter. So the point is these reverts we are not empowering them rather than we kind of wanted them to fit in within our these you could say uh, uh, you know our you could say within fit in within our community mm -hmm. and to you know just to and to be on the on the receiving side of the of the effort of the muslim yeah. rather than to be on the giving side and this actually if we if if this continue like this 20 years 30 years 50 years down the line will have the same problem that's why islam if islam will be still alien in the sight of the people in the sight of the people here if we didn't kind of empower those reverts let them carry on the da'wah and i want one day to go into a masjid run by the reverts for example english white reverts to go in to find them they are the one who has maybe an imam who went to study in azhar or, or in medina came back he was, uh, and he is the Imam of the people, and he is English from English background. Alhamdulillah, why not? Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's something which is good to see the people. That, so at least when non-Muslim comes in, they don't feel they are alien because they feel that they're, 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 they're people, but they are, have different faith. Rather than different, uh, rather than different culture to them. That's an excellent analysis. And, and and that's one of the things, actually, which is I'm a bit reluctant as well about even purchasing churches and changing them into mosques. Mm. Uh, the concept is good. The concept, you know, it will help. But actually, on the long run, think about it. Now, it, it will make the other the, the other norms to be more defensive, to say, mm. for example, there's some some mosques, they say, where do you live? They say, this mosque is the church street. Church street means, you know what church is? It? It means there was a There's church. a church. Yeah. That church, which is basically, you could say, a main, you could say, sign for that for that street. So all the people who live in that street, is they know they are known this church street because of this, because of this church. 
Now, when you purchase this and change it to a mosque, you said it's not church anymore. But still, this, this is called oh, church. church street, yeah? yeah. You literally kind of. Um, uh, yeah. There was a church that was uh, on sale, maybe I think eight, or eight years ago, yeah. where I lived. I remember this discussion. We had it with my father recently. Yeah. It was there was an option of people who could buy it, and uh, there was a couple of different bidders and stuff. And one of them was a uh, basically a nightclub business, like a like a bar. Like a, they wanted to turn the church into like a yeah. uh, a bar or a nightclub, something like that, mm. um, to sell alcohol or like a pub, maybe. Uh, and uh, actually, the Muslims in that community then don't start donating more and more money to them to turn it at least into a mosque because there were some Muslims living in that area. So in that case, perhaps there's no better for it to be a mosque as opposed to a yes, yes, of bar. course, yeah, uh, that's totally, absolutely true. I'm saying, you know, uh, put yourself in the shoes of the natives. natives, and then you will understand where they're coming from. Yeah. So they see that the, the the church is being taken from them. It's not because they are religious; they don't care about church. They never been to church. Some of them they never been to church. Yeah, no. yeah. Some of them they don't care about the the thing. Some of them they were they are atheists and they wear the cross. No, they, they are atheists. Yeah. You know, the, those type of well, atheists, like proper atheists, and they were the cross. Mm -hmm. Some Jews, they are atheists, and they were this kappa, whatever. Yeah. They, yeah. They are, so they are atheists, and yeah, they don't care about the faith rather than it's more the culture. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the point is, yes, that's when you wanted to, uh, and, and people, subhanAllah, for some reason, when it comes to cultural things, they will be more defensive than religion. Absolutely. Yeah? Did you say, um, did you say, Dr. Um, Hawk, Hawkins, yeah, Richard Dawkins, but he said yeah. recently, yeah, he's a full blown atheist. He says, I do not believe in God, I do not believe in a Christian God. Yeah, so but yeah. if I was to choose between Christianity and Islam, I would go Christianity. He says, culturally, I feel Christian, yes. <laughs> so you're right, yeah, yeah, it's, it's more right. culture, yeah, you're right. So the point is, <coughs> the point is, we wanted the dawah to be in an organic way, yeah, and that is actually what I'm establishing now an organization. To empower the rivets, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, uh, you know, ex I want to be on the backstage basically. All what I want, just only supervising the religious perspective. But I want this rivets themselves to move the to call their own people. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why the other day when I when, when I was t talking to you about the the clothing and the culture and etc. What, what I was saying to you, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's okay to empower pe people's culture as long as this culture doesn't contradict with Islam. Mm. There is no Islamic dress code, uh, Islamic code of, of, of dress, let's say, mm. specific thing, except there's general code, yeah. which is the, 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 sharia. Uh, uh, yeah, the Sharia perspective. Mm. But Islam they didn't tell you to wear Shabbat Khamis, or Islam they didn't tell you to wear what I'm wearing. Mm. You understand? What I'm wearing is because I'm, I'm culturally this, I'm Jordan, I'm wearing like this because, because I came from Jordan. This and actually, it's more I'm wearing like this because many of the people, even my age and the one who are younger than me, now they don't, they are not attached to their culture. They start wearing modernized, modern clothes, etc. And for me, uh, the moment that you lose your culture is part of losing your identity. You understand? So for me, it's you know I just want to keep this. You know that's that's what I am. That's who, who I am. That's how it is. Uh, now, in the on the other side, on the other perspective. Uh, you know, it doesn't make me less, for example, uh, religious if I, uh, for example, go to even to Japan and we find these people who are the, the clone job. Yeah. They're beautiful, this thing, whatever yeah. the, the yeah. culture is. Yeah, kimonos. So, kimonos. Yeah, yeah. Cool. what's the problem, for example, uh, imam to wear kimonos and give uh, this yeah. is the point. Yeah, uh, my, my point is it's not a religious clothing, mm. yeah. Uh, the kimono or mm. the or for example sharwal kameez and uh, or for example the whatever clothing even in in africa certain mm. clothing mm. and i i see sometimes when i see so subhanallah uh, uh once i had a discussion with abu sam al zahabi mm. and he's funny may, may allah bless him i mean, I mean he, he said he said something one day i said to him uh, he, you know he's wearing you know the clothes that he was is nigerian nigerian yeah, yeah, yeah. nigerian I think one of his wives is Nigerian or something like that, or two of them. Anyway, and then I said to him, "Do you wear this because we are because in America, you African American, you don't wear that." Like then he said to me, "He said that this is the closest thing to me because where I came from, we are came from West Africa. Yeah. Plus as well, which is profound. He said, when I'm wearing thawb, I have no problem with thawb. Or wearing shurwal kameez, I have no problem. But I'm not an Arab. I'm not Pakistani. Mm. You understand? Mm. Mm. I'm not Pakistani. I'm not an Arab. I'm not Pakistani." Mm. 
those are the closest people to me. So what's the problem? Mm. I feel belong there, and I have no problem with this. Mm. And I and I admire this. Mm. You, you see the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the the point of you know Islam didn't come to change cultures of the people, rather than came to change the ideology of the people. Right. And if certain things in the culture contradict Islam, Islam will adjust it, mm. uh, rectify it. Mm-hmm. As long, Alhamdulillah, we have beautiful culture in, in the subcontinent, mm. Muslim most be- mm. culture, mm. their own culture. That includes everything. Mm. Culture is not just only, by the way, clothing, mm. different things. Yeah, of course. Yeah? Of course. Uh, you have a beautiful culture as well in Indonesia and Malaysia. Yes, and, and this yes. Is beautiful culture. Mm. Yeah, You have beautiful culture in Africa. You have the way that they are so amazing and subhanallah. Uh, you still have even, I, I see as well in some uh, parts of Africa, yeah, Actually, when you see, when you look at the dress code that they wear, and I think if I wanted to draw the how the Sahaba used to wear, I will be closer to what the African certain tribes in Africa they wear. That's close to what the Arabs they wear nowadays. Yeah, because firstly that they used to wear something up to middle of the of the shins. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it has to be cut from the side here because you cannot climb on top of the horse. If it's, uh, you know, down, yeah. if it's if it's like this, if it's, if know, it's stitched. I, I have a thumb and uh, it's all the way down. I just can't do anything. It's like, yeah. stitched. No, you have to, yeah, you have to wear it to, to, to put it up. Yeah. So the point is, actually, that's more close to the to the ones mm. than how the Arabs, this is the Qamis, actually. That's how they used to wear the Qamis. And some of the Arabs used to wear something, shurwal underneath it, mm. what you wear as well, mm. or what was been worn in Africa or even Pakistan. Mm. Or oh, they were an izar, which is the longi. Yeah, yeah. They, they were both yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And both of them, this thing mm. is in Africa, you will find it. You will find it in, in, in Indian well. Bengal. Yeah. That shows you when you put the connection, you say, oh, where did they go this from? <laughs> where yeah. they go this it's from? the early Muslims who yeah. were going there. So the, the point is, Islam came to flourish the the positive things and the yes. cultures. Yes, I agree. And to empower the people. In order for them to convey the message of Islam, yeah, and that is a key thing which is not happening in Europe, yeah, yeah. because we are on the defensive side still, mm. because we wanted to protect ourselves, and that's what we have these hubs, our own massages, yeah, and not just that, we can't even empower because we don't want to accept. Oh, there is one of the trustee. His name is David, for example. Yeah. For example, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> David Smith. For example, David Smith, one yeah. of the trustees. Why, who's, the, who's David Smith? Is he a Muslim? And then they will doubt about his faith, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, where I knew there is a, bit, a huge problem, you know, there is a revert brother, a, a da'ya, mashallah, from the United States. I think he's, he's from Texas or something. Mm. He keeps, appears with, uh, cowboy hat. with a cowboy hat. Yeah, the Muslim cowboy. Yeah, the Muslim, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know if he's the Muslim cowboy. Yeah, so yeah. One, one of them said to him, why do you wear this kuffar hat? Oh. Yeah, he said to him, he said, This is my culture. This is not kuf- not all kuffar, by the way. Yeah. I'm a Muslim. That is that's what we wear here. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, actually I, if I go there, I don't mind to wear it. Sheikh, you know, uh, this reminds me of something very um interesting uh, I came across years ago. It's in Zad Zad al Mad by uh, Zad al Mad, yeah. And uh, the Bab of uh, Libas, yeah. he, he brings in uh, you know uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to wear khamis uh, al-rumi, jubba rumi, jubba rumi, rumi, yeah, yeah. Subhanallah, yeah, yeah, rumi. The Prophet was international when they, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was wearing it, and he and and even red, like reddish thing, yeah. which is weird amongst yeah. the Arabs to wear something like this. Yeah, yeah. And this goes against even in certain uh, this time uh, that goes even certain prohibition to wear something which is yellowish, reddish. Yeah. It is there's something just like, mm. but he wear it to make a point. Mm. That is okay to wear something like this. So to wear something, a Roman jubba, which is like something like a jacket or something yeah, on top. Yeah. Roman one. Yeah. And one of the, the one, pro- one of those sh- um, tight on Yeah, there. tight here. That yeah. shows it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Subhanallah. 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 Uh, and as well, he used to wear as well that you know um, as well the izar, which is mainly Yemeni thing. Yeah. Mainly Yemeni thing. Yeah. yeah. Even he sallallahu alaihi wasallam when his kafan, as well his kafan was kind of tail like, like the the. Manufactured, you like could say. No, no, it's the, the his kefen was was manufactured like Yemen, which has okay. stripes. Mm-hmm. This has stripes. Yeah. You know what the Moroccan wears nowadays? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's similar to that. Yes. Yeah. So the point is that shows there is no. Yeah, it's a multicultural. It's, it's, you know, <laughs> international. <laughs> I was shocked when I read it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because like the most I got was mostly box and goalies. Yeah, but when I went to Durango on uh, Friday, yeah, it was just incredible to stand in line. Uh, <coughs> Kenyan man next to me is a revert, some Chinese people on my left, um, some Nigerians, some Pakistanis, some like, white people, quite a lot of white people as well. So it's that sort of like thing that, you know, the, the possibility for Islam to spread is simply because we're not an ethno religion and we don't we don't try to be one. I think only 20% of all Muslims globally yeah. are Arab. Only 20% of all Muslims globally are Arab. So like the largest population of Muslims is Indonesia, then yeah. it's Pakistan, then it's Bangladesh, and then it's India. Yeah. And then, then it's Turkey, I think. Yeah. So five countries on the top list of most populated by Muslims, not a single one is Arab. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so... Yeah, but um, it's it's subhanallah, it's true, but you know, um, it's not Arab, but the religion, subhanallah, and this is something that's also I like to say to, to the river sometimes because I think they go to another extreme. It's not Arab, but the, it has a lot of Arabic uh, yani, sensibilities within the Quran. Even the ayat, they discuss very specific Arab uh, situations, for example. Um, What's the ayat uh, about uh, the trade? They do the trade in a, in a summer. In yeah, the Ilaf Quraysh. Ilaf Quraysh. It's very specific. Yeah, I mean, this is, it's this, it discusses a, a, a socio uh, reality of, of the Arabs. So, yes, it's true. It's not. But also, we need to acknowledge that there are certain things that are precisely about the Arabs. And, and it shouldn't bother us in, in that sense. So, That's know. true. And Allah Azza wa Jalla has said in the Quran about addressing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's company. So, كذلك جعلناكم أمة وسط وميديو ميدل نيشن. Middle nation, subhanallah. لتكونوا شهداء على الناس. You'll be witnesses against or in favor of the people. ويكون الرسول عليكم أن المسيح will be a witness against or in your favor. Subhanallah. So, when, when the meaning some scholars they said, when Allah chose the first. So, the donations are just coming. والله شاء الله. والله they come keep going. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the first stage of Islam that Allah favored those people and 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 those group of the Arabs who accepted Islam mainly mm -hmm. and their culture their their you know their you could say their their attitude their behavior etc mm -hmm. so which is in the middle between two yeah. between many extremes mm -hmm. either they are in the middle well. middle of every middle mm -hmm. in terms of geography mm -hmm. middle yeah why COVID no, I, I'm okay. I have my coffee. <laughs> I'm leaving in 30 minutes. So no point. Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, yes, yes, please. Ice coffee, have you? You get me some maybe uh, cake, <laughs> cake or something. Yeah. Ice coffee for me. Ice coffee. Yeah, chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. Yeah. Who? Oh, it's three o'clock. What time Ali will come? Ali's gonna come for? No, no, you're gonna be here with Ali at four o'clock, inshallah. I'm gonna be here with Ali for four o'clock. Because you came at ten, that's why. Well, I leave by four o'clock. Hmm? I'm done by four o'clock. Yeah, yeah, you, you leave at four, inshallah. Okay. So, so you leave enough? Yeah, I'm gonna go. How come? I thought you said. So you said that take an hour break. Khair, khair, inshallah. We'll see. We'll see. I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind because I've already. I don't need the hour break. I'll just carry you. I'm okay. No problem. If you want you to go, we'll, we'll stay, inshallah. Well, well, so if he goes, who's going to be? You, know? <laughs> you interrupted us, both of you, when we were... Subhanallah, we're in a beautiful conversation. What's this? Let's go back to our chocolate cake, okay? Can we get the chef? Yeah, with ice cream. Yeah. Anyways. So going back to what we were saying, just give me a second, Harry. Yeah, in terms of the geography that they were in the middle, yeah, mm. in terms of the geography, yeah, yeah. In terms of other perspective, as well, not just only as in geography, in terms of uh, their, for example, uh, you know, their uh, their manners. In yeah. Terms of, they were like in the middle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In, in many things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and when Islam came. It adjusted certain things, certain mannerism, etc. So, and as well, it adjusted the intention to be in the uh -huh. path of Allah. Uh -huh. So they used to be generous before uh, before the Prophet. Was. They're known with generosity. Wallahi, Sheikh, this is so beautiful you're saying this because that's a big misconception which I had to debate people online before. Yeah. They always say this 
the reason why the Islam came to the Arabs is because they were the worst. I'm sorry, no, that's not true. That's not true, no. Well, like, you know, there's, uh, who's the Greek uh, historian, 5th century, 5th uh, BC? Uh, no, Galen, no, no, Galen, another one. Come on, everyone knows him. I don't know him. It's a big, big Greek historian. In, you know, Sheikh, you know what he used to say about the Arabs? Yeah. This is 500 years before Christ. He says, yeah. the Arabs are a people that when they take an oath, they never break it. Yes. Not an oath. When they say a word, they will not break it. They will not break it. Their word. From before. Word. From a long time before. And uh, Listen to this, yeah? To tell you how the Arabs, they have yeah. certain things in mm -hmm. their lives to tell you how they were. Yeah. Uh, before oh, I find, I find him. before the, the, the Islam, before even Islam came to them. Now, someone, for example, mm. Uh, could be uh, could be a killer of your father. Yeah. And for some reason, will be in your house in a way, in a way or another. Yeah. Since you give him protection, you will not breach that to that extent. Mm. And it happened. There is even uh, during the uh, the Abbasis time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the beginning of the Abbasis time. Uh, because they start attacking, they start, you know, yeah. you know, following all Umay Umayyads uh, governors, etc. Mm. There is one of the Umayyads governors. He literally he has yeah. killed people, etc. So he was running away. Mm. So then he ran and he went to a house, a place. When he went to a place, uh, he was hiding. He said, "Give me a protection." Mm -hmm. He said, "When he seek he said, I'll give you the refuge. You are protected." Mm -hmm. So he kept him in his house mm -hmm. for a month. And he was feeding him, taking care of him. And with there's a big responsibility because if the guards come, they will kill both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he gave him the refuge for all that time. Until at one point, the uh, until at one point, there is uh, one of the, you know, uh, he was saying, he, uh, this man, he said to him, you know, do you have a story or something? So what's, uh, he said, my story. He was, uh, his, the guest is asking yeah. the guy. And he said to him, if you wish to give me, you know, the, the host, he said, if you wish to give me your name, you give, if, you, if you don't wish, just it's up to you. Yeah. He didn't give him his name until one day he said, do you, I think you have a story. He said, yes, there is a governor from the, from the Umayyad time. He killed my father. Mm. I am, I'm making dua day and night yeah. to take the revenge because he killed my father unlawfully or to hand him to the, to the police, let yeah. him, let yeah. him execute him. Yeah, yeah, he said, "Who's he?" He said, "His name." Then it was the name of the of this the same person. Mm -hmm. And then he knew now he's stuck now. He cannot leave. And this guy is the he is the one who I killed his father. Yeah, responsible. For he that. said to him the next day. He came to him. He said, "Listen, Allah has responded to your dua. I am the killer of your father." Subhanallah. Uh, he said, "And I prefer to die on your hand." At least this could compensate my sin in front of Allah. And I don't want to be, I don't prefer to be killed by the Abbasids because they're going to kill me out of oppression, not out of revenge. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Look at the fiqh. <laughs> he said, I prefer you kill me because at least yeah. you, this is lawful. Mm. This is your, you mm. are avenging your father, yeah. which is lawful thing. And I will, you know, happily, you know, to accept this from you. And I have no problem. Yeah. And I don't prefer to be killed by the Abbas. The Abbas, they're going to kill me unlawful because they just they kill me just because I'm um, Umayyad. That's mm. all. <laughs> Nothing else. Subhanallah. Yeah. It's, you see the analogy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Absolutely. And then this man, he put his hand on his head. He said to him, he said, you know, you stay here. He went out. He said, now, now he was terrifying. He's going to come and come back. Yeah, yeah. He came back. He had a sack of gold. Yeah, mm -hmm. he said to him, "Listen, uh, it was in the evening. He came to him in the evening. He had with a sack of gold. He said to him, listen, the path is empty now. You could go from this.' And he showed him the way. He said, you could go from here, from here. Yeah, and then this give you the refuge until you get out from, from, uh, from, uh, the, from the area. Yeah, and this is sack of gold. I borrowed some money for you, so in order for you to leave, mm -hmm. because I don't want to, you know, I fear." Maybe I'll get angry and I remember that you killed my father mm -hmm. to do something. I don't want to do it. I forgive you. Just go. Wow. Subhanallah. Go. Subhanallah. 
and he gave him money. Yeah, subhanallah. And yeah, he took the money and this. So these are from the behavior and attitude of this. And subhanallah. And I remember, uh, like, we have uh, in, in Jordan back, you know, we are tribes. Yeah. We, we live as tribes. Are you Bedou as well? We are semi Bedouin, but we have we still live tribal. We semi because we half of the year we live in tent and half of the year we live yeah. in villages in the village. Yeah, yeah. yeah because of the weather there yeah. in Jordan. So anyway, even though we are we are, we are not meant to be Bedouin because our we're kind of we're descended from the the, the tree, the family of the Prophet So mm -hmm. we are not Bedouin by default, but we became Bedouin because we are. You could say a bit naughty in the, <laughs> in the past with the Ottoman Empire. We mm. used to do a lot of, you know, mm. rebellions. Mm. <laughs> so the, the point is, uh, you know, we there is there is one situation that happened. Um, our sub tribe, mm. you know, our sub tribe, uh, there is a you know the, you know there is a, a water well beside our village, mm. not far from our village. This water well. The you know the, it used to be these the the camels or the people the the, the headsmen of the camel mm -hmm. used to bring their camels because especially the one from Saudi Arabia in the summer they will come to Jordan yeah because a bit cooler because mm -hmm. in the summer is a bit difficult for them mm -hmm. so they will bring their camels to to Jordan mm -hmm. and to Syria in the summer and in the winter they go back mm -hmm. to the desert in Saudi Arabia yeah. etc because it's a bit easier for them. So this is in the past. I'm talking about you know, uh, more than 80 years ago or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Then what happened because of these, um, you know... Subhanallah, there's more donations coming. Well, no, because Allah, of these stories, Allah. yeah? yeah. <laughs> People like stories, yeah? Brothers and sisters, keep the donations coming in. Subhanallah, this is beautiful. I keep seeing donations coming in. Yeah. We almost... Uh, how much are we away from at 32? 32. Uh, what, what, the, what the comment? What the people are they saying about these stories? Uh, one person was... What do, Okay. When you were talking about the clothing, one person was talking about the kilafa. He said, well, "Why are you talking about clothing if you talk about the kilafa?" Okay. Than that, um... All right. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, yeah. The so anyway, so what happened? One of these herdsmen of the camels, and they have, if you know, has any questions, and, please send them in. and they have, and they have, and they have a herd of camels. So they stopped by this water well. And there used to be women who are taken from the village, taken, yeah, so. you know. So for I don't know, something happened that. I don't know the camels pushed the sheep. It's something like that because the camels they are not if they are not they have to be organized properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the woman kind of she was a bit you know she said you know you hold your camels first or something like that. Mm. Um, and a man from our village from our tribe went to to see, he saw these men with with camels uh, with talking to, to a single woman so he went to them. Uh, and then he started talking not one man he was talking then to the woman. And then he went to him, he started saying to him, you know, you, you know, take your comments or something like that. Mm -hmm. So things went tense. Mm -hmm. uh, and till, you know, could be, and our man told him, threatened him, you should leave or something. Mm -hmm. Things things escalated and made that guy, that man, to kill the the, the guy, the, the man from our tribe. Yeah, yeah, subhanAllah, okay. And he ran away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he took the camera and he ran away. As, uh, well, as soon as when the women went back to the village, when they went back, they found the whole camels, the herdsman of the camel went left. But they knew from which tribe he was, mm -hmm. yeah? Because they caught kind of one another, another herdsman with him. He said he's from this tribe, etc. And then because of the, uh, then later on the border was kind of finalized between Jordan and Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And they, they belong basically to the northern tribes of the Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, then what happened, uh, you know, because the, we, we, the, the man was lost, kind of, mm. uh, and there is no, and we have this habit of revenge and these things, mm. may Allah Azza uh, may Allah Azza wa you know, uh, you know, rectify all our affairs. Yeah. So, the <laughs> then uh, there is a poet, you know, which he speaks, you know, this Bedouin poetry. Mm -hmm. Uh, he he had an argument with uh, with someone from our sub tribe, so they had an argument, and then they start you know you know debating with poets, criticizing each other, 
we have this habit as well. You, you, etc. And, we are and then you, you reply. And he replies. So <laughs> both of them, they are poets from us and them. Yeah. Some subtribe from the same yeah, yeah, yeah. but they are subtribes. Yeah, you know, and we are known that kind of, we have kind of this leadership thing in, in us. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so they criticize. So he said, you go with your meaning that your blood is worthless. The mm. guy killed a man from nothing, mm. something like that. Yeah. Mm. And it came to, at that time, it came to our sheikh, our leader mm. of the tribe. He was the uncle of my father. Mm. Uh, and that man was was different. If you sit with him, mm. he speaks little mm. wisdom, subhanAllah. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, and he inherited from his father, our great-grandfather was literally the leader of the whole area mm. that, at that time. Uh, so then when he knew this, when he heard this, he said, don't worry, we will sort it out. Mm. He's the man of deeds, not the man of words. Mm -hmm. So he traveled all the way. He went and he went to Saudi Arabia at that time. And I'm talking, about, I don't know, maybe it's in 60s and 70s. It's I don't know when it's the time. It's not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, during that time. No, either in 70s, something like that. Mm. He went, and at that time, you know, King Fahad, the late mm. King Fahad, mm. he was, I think, a prince of the northern area of mm. Saudi Arabia or something like that. For some reason, he, he went to him mm -hmm. or to these ones. And he said, look at this, look at the audacity. Yeah? <laughs> he will go to someone who is, he was either crown prince, one of these, one of these royalties. Mm. And he said to them, you know, basically, we have a, this habit which to say, for example, if we, if you owe us blood, for example, if you killed one of us, mm. we'll say to you, Anyone from your tribe, anyone from your area is wanted for us mm. until we sort this problem. Yeah, blood, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's mad anyway. Then he said to them, Allah he said to him, anyone who comes from the whole area comes to our land, they are wanted. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. What's the thing about yeah. it? It's a huge thing. Mm. And we are not a small number as mm. an our tribe. Mm. Which when, and when we say things, as I said, yeah. we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep the words, yeah. So it's a big thing. Mm. So because of this, uh, he said, what do you want? He said, I want the killer of that man. That man is already himself died. And his, he died, the mm. killer. Mm. And his son died. And his grandson only may be alive. Mm. You understand? Mm. He said, if he's not there, his son. He said, mm. if not his son, even grandson. We want someone. Mm. We want someone mm. to, uh, you know, to compensate our, mm. our mm. blood. That's how it is. Yeah, yeah. And then he said, he looked into it. He gave him the name. Then what, what they have done, because they knew the Bedouins, they knew they, they do bad things. Yeah. So they kind of, they searched, and then they found actually, like literally, the killer died. May Allah forgive him. Yeah. And uh, his son died, and his grandson is still yeah. alive. Yeah, to this day. To the, at that day in the 70s, yeah? Okay. So they, so they, they, they said to him, okay, we will get, he said, what do you want? To, okay, we found him. He said the compensation not we will not come to you. You have to come to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they came, and at that time in the seventies came these big jeeps, these big you know chevrolets, these old these cars, came to our village, and including these royalties from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah. And as a leader of the tribes came. Yeah, yeah. It was a serious matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they came, and they they were stopped by the entrance of our village, and then they said. The killer or the grandson of the killer, don't tell him not to come in. We didn't allow him. We allow everyone, we are guests, mm. but him, mm. he's wanted. Mm -hmm. So let him stay until we allow him to come. Mm -hmm. So then everyone came and they had they, they made big tents for the for the hosts and they invited that poet who criticized us mm. and they invited like the, the other tribes, all the other tribes from our town, from our city. Mm. So they came and they were sitting in this big gathering. Mm. And you see, if you see, if you just type on Google or on YouTube, you see, for example, uh, uh, Jordanian Bedouin, for example, mm. uh, courts and things, yeah. it's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. You'll see some sitting in it. Yeah. And it's hard. Mm. You'll see people, it's hard. It's not mm. easy. Mm. So they will. Uh, so they were sitting and then they will say, he said, now, what do you want? Accept the compensation, for example, mm. money, because the killer is not here. And, uh, and the, we can't kill his grandson on his behalf. Mm. He said, at least, he has to come to humble himself, humiliate it, mm. in front of us, mm. and then we will choose to kill or we choose to leave. Mm. So again, they said, okay, then that's the, that's the only solution. 
So they made him to take off this because for us is a humiliation to take off this, yeah. Mm. And he was t- taking off all his. He came with now with nothing covering his head, mm. with no abaya, nothing. Mm. He came like a little human, with barefooted. He came all the way, and carrying his kafan, yeah, yeah was yeah. Ca- carrying his sh- uh, his shroud basically mm. in his hand mm-hmm. to say I'm ready basically to die. So he came and he sat in front of the tent, yeah, mm. and then. He brought the knife. We have the the, the dagger. Mm. This um, uh, my, the uncle Mafa. Mm. He went to him. He said he said to the poetry that poet. And then he put the dagger around him. Yeah. He said to him, "Can I take my revenge now, if I wish?" He said yes. He said, "And I choose not. Bring a sheep." Then the words again, "Slaughter a sheep." And, Allah. 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 So so the the point is with this story it tells you mm. when the, as you mentioned if they will say they will do. Yeah. yeah. And that is a key thing in them. And unfortunately, nowadays things are not the same yeah. like in the past. Yeah. But they used to have this kind of uh, mentality. And Alhamdulillah, one of the best things that Islam brought the best of those people yeah. to Islam. And unfortunately, we went back, to, even though we went back to Jahiliya. Yeah. But Islam brought the best of of the qualities and in these people absolutely and you know the you know the there are subhanallah and i've i was re- reading this like months ago about the bedouin codes yeah like Ird, muru, muru, you know like yeah. this, like manliness yeah. yes and uh, Murua, yeah. ham, hamasa it's like um, yeah. you know when you invite someone yes. to your house yeah you know things like that yeah and the bedouins always had this even yes before Islam, right? absolutely they so were the, like this they were like this it's amazing yeah, yeah. subhanallah it's amazing well like, it's things that i think a lot of people, you know, people like Andrew Tate, they talk about these things now because uh, in the modern world, we've lost a lot of these things. Yeah, yes. Like honor, keeping your word, you know, manliness. But subhanAllah, uh, brothers and sisters, this was to me, subhanAllah, possibly sure. the best they're stream. Asking, they're asking you, perhaps you should start your own story time. Yeah, story yeah time subhanAllah. Share. <laughs> Sheikh, you're talented, <laughs> Sheikh. <laughs> Sheikh, you're very talented. <laughs> well, like, but stories with, <laughs> yani, <laughs> ilm, you know? Because you mix it, I love the way you mix the two, mashallah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Subhanallah, look at this. Just out of that, subhanallah, we've reached. Uh, yeah, we are um, 209 pounds away. Subhanallah, 209 pounds away. I'm so tired to do maths today, but 209 pounds away. Subhanallah, brothers and sisters, you saw this how the versatility, uh, the expertise, the talent. That just uh, you know is we are we are just surrounded by talents, subhanallah, brothers and sisters. And this is exactly the the knowledge and the ilm that will lead us, subhanallah, to have projects like Salah Plus. You can see it's far more comprehensive than just again you know us sending um, these prayer mats. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed has uh, uh, workshops every Sunday. He has a workshop at uh, the Central Mosque. Uh, in Regent's Park. He's there every Sunday and teaches people and he has a group of people, non-Muslims, in fact. There's been non-Muslims who come to his classes. Um, and this is what this Salah, proje- Salah Plus project is all about. So, brothers and sisters, we are £209 away. If there's two people that give, can give £100, and you should know by now, subhanAllah, it will not only teach 16 people, it will liberate and empower 16 people to really, really, really connect to the one source and the one source only, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, if you can right now, go to our donation link. We are 209 pounds away. 209 pounds. Hmm? Oh, mashallah, someone donated. Yes, 202 pounds away. So if there's two people that can give 100 pounds, please don't be shy. Uh, subhanAllah, um, you know, it seems, it seems as if it's the last night of Ramadan. We will be fasting the last day during the day, which means Alhamdulillah in one way and Alhamdulillah in another way. Um, subhanAllah, Alhamdulillah in one way, Alhamdulillah in another way. Um, and uh, what I mean by this is that, you know, obviously Ramadan is over now and uh, Alhamdulillah we made it. And alhamdulillah that we were able to do it. And alhamdulillah that it means that is that perhaps there might be another Ramadan to come. You know, we hope for another Ramadan. We hope for many more Ramadans to come. But brothers and sisters, since Ramadan has not officially finished yet, I would strongly, strongly recommend, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, to really utilize the last few moments, the last few moments that we have to donate, subhanAllah. Go to our link right now. There's three, 209 pounds away from our next target, which will drive us to 33,000 pounds, which is a beautiful, like, subhanAllah, we didn't, yeah, subhanAllah, this is it's incredible. We've, we, we've raised a lot of money today. Um, 
but yeah, 200 and um, subhanAllah, we, we get closer and closer and closer and closer. So we, we need exactly 201 pounds, 201 pounds right now, brothers and sisters. Um, uh, and as I said, um, we are preparing ourselves for the prayer mats day, uh, prayer mats day. We currently still kind of figure out what the word or the name is, Sheikh Mohammed. We're basically planning a whole day uh, in May, inshallah, when the prayer mats come. We're going to use one day when we're going to call all the people from like across London who want to order prayer mat. They can come see us in one place, maybe somewhere central, you know, yeah. Trafalgar Square. We invite them all and they can get the prayer mats in person. We want to invite people. We're going to have a, like an ice cream van, inshallah, where there's free ice cream. I'm going to push for that, inshallah. I'm going to try to get Ali to do it. And then we invite people, a good day, you know, people come get the prayer mats. Just a... Uh, Good. Allah, that's amazing. Allah. That yeah. will be amazing. Allah. Yeah. That will be, yeah. So that will be a great thing. Allah. Yeah. I think people are very happy because they, you know, I was saying that Sheikh Mohammed is going to be there. Uh, Ali is going to be there. So inshallah. Meet all that's, people in person, inshallah. That will be an honor. Inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. So, brothers and sisters, uh, Salah or uh, prayer mat day will be in May, inshallah. We will be updating you guys. Uh, the live streams will continue as well after Ramadan. Sheikh Mohammed will be here every first day. Um, and obviously, subhanAllah, we've seen today that we can really take this stream to a different place where Sheikh Mohammed can start talking about, you know, uh, stories that are, you know, full of wisdom and, and, and things that we can learn from, subhanAllah. There's many ways and how um, we can learn. And also, Sheikh, you already talk about the, the poet who was like attacking people. It reminded me of like Hassan ibn Thabit. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know when he used to write uh, poems yeah, 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 against, against, the, against Quraysh, yeah. So this is something that again, it was known. Yeah, it was known. Yeah, it's something that used to, write used, to, it used to be like social media. Yeah, this was <laughs> the similar to social media. People they used to, yeah, you know, either they will do, you know, they will criticize the other side, basically. Yeah. So he, uh, and he will, he will say, praising his party, mm. and he will criticize. Yeah, yeah. There is one thing. Yeah, Hassan and Tabit was unique in something. Yeah. Uh, Hassan ibn Thabit, one day that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told him to criticize Quraysh, to, you know, to, to, to lash them. <laughs> yeah. like, and he had sharp tongue <laughs> against them. Uh, and then... Do we still have this? Was this they still have it, but it's now not, not with, the, with the classical Arabic. Now it's like with modern okay. Bedouin kind of thing. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Hassan, what about my lineage? You understand? Yes. So he said, you're going to criticize, you're going to deal with them. Mm -hmm. But my lineage from them. Mm -hmm. Then he said, I will take you out, just like taking out the hair from the, from the, from the milk. And I will pick you up. Mm -hmm. I will, I will take you away from this. You will be not your owner. Mm -hmm. Your lineage mm -hmm. will be protected. Mm -hmm. I will not to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. But the other ones is going to be under the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he did it, yeah. anwarda, that shows how much he was so strong. And actually, he's one of the strongest, actually, mm -hmm. poets mm -hmm. in the, um, you know, uh, you know, during the time of the Prophet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So for, for the youngest who don't understand what the Sheikh was just basically saying is that uh, Hassan ibn Thabi, he was basically, like, uh, uh, you know, he was writing bars. It was like beef between uh, Quraysh and uh, the, the 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 sahabas in medina and hasab bin thabit was using his talent to defend the prophet because they 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 start writing um poetry against the prophet yes. they? they were ridiculing the prophet subhanallah yes um and, and it shows you subhanallah that the prophet knew exactly the talent that was he was surrounded by and knew how to use them and this is something that we need to learn as well subhanallah you know when we see talent to in mashallah yeah, just talking. like the hair from the door he said that mm -hmm. his exact they will take you out, he said, mm -hmm. just like I will take the hair out of the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, subhanallah, Allah, it's um, and if you read his poetry, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. always like it has tawheed, it has the concept mm -hmm. of Allah. And as well, when he praised the Prophet, وسلم, he praised the purpose that he was sent. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we have we have to understand that the that our love to the Prophet وسلم, is through the love of Allah. So it's not an, ind an independent love yeah. from this. Why? Uh, because many people they have the you know the the misunderstanding of Islam, water, misunderstanding even of uh, of following the prophets, the previous prophets, made them to start worshiping them. Mm. 
Mm. Like even some Muslims nowadays, they will supplicate to the Prophet ﷺ instead of supplicating to Allah. Yeah. So the point is, we have to understand that our love to the Prophet ﷺ because he was sent with this deen. Because we don't have a personal relationship with him, alayhi salatu wasalam. You understand? That's the point. Mm. Yeah. Well, you may admire certain things about him, about his character, etc. Uh, it, as a person. But we have to understand that our love to the Prophet ﷺ because Allah has sent him. Because he's a Prophet of Allah. He was sent by Allah. He came with the true guidance from Allah Taala. That is the key thing, yeah. So we have to understand this mm. to to put the Prophet Sallallahu in his status. Mm. That's why he used to love to be called Abdullah Rasul, the slave of Allah and his messenger, mm. a slave of Allah. So to emphasize about his slavery to Allah, mm. and we shouldn't neglect this. We shouldn't take this out of our, you know, understanding about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's a key thing. Yeah, you know, Subhanallah. This reminds me, and I was because you mentioned this last time as well, and I thought about this a long time. Um, it reminds me of the hadith uh, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, uh, "Tell, uh, tell, um, tell, uh, he tells Jibril to love yeah. someone." Yes. And then Jibril tells the angels to love someone, and then the angels, and then the love, then the people on earth start to love that person because it starts off with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala telling yes. the malaika to. Absolutely to love sure. Absolutely. So that's basically what you're saying, subhanAllah, yes. that um, that's what we're supposed to love someone for the sake of Allah. Yes, Allah. absolutely. So. Because that's a love that is pure and, you know, there's no um, a transaction involved. In yes, it, you right? are absolutely right. SubhanAllah. Yeah, that's so, profound. Very yeah, profound. We should right? do some fundraising as well. Yeah, we are. I think we are. I think, <laughs> subhanAllah, we are. We are at 31, Afghan, Afghan. 799. Yeah, look at this, please. subhanAllah. We yeah, are literally yeah. fundraising. Guys, someone donate one pound. Come on, right, round it up. One pound. <laughs> Don't, come on, donate one pound. Let's round up to 200. Did, we, we, literally, 200. we need 200 pounds yeah? right now, brothers and sisters. We need two brothers and sisters to donate 100 pounds each. Yeah. 100 pounds was, was teaching how many? The was it? Well, 100 pounds teaches 16 to 32. And what is the possibility for them onwards? Because 16 to 32 in donations means that their children will also learn. So that's 16 to yeah. 32. If they have all, let's say, three children, each one of life. Inshallah. Course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that 16 to 32 then has colleagues and friends at work. That's yeah. two to five people, yeah. perhaps. That 16 to 32 will then go forth to teach the next generation. Yeah, so absolutely. Absolutely. So Subhanallah. 16 to 32 up to thousands of people. Subhanallah. So make that, take that opportunity to have an ongoing sort of fajaria, yeah. something that you'll continue to earn even whilst in the grave. You'll continue to yeah. earn, inshallah. Shaykh, have I said anything wrong then? Hmm? Have I said anything wrong? No, of course not. No, inshallah. Inshallah. So yeah, brothers and sisters, please donate. We need two people to give us hun uh, to donate hundred pounds. Uh, the hundred pounds. Um, right now, we purely uh raising funds for these uh, prayer mats you have to yeah, okay yeah but yeah this is an incredible you know, yeah so much. <laughs> <laughs> um i like that um <laughs> May Allah reward yeah. you and bless you, my brother. Jazakallah khairan. Allah barik fiq. May Allah reward you. Yeah, subhanAllah. Well, you know, Sheikh, I was kind of worried that this Ramadan I didn't read Quran or I didn't engage too much with the Quran or just dhikr in general. But um, there was one hin Hindu guy yesterday. He was saying, why does this guy say subhanAllah so much? Yeah. So I think one, one thing I've done a lot this uh, Ramadan, I've been uh, yeah. invoking Allah's name a lot. Uh, praising Allah a lot. Yeah, may Allah will accept from you. I That's, mean, I mean, I mean. You know, uh, you know that you know the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said to the Sahaba, he said, "Do you know what is better than to say to uh, to fight the enemies of Islam and if they kill you or if you defeated them or uh, if you to donate the gold and the silver? You know what is better than all of that?" He said, "What?" He said, "Dikrullah, the remembrance wow. of Allah." That's wow. the best thing, inshallah. So the more you do dhikr of Allah, the more you are closer to Allah, mm -hmm. and that's what matters, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, brothers and sisters, um, we're a bit more relaxed. There's no more, like, uh, pressure, but the pressure still should, I guess there should always be an internal pressure to do good, you know. Even if you see us being a bit more relaxed, there should always be a pressure of, like, okay, what can I do? next you know and it's all within the capacity you know we don't want to exaggerate either you know but um subhanallah we are really 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 uh approaching the end of ramadan um many people are upset about it you know Haider was saying how he was upset because you know he really likes ramadan and and you know, the, the the things he was able to achieve during ramadan and the brothers he was around 
and 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 I used to feel like this as well before when I never had like I was married. Uh, I used to feel a bit like that because it's like because Ramadan was the only time I was around Muslims so much. So, so, so yeah, so yeah, this, so I I, I sympathise with, with this. Um, but brothers and sisters, we are literally two hundred and one pounds away, two hundred pounds away. away. Let's really try to crack the 30, uh, thirty-two thousand pounds. Um, in the next ten minutes, let me see. In the next yeah, in the next ten minutes, let's really crack this. Is is um is uh, Jabi gone? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Where is Ali? Is he coming? He's gone with who? My brother. You see this? Okay, these brothers go and leave us. Yeah. What your uh, the Jabi and and Ali went to to the prayer? Wallah. Yeah. yeah. Why why can't I go? <laughs> wow, Subhanallah, we reached eight hundred pounds. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we thirty thousand and eight hundred pounds. Yeah, mashallah, we reached. Mashallah, the people are listening. Mashallah, well, I bless you, Allah bless all of you. Um, yeah, 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 we passed it. Mashallah. So we've been raising Subhanallah. Yeah, don't can complain. Uh, Alhamdulillah. So yeah, brothers and sisters, we are literally uh, hundred and eighty ninety one pounds away. Uh, so um, yeah, brothers and sisters, hundred and ninety one pounds away. If you, you know, I mean, this is a good, good way to like spend your, if you're on the stream. Um, and also I did promise to interact more with the chat, but you know what it is? I think we need to find a way where I can actually read what the chat is saying, because, um, yeah, I, I like to interact with the chat myself. Uh, and we saw you don't yes, have the laptop or something. Or? Uh, no, we don't have a laptop here, unfortunately. And the phone, I don't have the app on it, so yeah. I can't, but any, inshallah, we, we do it another time because you saw. Uh, young Tahar, he was much yeah. really interacting with the chat. Yeah. That's a good way to go about it. Um, but yeah, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, as you can see, uh, in, uh, in the description or on the title, it's prayer mats day. We're uh planning uh, a prayer mats day in May, subhanAllah. That's where that's when the uh, prayer mats will arrive. We've ordered 20,000 prayer mats, subhanAllah, 20,000 prayer mats. And one of the things that we want to do is have a day designated day where we're going to invite people to central london we're going to have like a whole event a whole day event where people can come in person and pick up these prayer mats these prayer mats will be available uh it's going to be in central london we will obviously update you exactly where in central london because we obviously we have to look at uh, the logistics behind it and like the permits and things like that but i don't think it should be too complicated um so yeah it will be in central london we will be giving out these prayer mats there's going to be boxes and boxes and boxes for those who want to uh, pick them up. You can so you can secure yourself um, these prayer mats. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe said Ali Dawa and Baba Dawa do have done much more, much more than we than we know for me and Ali. Yeah, so may Allah, may Allah bless you. Thank you, Baba Jizal. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed, by the way, is here as well. Sheikh Mohammed is here as well. May Allah reward you and bless you, my brother. Yeah. I'm just only uh, here to support you. Jazakumullah. In fact, you know, you are the one who did the, the hard work yourself. And may Allah bless you both. Allah bless you. No, Sheikh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be. Subhanallah, Sheikh, we, did, we were sitting here with Haider for like two weeks. We didn't even know that he took the shahada with you. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Only... <laughs> Allah, yeah. Subhanallah. This is, well, this is a, a, a taste of, you know what you were saying last time you were saying that, what I would love to see is the impact of my deeds. Yes. You know, I think this is a glimpse of that, you know, and you sit next to some uh, brother, you've totally forgot about him, but he's walking around you, he's praying, you see, mashallah, he's very eager, he's taking notes, not let alone, you know, he took a shahada with you, subhanAllah. I think this is what this is all about, subhanAllah, you know. Since the people like stories. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm, alhamdulillah, full... Full of stories. With the stories, <laughs> inshallah. Let me share with you the story, inshallah. Yeah. And uh, and by the way, many of these stories, I'm not mentioning it for entertainment rather yes, than absolutely rather than to learn from it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all these stories that I mention, I'm, I'm talking about either things that I'm eyewitness to it mm -hmm. or I know yeah, that it happened for true. Now, <laughs> the story. This is an I'm an eyewitness for it. Mm -hmm. uh, Can I just plug in just the 200 pounds just before yes. we start? So, brothers and sisters, 
uh, please, if you can, we are 200, uh, 191 pounds away, 991 pounds away. Please, if you have some spare uh, money, it, it doesn't matter what it is. 100 pounds, of course, would be very ideal because it would teach 16 to 32 people. Um, and, 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 and again, like Brother Ibrahim Munasser was saying, remember, it's not the number that counts, but it's the impact that counts. Uh, and, and the impact, you have to think about this in terms of generations. So, brothers and sisters, right now, please, if you can, 50 pounds, 60 pounds will really help to ship. Uh, um, you know, get the number uh, smaller and get closer to our goal, Subhana. If by uh, half past one, if we reach 32,000 pounds, Subhana, I would be very happy because that's around the time I'm going to leave. Uh, and um, Ali is going to come around that time as well, Subhanallah. So I would be very happy for you guys if you could come, um, if we can reach uh, 33,000 pounds. So we need. And mashallah, they're hearing and they're hearing, and mashallah, there's donations coming in. So please listen carefully. I think Sheikh Mohammed is about to tell us an amazing story. Um, take notes if you can. Uh, Tafadu, Sheikh. Yeah. Uh, here it is. Uh, before I start, did you order, by the way, the cake and the ice cream? Oh, my brother says, um, when, when I cover the cake, what he said, the drink will be good. Did you want to drink cake? Okay. The cake is, is the same price as the drink for. I don't know, understand I don't know. What the, the problem is. For How just, is that? It's the same price for us. And I'm, I'm asking instead of the drink, why is that? It's like, that's the thing we need to discuss. Okay. 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 Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So the story. Yeah. Okay. Tayyib Khairan, inshallah. Okay. So uh, the the point is that the importance of du'a, and uh, you know, I every nearly every year, I go to um, to Turkey. There is always there is da'wah conference. I attend there. Zahmullah, there is organizers there. Uh, you know, and uh, mashallah, yani one of the people who attends actually, you know, Sheikh Abdul Rahim McCarthy. Mm. And others. Mashallah, mm. it's, it's good. It's good. Uh, uh, you know, it's good, you could say, uh, uh, organization there that is inviting us to mm -hmm. discuss the da'wah and, um, you know, and the uh, importance of da'wah, etc. So anyway, uh, what happened that there used to be, we they booked for us in a hotel, in a place there, and there is, uh, there is uh, you know, a... a a lady or a sister who's always who's serving us tea or something you know, yeah. in the in the lobby. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so one day, so and she was you, most of the time she was there, you know, and Subhanallah, she was very kind. You could you could tell as soon as we get there, she would get us tea, you know, these things. Yeah, you could tell some people who are helpful, genuine people like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so. Uh, one day, so we, I keep, I knew her name, for example, let's say Fatma, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, so I was calling her, oh, Fatma, can you please get us this? Can we do that, etc. Then one day I was sitting with the brother. And then he said to me, you know, you know, here in Turkey, it's rude to say to someone by their first name. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to say uh, Hanim, for example, for lady, um, yeah. Abbe, or whatever. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. Something like that. You have to say it in a polite way, yeah? Uh, so uh, I called her. I said to her, "This man, he's saying this. He sp she speaks English, and but not perfect, but it's good." Uh, so I told her, "By the way, I'm sorry if I offended you. I didn't know that we have to say Hanim to you, but from now on, I'll call you Fatma Hanim. So forgive me for this." So I started calling her Fatma Hanim since then, whenever we went tea or something. Yeah. Yeah. So the day uh, I was um, uh, the night I was about to leave, and the night yeah. before. Yeah. Because that hotel, they serve alcohol and other things. Yeah. And you could tell that she sometimes, you know, she will leave and then she will come back. She will say, uh, we said, oh, I, was, I was calling. She said, I want to pray. Th things like that. You could tell that she's practicing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I told her, listen, sister, you know, I'm leaving tomorrow, but yeah. I have to say what I have to say. And then she said, okay. Yeah, yeah. I said, listen, you are, apparently you pray, etc. You know, 
but here you know when you are working in this environment you have you serve alcohol etc this haram because, you know that's haram in islam they said yeah but she was missing she has to pay bills i said listen sister if you want your dua to be accepted by allah if you, you know you have to purify your income mm-hmm. and it's not allowed to work in this thing so you should try to find something else inshallah allah will help you the how i will find i said you know i said to her go tonight make dua be sincere to Allah Azza wa Jal in your dua. And Allah Azza wa Jal will give you something mm-hmm. better. If you truly sincere, then Allah will respond to your dua. If you truly do this. So go tonight. And then what I said, I said, she said, what should I say? I said, Ya Rabbi, help me in finding. Then as soon as I was saying this, she started raising her hands. So, Ya oh, Rabbi, Ameen, Ya oh, Rabbi, Ameen. Like she was saying this behind me, as if I'm making dua for her. Yeah, yeah. So you could tell she genuinely wanted to change. Yeah. So I, um, uh, so I left her with this, and I thought, do this, inshallah, and Allah will help. Mm. The next day, I was supposed to leave in the morning uh, to be there by, you know, it's the, it takes an hour to get to the airport and two hours there, so I had to leave three hours in advance. Uh, so I was about to leave by nine o'clock, just, just, just in case. Uh, anyway, either nine or ten o'clock, something like that. Then a brother who I know, he's a businessman in Turkey, mm. in Istanbul. He called me. Uh, he he was supposed to meet me the night before, but I told him. I'm, then he called me in the morning. He said tomorrow. I said I'm leaving now. He said no no don't don't leave. Wait for me. Mm. So I checked out by ten o'clock, and I was supposed to leave by that time. Mm. My flat maybe was three or I don't, I don't remember exactly, but this I'm talking about. This is around three years ago. Mm. Or four years ago. So I waited in the lobby. He said to me, Don't worry, I'll, I'll drop you to the, you know, to the airport. The airport don't worry. Yeah. Just don't worry, I'll, I'll drop you there. So I checked out, and uh, by, by while, while I was waiting, he, he arrived around 10 30 or something. As soon as when he arrived, you could tell that this sister. She just arrived. She just came in. Yeah, around you know, around that time. Mm-hmm. So she came in. She, you know, you know, and then she gives salam, and then she went to the thing to, to you know, uh, to prepare certain thing. And anyway, and then she came to after you know, maybe ten minutes or something mm-hmm. after her arrival. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were about to leave. Yeah. My my bags, everything were, were in the lobby with me, and I checked out. And then I said to the, the I said to the brother, shall we go? She said, let's have tea and then we'll go. Because he said, I have something to tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. He said, I have something to tell you. Tell I said, okay, yeah. that's fine. As long as we are, not, we are not late for the flight because I have very bad experience in Istanbul uh, flights in the past. So uh, so then the sister came and said, Fatma Han, can get us some tea? So she brought us tea and then she went. And then this brother, he's working, he has a company there. He was showing in his in his phone that he uh, basically hired uh, he had a company there and he's expanding his company business and he's showing me that he has hired a bigger place because I went to his previous place he said look at this I'm doing this this is my office he was showing me the video he said this is my office and he's already did, did this he said that's why I couldn't come to you last night because I was preparing this and I wish I could we could go and I will show you the place now. I said, no, I can't. Said, then he showed me the thing. He said, here there is the secretary office, etc. I said, do you have secretary? He said, not yet. I'm looking for one. Yeah. And I said, what do you want the secretary? He said, I want someone who speaks Turkish, who speaks English, mm. you know, you know, good, etc. Yeah. I prefer, he said, even though I prefer a female who's able, you know, she, she can do this because there's an environment uh, you know, even though I'm not very in favor of this, but at the end of the day, he is looking for something like that. And then what clicked to my mind? Yesterday we were talking to the sister about mm. it. And this guy is talking about yeah. the secretary now. Mm. And I said, Fatma Hanum, can you come? She came. And I said to her, did you make dua yesterday? She said, yes, I made dua. I said, okay, basically... Uh, do you know, have you done any, do you know job in secretary or something? She said six years ago or something, she had done a course in secretary, you know, in mm. secretary. And, you Subhanallah. know, Subhanallah. She, she done something like that. <sighs> I said, okay. 
you done dua and he's looking for secretary. Why don't you work for him? Like this, or like we will sit here. And then he said, what's, what's going on? And he, he speaks, you know, Turkish. And then we start talking to her. And then I said, I said, this sister, I, was, I told her to make dua yesterday. And she made dua, and Allah, look at this. And then when he, when he heard this, the brother, he's practicing, brother. Then he said to her, you know, yes, I wanted this, but, and I told her, you know, one of the things when I discussed with her last, the, the night before, I said, if you find a better job, she said, I wish to start practicing. I wish to start wearing hijab. She said, I said to her, listen, but if you want to work with him, start, start wearing hijab. He said, I will do. I will start wearing hijab. I wanted to do that. I don't want this. Yeah. And then I said, he's looking for, then he, he started talking to her. He yes. said, I wanted, I am looking for someone. And since Sheikh Muhammad vouch for you, I will, I will take you. And when do you want? There and there. There and there. And then, in a way that he was giving her like double of her salary, what she's taking in the in the in the hotel. While she was talking, she was in tears. She just left us behind, and then she's left left. You are saying Allah, Allah, something. Mm. Was, we were shocked. She came back. You could imagine that is not about us. It's about what the du'a yeah, says that yeah, she's yeah, made. Of course, of course. And Subhanallah al Ali al Azim, that tells us, yeah, the du'a, the importance of the du'a. And literally, after one week, he called me. He said, she starts working with me. She's now, mashallah, she's started wearing hijab. And she's doing an amazing job, actually, she's yeah. in the work that she's doing, etc. Now, I was, I came back to London on that day. Two days after, or, uh, you know, sorry, one week after or something, there is a brother who I didn't see for some time. He, he called me, and he invited me to a Turkish restaurant in North London, yeah. somewhere in North London. Yeah. So we went to the to this Turkish place. It's like one of these ones, fancy ones, not the even the, not even Haringe ones, the yeah, you know, fancy ones. Yeah. Very expensive one. So he called me to it. Uh, me and I was with the brother and was with this uh, with another brother and was with uh, you know we were three. Yeah. We we're sitting. So while I was talking, I was. When he told me that she started working, I said, "Subhanallah, uh, uh, you know, today I was talking to such as this. Is what happened to me last week, and this is the dua. So I was talking about her story. Yeah. While I was talking, you know, there is, uh, you know, we were asking for food, etc. There is a sister who's a Somali sister working mm -hmm. in that restaurant. Yeah, Somali sister. Not, very, yani, she wasn't uh, very practical. She wasn't wearing hijab, but she's, mm -hmm. uh, and then." Uh, she was, you could tell that when she's serving, she's, you know, she, she kind of pose. Sometimes she, 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 she doesn't move. She, she listens. Mm. And then she came to me after, you know, when we had the dinner, etc. And then she came to me, she said, can I, can I ask you a question? She said, yes, sister. She said, I was listening to you, to what you were saying. You know, in this restaurant, they serve alcohol and I have to serve alcohol with them. And I don't know how to go around it, etc. Mm. So she said, do you make dua? She said, I always make dua. And I don't know. I feel I'm doing, I'm guilty when I'm doing this. I don't want to do this. And I said to her sister, you know, you have to be sincere. So I was talking to her. I was giving her the advice. Yeah. And I said, just make dua. Be sincere. If you are sincere, Allah will help you. No one leaves something for Allah except Allah will give him something better. Yeah. yeah. There is, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. This, I'm talking about live stories. Wallahi, you see, you see, you missed. So while I was talking to her, you could tell there is a manager who was there who was staring at us, mm. you know. Uh, you know, and then after that, he called her after some time, and then she went inside. And I said, I wish I didn't cause a problem for the sister, etc. Yeah, 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 I yeah. said to her, Go speak to your manager, speak to him, tell him, you know, this is the you know, I wanted to work this, I wanted to do this, etc. Uh, so anyway, uh, while I was you know, talking, talking to her about it, and then he called her. Yeah, and then she went inside. Then the brother came to me, the the manager. Mm. He said, "Sheikh, he said, Sheikh, uh, you know, I know you, you on YouTube speakers who said yes. Mm. He said, I see some of your videos, etc. He's a Turkish Cypriot brother. Mm. He said, Sheikh, can you please, you know, stay behind after we're gonna close now? Yeah, can you stay behind? I need to talk to you. Yeah, mm. I said, okay, no problem, brother." 
He said, just give me just 20 minutes. Let me finish the, the cashier and everything. Yeah. And, you know, and then after that, I will come to talk to you. So no problem. I'll wait. wait. So we're waiting. This is the two brothers. They were sitting beside me, you know, witnessing this. Yeah. And then he came. He said, you know, Sheikh, I, you know, uh, he started talking about himself. His, yeah. He's going through some hardships. He went through divorce. He went through certain difficulties, etc. He said, I always, I don't know what is the problem. Mm -hmm. While you were talking to the sister, yeah, you said something profound. If you want Allah to accept your dua, you have to abstain from the haram. Subhanallah. No, this is a, and in, it's leading a from one person to another yeah, person. A chain, a chain. <laughs> I was talking about the story of that Turkish sister, and the Somali sister was listening. listening. And then this Turkish Cypriot brother was listening. All this in the in one in the chain. Then. I said to him, Subhanallah, I said, that's, do you want me to sugarcoat it for you? Or do you want me to say it, you know, bluntly? Mm. He said, I want, you know, I prefer to tell, it, tell me bluntly. I said, Akhi, you and your, what, what's your, what's your work in this? He said, I'm manager and as well, I'm, I'm partner with this restaurant. I said, Akhi, do you want Allah to bless you in your life? Mm. He said, this, I said, you stay upstand from alcohol. He said, but my partner, I said, you tell your partner, either we'll stop alcohol or you depart. Do something else, do your own, and you will find baraka in your income better than this. And then after that, you'll feel good about yourself. He said, You told me that he was telling me I don't sleep in the night, I always feel guilt. I have this. He said, I will, he said, in the past, I used to drink alcohol, now I don't drink alcohol, I, don't do, I do prayer, etc. I said, How do you pray? And you serve alcohol in your sleep. You have to stay away from this. Mm. He said, I wanted to do, I wanted to rectify my life, but I want to, you know, I want, to, you know, things to help me in my life, etc. Anyway, and I said to her, let's start with the practical side. What about the center that she was working? He said, after you, call, you spoke to her, I told her, you are not allowed to hold even a single glass of alcohol in this Allah, restaurant, as long as Allah I'm here. Akbar, yeah, Allah he Akbar. He said, he said, I told her this. Allahu Akbar. And she went inside. She was so happy that, mm -hmm. overwhelmed with this. She was so happy that this happened. Is happening instantly. And I told her, since I was listening to the Sheikh, and I apparently I respect him, and what he said is true. Right. And I couldn't, I, couldn't be, I couldn't be arrogant against what Allah says to say to him, no, you listen, you have to do this job. But I will not do this. For me, is you know, if you are uncomfortable to do that, then don't do it. They have other people to do it. But in terms of the food, etc., you do that. Right. She said, I have, I'm, no, I'm more than happy to do it. Yeah? So she, she said, well, that's why what we went inside, we told, we told her this. SubhanAllah. Yeah? SubhanAllah. And then while I was talking to him, the sister, she came, she you know, changed her, she came, she said, Jazakallah khair. Said, no, you know, he told her, I said, Alhamdulillah, man, Allah, Allah, Alhamdulillah, now you're good. She said, what's next now? I said, next is the hijab. I said, now next is the hijab. Hmm. Do you have problems? No, I have no problem with this. I said, okay, then, yeah, I have no problem. You can do it. She said, inshallah, I will do it, inshallah. I said, Alhamdulillah, that's good. So she left. And then I told him, Akhi, this is what you need. So I give him some tips, etc. I said, speak to your partner and tell him this is what you wanted to do. If he accepts, Alhamdulillah, didn't accept, move on. Mm. Allah didn't restrict you with one risk. The risk yeah. is from Allah. Yeah. So anyway, he said, Inshallah, I will think about it. I will see what I can do. I think three months down the line or something, he took my number. He texted me. Mm. He said, do you remember me? I said, yeah. I said, can I talk to you? He said, and then he he called me. He opened a Turkish takeaway. He left this. And then he said, I said, how do you sleep now? He said, like a baby. I said, why? He said, I said, because maybe you're exhausted. He said, yes, part of it. And part of it, I feel good about myself. SubhanAllah. So, SubhanAllah. So all this, we're talking about SubhanAllah. It's, uh, you know, the dua, uh, the sincerity to change. Allah will help you to change. Mm. Yeah, Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُونَ وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Those who are struggling in our path will show them, that will guide them to our path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those who struggle in our way or for our cause, Allah will guide them in, in to, to his path. Yeah. And that is the key thing, inshallah. If you are sincere, Allah will help you. And that's part of abstaining from the haram, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah, yes. SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, you can see, wow. So you can see here, SubhanAllah, that there was a reoccurring theme in the story. And um, 
I think Sheikh Mohammed said it so beautifully, like sincerity in the dua, you know, being very sincere um, and, and being open and honest about what it is one wants to do. And I think part of sincerity as well is to really move towards something that will benefit oneself, you know, and brothers and sisters, um, I think Salah is perhaps, because the brother, you said the brother was praying as yeah. well, right? He was praying, but he was selling alcohol. Yeah, yeah. And this is Wallahi, that's what Salah says, uh, the Quran says about Salah that Salah will, if someone continues to, continues to pray, they will not be able to commit sins any further. You know, Salah helps one. What was the ayat that talks about this? The ayat that says Salah will reduce the sin. Tanha al fahsha al mukra. It will prohibit you yeah. from sinning. Subhanallah. Yeah. You see? So he, because he was engaged in the Salah, it became impossible for him to sell the alcohol so much so that it was torturing him. What was the ayat? What, you know what, Surah? Which ayat? This ayah did you just mention? Uh, what is it for one second? Because I think that's a good ayah that I need to uh, memorize, inshallah. But yeah, the, the, clearly you can see here the brother that was running the restaurant is torturing him. He couldn't. He, yeah, that's in Surah Al Ankabut, verse number 45. <laughs> it's been revealed you from you, from the book. And establish the prayer. In the the Salah is. Prohibit you for, uh, prohibit mm. from the fashion from the evil doing. And the remembrance remem of Allah is greater, and Allah knows what you do. Verse 45, yeah? You said? Yes, 45. Yeah. So, Surah Ankabut, which is, I think, Surah 28. Ankabut? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Surah, um, uh, surah 28, verse 45. Um, but yeah, it talks about Salah, and it talks about how Salah prevents oneself, one person like it prevents from committing munkar if it prevents you from doing more evil and the more you stay when we'll lie I, I believe this the more you stay in a salah the harder it becomes even if you do sin it becomes hard on a soul it's too heavy on a soul to carry um and this is uh, precisely what we want to do and this is why these are the benefits you know i was talking about the benefits of salah this is one of the benefits subhanallah that when you engage in in, in salah the sinning becomes more difficult. You reduce the sinning because, subhanAllah, five times a day you have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then in between, subhanAllah, how many times are you going to sin and then go pr pray again? So it becomes very difficult, uh, brothers and sisters. And imagine having more people like that. Imagine having more brothers and sisters who are, you know, we have rather more brothers and sisters who are in that situation where they feel guilty about what they're doing and they really want to change something and people who don't care at all people who don't pray people who don't care people who just live their life right i i, I prefer a society where there's people who are actually want to change themselves and brothers and sisters i believe with this project brothers and sisters with this project and this is what i've derived from the story subhanallah with this project we will have more people look at this brothers and sisters we would have people from sweden Oh, what was what was the brother's name yesterday? What? I think this is the brother's name that we uh, he was looking at. He was asking. Sweden. Yeah, from Sweden. He said something like oh, Naz. Yeah, it was Azan or something, right? Yeah, something like that. Azan, right? That's his name, yeah. Oh, so it's there. Yeah, it's here. We couldn't find it yesterday, subhanAllah. Because I saw two prayer mats to Sweden, and that's one of them. Yeah, so brother, the brother who called in yesterday, he was asking for his prayer mat. It's here. Literally. You know, he called in again. He called in. He's like, oh, I've been ordered. I ordered my prayer mat nine days ago. Uh, where is it? It's here. Literally, it's here. That's the brother who ordered it. And we will ask him to make dua for who? Make dua for Shaitan. Right? Shay John. That would be Kagan Smith. Kagan Smith, you've been causing a lot of problems. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kagan Smith, you've been causing problems yesterday. I don't know why you saw it. What happened to the thing which we uh, ordered? Is it is it done or what? Yeah, I don't know. He said everywhere is closed. So yeah, brothers and sisters, as you can see here, that's uh, a brother in Sweden. He called in yesterday. He was asking for the prayer mat. Uh, this is another prayer mat. It's going to go to. Uh, Czech Republic, you know, 
it's gonna go to Czech Republic. Okay. It's donated by uh, Anonymous Cancel and Anonymous Cancel uh, make dua for someone's father and mother. Okay, so the brother in the Czech Republic, when you receive this, please make dua for the person's father and mother. Um, this. You will ask a question, sorry. Yeah. Ali Dama, question for Sheikh of Baba Dawood. How does a daughter forgive a parent's ab abandonment of them? Oh, abandonment. abandonment. <coughs> How does a, a daughter who has issues with her parents, <coughs> yeah. because she feels abandoned by their parents, how does she forgive them? How does she soften yeah. her hearts towards them? At the end of the day, my sister, I understand it's uh, difficult, you know, but I will tell you something. If you go to Jannah and if you find your parents there, will you be happy or you'll be upset? Yeah. And if you, if you think you wanted to, you, you may be upset, for example, what if of Allah will pardon them and Allah will give you you know ease because Allah says in the Quran in Jannah Allah will remove all these grudges and all of these bad feelings towards anyone unbeliever. So at the end of the day, that's the that's the thing here. So the Jannah worth my sister anything, inshallah ta'ala, whatever sacrifice that we do, and the best sacrifice is to forgive and to pardon, and that's what matters, inshallah. Forgive and pardon, move on in your life. This is the best way, inshallah ta'ala in order to gain the rewards from Allah wa ta'ala. Yeah. Okay, if you make if you have it, have then forgive and pardon. That's what matters. So that's why move on in your life and forgive and open a new page with them. Try your best to be good to them, inshallah ta'ala. That's what you can do, inshallah. Is that clear, my sister? Masha, beautiful advice, Masha. So here we have, um, uh, so we have her two prayer mats, uh, Carlos, <coughs> this is going to the USA, Carlos, and we have another one about Akram, so, and this is going to New Zealand, subhanallah, look at this, brothers and sisters, uh, one of the things I like to teach my kids a lot is geography, um, I don't know why, because I, I like geography when I was, you know, my dad used to buy like these um, world maps, and I would study all the, the, the places. I have to go cry now. Hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, mashallah, may Allah bless her. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, subhanAllah. So uh, the USA is here, right? And New Zealand is here. This is how far apart they are from each other. Okay, because New Zealand, I think it's even further south than uh, Australia. Yeah, subhanAllah. So here's USA and here's New Zealand. Okay, subhanAllah. And we have people here. Allah, I see. I would love to show you. Auckland. New Zealand, and then I have another person here, USA. This is the point I was trying to... Sweden earlier. Sweden before that, which is like Sweden is in the middle. It's like here. <laughs> okay? Like, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, this is what I'm trying to say. This is an international project. We are a very small organization, but yet we are uh, meeting international... Uh, in, uh, like, we are, we are serving an international audience. To me, I've never heard anything like this before. You know? like such a small organization is uh internationally active usually the size of our organization it should be something that we just do locally but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has found a way for us to do this that we are having an, a mess huh i don't know i would like to one if oh, possible yeah. yeah uh so uh it shows you that uh we have uh uh, an international appeal and it's also an international impact that we have in brothers and sisters and this is precisely why we've been trying to raise the funds that we've been raising in fact uh, uh brother afghan if you can in a minute show us a video of sister naila the two sisters uh she will tell you a very beautiful story on how she took her shahada how she was struggling at the beginning and how the prayer mats helped her and how in turn, remember the theme I've been telling you. There seems to be a reoccurring theme, a pattern where people who benefit from this, family members, she will tell you what happened to her family members. And this is why we say 100 pounds will teach 16 to 32 people, almost guaranteed, because people who benefit from this. In fact, early on, someone was saying, Yes, yeah, that. This is why early on someone donated 100 pounds and said, 
the free prayer mat helped me. Can you can we somehow pin that down? We can't, unfortunately. But there was someone, if you go to Lone Scripture, you will see it's pinned, it's on there. It says, I was someone who received the prayer mats for free and it helped me. This is why I'm donating hundred pounds. And this oh, is yeah, yeah. I remember that. I took that picture. Yeah. You can share that? No, I thought I could find it. Okay, find it. Yeah. So yeah, subhanAllah. So this is exactly what's happening. Well, that's what we're saying that this um this 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 project is yeah, very okay. Yeah. What does it say? Someone who yeah, so the, the comment, you know, when you give donation, it was hundred pounds. It says someone had benefited from the prayer mats. Subhanallah, brothers and sisters. This is what we're trying to say. And you will see in the next film why this is a reoccurring theme that people who come here learn, learn, and then go out and make the world a better place, inshallah. Yes, please. So this is Sister Aya. She will tell you her story and how she had an impact in her. So my name's Aya, I'm 36 years old, and I am mixed race, white British and Caribbean, uh, Grenadian, and I'm a social worker by uh, job. And So Caribbean is usually like a Catholic Christian sort of background. Yeah. Did you grow up in a religious family? So we were non-practicing, although for a certain amount of time we went to church because my mum became a Christian in later life. So uh, we would go to church. I enjoyed the hymns. Um, the, there were some nice hymns, but we I never connected with the prayer, and I never connected with um, like the church service. I, I would uh, go clubbing quite a lot. I would drink. Um, it's quite a big part of the Caribbean culture. Um, I enjoyed rum quite a lot. It was quite a big deal. Um, so like family occasions, we'd have uh, a lot of rum punch and things like that. So when my manager died, um, it, it was at that point that I decided um, it was the first day of Ramadan and I remember sitting and I was grappling with the idea for months and I sat and I went on YouTube and I said, right, I'm going to become a Muslim. And I typed in how to take Shahada and I said the Shahada and I was by myself. I remember just before I went into a meeting and I said, right, I'm Muslim now. And I remember sitting at the table and I thought, right, I'm going to fast today. It's my first day of Ramadan. Never done any preparation. This was um, 2020. Yeah, never done any preparation. And I sat and I was doing really well. And I thought, I've got this, I've got this. And it got to about, I think at that time we was breaking fast, um, maybe about nine o'clock or something. So it got to about sort of 7.15. I thought, right, I'm having jacket potato. It was all planned, put it in the oven. And I got weaker and weaker and weaker. And uh, my body just gave up. So by the time it got to eight o'clock, I was sort of sweating and really fidgety. Um, so then when it actually came to iftar, I couldn't eat anything. <laughs> and I couldn't really break fast how I was supposed to. Um, I was really proud of myself because I got up and I video called my brother because he it wasn't his first Ramadan. So I video called my brother um, and we had suhur together over video. But, but uh, yeah, iftar, we unfortunately couldn't. And I had to go to bed. And then um, I had really bad um, problems the next couple of days. So my doctor advised me that it wasn't, I shouldn't fast. So um, that was quite difficult on my first Ramadan. But although I took shahada by myself, there was still something missing. There was still a feeling inside that I didn't feel, I don't know, I, there was something missing. And one day I was having a really bad day and I was in Tutin and I walked past the, the mosque and there was two men outside and they were talking and I heard them talking about um, donating clothes to Afghanistan. So I, I, I turned around and I said to one of the brothers, oh, um, you're, gonna, you're donating clothes, can I bring some? So he says, yes, and he introduced himself to me as the imam. And I thought, wow, see, he's friendly. I've never sort of spoken to an imam before. And he was so friendly. He spent about an hour with me and my son and I explained to him that I'd done my shahada by myself. And, um, and, he, and, and you know, I was struggling. And then he said to me, sister, why don't you come and do your shahada in the masjid? I, I really think you should. So I decided after some time um, to do that. And actually I reverted on the 11th of February, 2022. So, a, five months ago now and I felt that feeling I as soon I, I um, made quite a fuss you know I bought some big 
sort of things of uh, biryani and I invited lots of all of the people that had sort of along the way introduced me to Islam I invited everybody and my mum came and she had a little hijab and well she had a scarf sort of wrapped around her head which kept falling off but she <laughs> she gave it a go um, and my male friends came and it was just beautiful I, I just yeah and I felt the imam gave them the most beautiful um, talk before I took my shahada but it was the most beautiful experience ever and people were crying and cuddling me and I at that point I felt like I was a Muslim and that feeling has never left. So your mom, uh, I'm guessing by what you said, isn't a Muslim. She's not a Muslim. But uh, has anyone else in your family converted to Islam? So funny enough, um, so my brother uh, followed Islam because he knew, I mean, I would always speak about Islam through the year, from 17 until 36, I would always speak. So he found Islam through that and um, like myself, sort of was walking down the road with a friend who told him how to do the Shahada and he he did that years and years ago and he would fast and stuff and he was always sort of by himself and he would ask me any questions that he had um but I kept saying to him do your Shahada properly do your Shahada and he'd said you know what I'm not practicing the way I should I'm not perfect and I think there's this idea that as uh reverts we should be perfect before we revert but that's I now know that that is not true so he reverted in May. He finally, um, on, the, on Eid, um, we, we went to Juma and he reverted. Unfortunately, I missed it. I didn't realise he was going to do it. But my dad also reverted in January, um, which was beautiful. I mean, I couldn't breathe when I found out that he reverted. It's, you know, he's 63. He's lived 63 years as a uh, non-practicing Catholic. His family, my granny is um, a practicing Catholic and my auntie is a Christian and they're, you know, really religious um, in Grenada. And to, to see my dad become a Muslim was just the most beautiful thing ever. So now there's out of our family of six, there are three Muslims and three non-Muslims. Inshallah, um, I pray that there will be more. So with Salah, I mean, in the beginning, I remember, because I'm dyslexic, so it's really, really difficult. Just basic phonics, I find quite hard. And um, with the transliteration, you know, you, you'd look at it and there'd be like three A's in a row. And I'm thinking, right, I can't do one A, let alone three. <laughs> so um, I normally learn best with listening and then following along. So I reached out to um, a sister that I met um, at an event recently, um, just asking her about um, just to go, because no one ever went through the prayer with me. So I've sort of been on a solo journey um, and, and sort of relied on namaz to, to, for learning the prayer. Um, so I reached out to a sister who, as I, as I said, I met, and she um, referred me to um, Salam. So... What did you think of today? How do you feel now that you've, you know, been walked through this? Amazing. Actually, you know, I have struggled um, with Salat. Just, you know, the wudu, I found it's it's a very simple, well, it's, it's a simple task. But um, I realized just from speaking to yourself and the brothers that I actually overcomplicate it. So um, as well as the prayer, there's a lot of things that I've been sort of, just from from the app, you know, extra duas that we're in, actually, it's not that they don't need to be in there, but I need the basics. So praying, um, I have a, a much better understanding of praying and actually it's a lot simpler than I thought because I've kind of been doing it the harder way. Um, and so I'm gonna sort of stick to the basics, perfect those and inshallah, um, add some duas. May Allah make it easy for you Thank to you, absorb these words and implement their meanings, you know, into yeah. your life as well, inshallah. Jazakallah khair yeah. for, for contacting us and, you know, using this service. And now you have this prayer mat, inshallah, to take with you and, yeah. and take it wherever you need. Yeah. Thank you. And you really as well with, um, with my dyslexia, um, simplify things, which um, is really helpful. So this prayer mat was donated by Omar Mohammed Ibrahim for you. So you get to take this home. Um, you can Thank have a look you at it. so much. That's very kind. Thank you so much uh, for donating this. This is going to be a game changer for me.
Sisters, um, yeah, we're back. Um, good news, subhanAllah, good news. Um, we've officially reached 30, 32,000 pounds, 32,000 pounds, brothers and sisters, which is incredible. Yes, we've reached it, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters. Someone who came through and gave uh, the reminder, uh, the re reminding, um, reminder of, of, of um, whatever it is that we were raising, uh, which means now we are um, looking to aim at 32,000 and a half, subhanAllah. And I think one thing that I'm learning by raising all these funds as well, subhanAllah, is that just how much money 32,000 pounds are. Because <laughs> we've been raising for a little while and it's a lot of money, subhanAllah. Um, so, yeah, and um, you've seen there the story of Sister Aya, uh, you know, beautiful story. Uh Again, what are the sort of reoccurring themes in her story? She takes a shahada by herself the first time because she's influenced by someone at work, a manager who passes away. I presume he was a Muslim, rahimahullah. And then that um, has an impact on her. Um, it's probably because he was a good guy or good, maybe she was a good lady, whoever, you know, the sister. And that had an impact on her. So she said, you know what? I've been thinking about this the longest um and you know what i will take my shahada and i will partake in ramadan subhanallah um brothers and sisters that's this is exactly what i want to see what we're we'll talking about she comes from a background you know a very similar background to me you know with alcohol and partying and clubbing and things like that you know who in a right mind right because this is the things that we see in society sometimes being promoted as having fun and as having being liberated, you know, and all these things. But there's so many things, a lot, you know, um, there's a lot of pros. No, no, I, there's no pros. In fact, there's a lot of cons that I can see uh, when it comes to life, um, nightlife, sort of like lifestyle where you go to clubs and things like that. And she was involved in that, you know, her family. Uh, was involved in things like that, you know, when there's get togethers. And I've I've been to gatherings like that before, subhanAllah, where people would have alcohol, you know. Um, yeah, and, and, and it's not always comfortable when it happens uh, because sometimes you're like, well, I didn't expect it. And then uh, there's rum and other drinks available. Um, but like she moved away from that. She didn't want to do it anymore. And this is. It shows you, you know, when people talk about these things as if, you know, a lot of people, subhanAllah, man, sometimes when they haven't done any of this, you know, drinking and alcohol and partying, they feel like they missed out. But this is someone who's done it. And she wanted to finally find her way back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so that she went on YouTube by herself and Googled how to make shahada, you know, how to speak the shahada, how to make the declaration. And she didn't. And this is um, something that, you know, uh, you know, leads her then to become a Muslim for a very long time. She doesn't know how to pray. And then she comes across these prayer mats because she says, um, brother, I says that she's also dyslexic. And this is another thing as well that we tend not to I think about. Um, not too much about dyslexia, but just like learning difficulties, how difficult it is for people sometimes to learn a foreign language, let alone Arabic, which is one of the hardest languages that you can learn uh, in the world. It's Arabic. It belongs to those uh, languages where you have to involve muscles that you you didn't even know you have <laughs> you know and yeah and she takes that path and she follows up that path and makes it so that you know years down the line that her father who was in his 60s takes the shahada subhanallah you know her brother takes the shahada and this is what we mean when we say 16 to 32 or when we say that it's a whole entire generation that will benefit from this brothers and sisters so this is why we're so adamant this is why we're so persistent in raising these funds as much as we can as long as ramadan is there we're raising funds subhanallah brothers and sisters as long as more ramadan is there we're trying to raise funds uh, and this is exactly what we're trying to do here today with sheikh muhammad sheikh muhammad is here as well um and uh, subhanallah uh what 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 we're going to do now is uh, look at what the chat is perhaps saying. Also, anyone who's uh, uh, there, uh, please. Uh, huh? Oh, yeah, you can invite him. And also, Afghan, if you can, 
yeah, put the stream up link in there. There's questions that we've taken. Um, and yeah, brothers and sisters. So basically we are, um, just before brother Eric comes in, cause uh, he's going to update us with his meeting today. We are literally, wow. Subhanallah, there's more donations coming in 26 pounds. So someone donated just 20 pounds. So we are literally 480, uh, 470, uh, 70, uh, 400 and, um, 84 pounds away uh 484 pounds away from the next target which is 33 32,500 so brothers and sisters um if you can if there's four amongst you that can give 100 pounds I'll be more than happy this would be such a beautiful situation for us to do so so if there's someone that can give 50 pounds um or 100 pounds in fact uh if we need only four people to give 100 pounds that would teach 16 to 32 people and i think by now you should get the gist what we mean when we say 32 or 16 to 32 because there's a high likelihood subhanallah or there is a guarantee that the the, the prayer mats themselves multiply either by passing it down or uh people being taught through the prayer mat um via in just orally uh but yeah um if you get want to bring in brother eric um that would be Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have to say I'm doing great. I've just uh, came basically uh, from from meeting with the brothers. Oh yeah, been yeah. We were, for, yes. We've been yeah, together for almost that. seven hours. Mashallah. Subhanallah. 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 Seriously, we've been uh, we've had a great time. Uh, it's truly, truly amazing time. I have to say it's actually my first time hanging out with brothers like that. Yeah. First time. So I have to say it was a magical experience. Mashallah, uh, mashallah. We went to the mosque together. We prayed. Uh, and we spent there really at least at least hour and a half at the mosque. So it was a beautiful experience. Yeah. And uh, we're definitely going to meet again, inshallah. If God Alhamdulillah. Wills. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah. How's doing? How, how's it true? How's the stream going? It's Any good. interesting? Well, it's very good. We had a very beautiful stream today. Alhamdulillah. 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 I'm, I'm very glad. I'm very glad. I am sad that I couldn't have been part of the stream, but uh, but no. but I'm also happy at the same time that I've I've spent it with amazing brothers. So you are you are always there, my brother. You are always there. I'm always trying to be uh, come here. I'm always trying to come here to <laughs> to, <laughs> to see you, to speak to you. You know, uh, consistency is key. Consistency is key, and that's also with five prayers. You know, we yeah. have five prayers in the day, and then if you're consistent, that is uh, then that's the most important thing. You know, it's not yeah. even about motivation. Motivation is temporary. Motivation is, uh, I would say, even emotion, just temporary yeah. state. But consistency is persistent. Yeah, and that that's the beauty of it. So that's true. So brothers and sisters, donate, donate, brothers and sisters. Be consistent in your donations. Be consistent, even every single day. If you donate, uh, it's the best. It's the best you can do for yourself, because Allah will reward you for that. So brothers and sisters, donate, donate. You have the money. We know you have the money, and you know how you have the money. I said it before, but it's still true. So. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, donate, please. Donate, please. It's for a good cause. And it's and the best part about it is that once you donate, you're not only going to help others, but you will help yourself. Inshallah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, you know, brother Eric, mashallah, you've been here with us the entire month. Uh uh, and you've really helped us, you know, you know, raise funds. You've encouraged people to to raise you've given um donations yourself. Um I just, I just love listening to the energy in your voice, mashallah, because uh, that it's the type of energy that changes, uh, you know, changes uh, your that will help you to change your life, subhanallah, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa taala, you know. So uh, remain ambitious, you know, and and dream big, subhanallah, you know. Remember, you have Allah subhanahu wa taala who is on your side. If you if you obey Allah, if you uh, follow Allah, and if you love Allah. Allah will, will 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 be with you, so always remember that. Um, how was uh, the meeting today, Suhana, with the brothers, brother Gulet and uh, Ishtashan? Because I know they're very very beautiful brothers. 
So uh, well, first we met, and actually that's that's uh, it already began beautifully. They first mm -hmm. uh, were supposed to come for me with car, but uh, we found out that the place where we uh, were supposed to meet, the restaurant, uh, it's like maybe ten to fifteen minutes away from me walking. So okay. that's the first beautiful thing, and and that surprised us both. So we met there. I came there first thing, of course, hugs uh, and salams. And uh, we were waiting to, to break our fast. And uh, nice. the, the funny thing, we just got our soups. We already wanted to go after them, you know, to eat them. But uh, of course, it was still not time. But yeah, we had a really big feast, alhamdulillah. And we, we just talked to each other, talked to each other. Uh, uh, you know, how is life? Uh, everything went great. And then um, afterwards, we went to, we went to just uh, kind of drive around uh to to uh you know look at the city rotterdam is really beautiful yeah. night yeah and and then we basically stopped at the, at the mosque uh, at the masjid we stayed there really for hour and a half we just came after the taraway so yeah. we went there we we prayed together all three of us next to each other prayed together it was really strong moment strong bonding moment and very mm -hmm. beautiful thing happened very beautiful thing happened it was actually very nice and warm it was very clear weather outside. When we started praying, like the the one of the prayers, it just started raining during that, and it was so loud that we couldn't even almost hear it, uh, ourselves when mm -hmm. we were praying. So it was so beautiful. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Brother Gullet, um, he's a very good friend of mine. Mashallah, we met him actually at Speaker's Corner. He came with uh, what's the other brother's name? Uh, 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 in... Hmm? Uh, Brother Eric, you still there? Yeah, still sorry? There. Yeah, sorry. You said, yeah, we met Brother Gullet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Irshad. 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 That's, that's the one. Irshad. Yeah, mashallah. Yeah, yeah. So we, we met Brother Gullet and Brother Irshad. Um, you know, very Turkish, beautiful. Again, he's a well, very welcoming and energetic brother. Brother Irshad, we were uh, with him. We met them at Speaker's Corner. They came to visit, and then we exchanged our numbers. And it felt very natural, you know. It, it wasn't uh, contrived or anything. So I knew just by listening to your voice that you would have had a good time. And I hope also, Subhanallah, that they're able to sort of help you with your situation somehow. Because Brother Irshad actually he has a restaurant as well, uh, so maybe. Hopefully that will lead to something. But um, yeah, I'm happy that you met. I'm happy that you guys met and that you now have uh, very strong Muslim brothers around you that uh, are very serious about the deen as well, you know? That's very good to have brothers like that around you. You know, they're, they're very uh, straightforward brothers, you know? Like work, training, you know, they do training. They do like loads of martial arts and things like that. So they're very um, serious brothers, mashallah. Oh, really, really, I, I really have to say it was truly amazing experience. Uh, they, they helped me a lot. Uh, we also, we also just, just spoke to each other. Like we went to one, uh, one restaurant, like it was already like one, almost one. We just sat down. Yeah. There was almost yeah. no one there. We just spoke yeah. to each other, spoke to each other, you know, real talk. You know what I yeah. mean? Like this, yeah. this, yeah. let's, let's have a discussion. We, we mentioned yeah. you brothers. We mentioned mm -hmm. you brothers. But and we were her. talking about about all kinds of things beautiful and mm. they helped me a lot they gave me advice on because i'm going to start uh, delivering for uber eats yeah uh, which is very flexible and actually kind of yeah. perfect for me in this situation right nice. nice so so i'm going to start doing that you know the best part about it is that you can actually reject certain orders like orders with yeah. alcohol you can reject it orders yeah. with pork you can reject it beautiful mm. yeah. so so that's that's uh they really helped me a lot um and you know, it was really great you know i have to say one thing those two brothers they have this kind of interesting interesting dynamics between them you know yeah. It's, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like they're constant you know they're so random like in whatever yeah. they do and and it's beautiful like uh, the yeah. how they Obviously. behave with each other and 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 yeah. truly it's it was i i'm really speechless honestly i'm really speechless in right. in I cannot come up with word 
or words mm. to summarize it in total because it was something that I've never experienced before in my life. So, so I'm very happy. Very Allah, happy. Allah continue to make us uh, a benefit to the world and to our surroundings. Well, like, that's always one hadith, uh, one dua I always make that I'm useful to the people around me. Well, like, that's one thing I want to be useful, you know, and, and, and have, uh, you know, enough resources to help people around me. Well, like, that's, you know, I came across this hadith, Eric. Uh, it's, uh, there, there are a couple of these hadiths. There's different types. But one is like the prophet would also tell people, do you guys want to know who the best among you are? And then he says, the best among you are those who are the best to their wives. Or the best okay. among you are, are those who teach the Quran. Or, and that's like, there's about 100 hadiths like this. And the best among you are those who, uh, what's it called, are best to their families. Or the best among you are those that the people can benefit the most. And when I heard this hadith, I was like, subhanAllah, that's profound, you know, because it changes the egocentric uh, worldview of like, nafsi, nafsi, everything, everyone serve me to how can I serve you, you know, um, and how can I help you, you know, um, because this is why we're here on earth, subhanAllah, is that through that we worship Allah, subhanAllah, you know, Beautiful. that's a uh, part of worship. So I'm happy that you met these brothers. You best believe these are very serious brothers. Uh, you know, when they say something, they try to keep their word as much as they can. That's absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And we already we started planning for uh, visiting London. Oh yeah, um, that would be beautiful. Wow, that would yeah, be such see... a great, great, mm -hmm. great, great time. Three of you, you, uh, Irshad, Golat, you come to speak as corner. They come sometimes. You know, a lot. They. Um, they book Airbnb. They book. They they here for like a weekend sometimes. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Should, they they mentioned it. They mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even even how you met. Like I I heard all kinds of things and it, it was truly amazing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even showed me a uh, brother Gulad. Even showed me like a a picture of you two. I uh, even modeling and stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah for yeah, for your brand, yeah, 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 beautiful, yeah, yeah. beautiful. No, really, I I enjoyed this. It was. Uh, they are now on the on their way back to Amsterdam because they uh, left yeah. me at home. Uh, but <laughs> the only only one thing actually, during the whole night, Brother Gulad yeah. had like allergic reaction to something. He was sneezing the whole time, sneezing the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what's interesting? That. He was sneezing the whole time. We went into the mosque, to, into the masjid. Yeah. Nothing. I don't think he sneezed one time. <laughs> okay. One yeah, time. yeah. 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 Uh, so Maybe I started making jokes. Maybe because of the hay fever, actually. Because if it's outside, you know, you may get more allergy. But inside, you know, maybe less. That's actually I possible. I already thing. gave him, I already gave him, uh, I had medication when they dropped me at home. That's like anti-histamine, uh, histamine. something. I don't, yes. yeah, basically. So I, I gave it to Brother Gulat. Uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, we, it, yeah, so that was kind of, kind of a funny, funny situation. But, funny by the way, today, today we remembered you, by the way, today. Uh, we were really? talking about something. And we, who, who said there are 3,000 mosques being built, I think, in, the, in Europe or something. 6,000 mosques or something like that. Wow. So, and yeah. Then, yeah, it's, you know, then I said, inshallah, we're going to have one soon, inshallah, in Slovakia, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> I'm very thankful that you remembered me. It's so, it's an honor Allah for me. No, Allah, Allah barak fiqh, Allah. You are someone who's to, to be remembered, inshallah. We, we look forward to, to see you, inshallah, soon, my brother. May Allah, uh, you know, unite us soon, inshallah ta'ala, upon khair. Inshallah, inshallah. Allah I would, I would really love to see you, brothers. I am, I am already planning. Uh, I can already, maybe if you want, if you want, I can already give you an estimate of probably when I would come. So it would actually be July. Yeah. Around July. Okay. July. Around July. I don't know July. Maybe not in the country, but we'll see, inshallah. But we will travel. Maybe in the beginning of July. <laughs> beginning of July could be, but end of July is a bit difficult. It's kind of tricky, honestly, uh, because I have uh, end of semester, uh, the end of June. But, but, there's always big but. You never know if you if you pass all the courses, all the exams. In this yeah. case, I'm going to have to see and wait until at least half of July. But I, that's the thing. Like, I believe, I believe that uh, 
we're going to make it work somehow inshallah that that inshallah ta'ala inshallah my brother inshallah may allah azza help you to achieve inshallah your goals in this life and the hereafter my brother I mean, do you have any I'm, questions for do you have any questions for me uh okay so i actually wanted to update you on my situation uh from yes. from so i today Yeah, to live yeah. an attorney in Netherlands, and I already... and he responded to me uh, that basically um, what I sh should do as a first step to gather all the evidence that I have. That's the first thing he told me. The best yeah. possible thing would be to get witness statements. In this, I I'm thinking I can get it somehow. Uh, however, it's going to take me maybe maybe some time, but. Uh, he also told me that it's like I shouldn't pressure myself, uh, like in in like time. I should do it properly. That that's what he wrote to me. Another thing he said that I should contact um, an HR department, so human resources, if there is one, or I should go to the higher ups, so basically people that are above the store managers, so something like yeah. headquarters. That's another okay. thing. Uh, another thing that he told me is that um it's it's a serious matter you even sent me uh which laws or which acts talk about this specific uh, specific thing that happened to me yeah. so that at least gave me the idea on where to look in what scope of law i should look so that's that's truly that was uh, truly great um and another thing um uh he he basically told me because i have a recording of my my uh, call with the manager and in this call the manager told me that in the meantime until we talk together because he's very very uh he wants to talk with me he wants to discuss this whole issue with me and all the parties involved however i expressed my concerns and i told him it's not comfortable i'm not comfortable doing that and he told me basically in the call that uh -huh. he if until we talk until we have the discussion i cannot work that's what he told me. He actually suspended me, he even sent me email uh, that I'm suspended until we have a discussion about the incident. So okay. from workings. So even the attorney said that this can be actually classified under under some circumstances as a breach of contract or not just yeah. breach of contract, but it's possibly illegal, you know, in general sense. So that's, you know, what I'm seeing is that they're just kind of, uh, digging a deeper hole for themselves, you know, from what I see, because like they're just going and and making steps that are not really favorable for them. So it's kind of interesting, and I'm very, like, I'm actually like questioning this whole thing. Like, what is going on? I do not understand. I cannot comprehend it. Like, why is this all happening? I don't understand this. Subhanallah. It's, you know, sometimes you know these things. Allah does sometimes enable these things to happen. You know, in order to to show you that His mercy, Taala, that yes, you think now you are you are, and basically all these time, Inshallah, Taala, will be paid for all this time. Will be paid back everything, and your be your oppression as well. You'll be compensated for that, and that tells you this is the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla at the end of the day that Allah works in a mysterious way. Yeah, something that you cannot even comprehend, and yet you will get what you want, Inshallah, Taala, in the Taala. And another yeah. interesting thing that happened, uh, basically, on the, uh, the guy who threatened me, he just texted yeah. me today. I didn't even open the message. I just uh, kind of uh, made like a sneak peek, you know, like uh, he, I yeah. didn't really, I don't have it as a scene. He doesn't have the message as a scene, but I saw it. And he wrote to me like laughing that uh, I was supposed to be done or fired like you told me. But I'm still not. When is that going to happen? And he's laughing, basically, in the message. I didn't even open it, you know? So, yeah, I, I'll be no, honest open with you. It, open it before it's deleted and, and, and screenshot it. I screenshot it. I already, I, oh, don't worry. I already took a screenshot. I already took a screenshot. <laughs> Subhanallah. I already took the screenshot of it. But it's actually, I think it actually helps me in this case. I think it can actually help me because it just shows that he... You know, he's just doing this like on, on purpose to me. It just shows that he's doing this on purpose to me, that it's not just a matter of, oh, I made a mistake, but it's actually continual 
it's continuing. Subhanallah al azim Subhanallah. May Allah Azza wa Jal make it easy for you, my brother, and help you in all your affairs, my brother. I mean, I mean, I mean. I'm really sorry, by the way, that this is it's the talk is almost always around this. I no, this is good. Know, this is good. This is good, mashallah, because this is also for the viewers to see. Again, we've been saying this for the longest that this is a community, mashallah. We're really building like a brotherhood here that is beyond just you know uh, being kind to each other and you know doing things for the camera. But we're very concerned about the people here, and, and mashallah, you've you know you somehow are connected to this project now. And obviously, we are not going to stop. You know, if you have issues, problems, and we can help you, of course, we will help you, inshallah. That's uh, standard, subhanAllah. It's beautiful. Wallahi, it's beautiful. What you're doing is beautiful. And uh, and, and really, like, I have to say, um, it's mm -hmm. a hardship. It's a hardship. It's it's mm -hmm. actually taking its toll on me. However, yeah, I yeah. the only thing that's keeping me, like, going right now is is truly, truly the, the deen. It's truly, it's, it's Islam. It's Islam. That's the only thing that keeps me going because it's difficult. But I realize that in the end, in the end, Allah is the best of all planners. He's mm -hmm. the best of all planners. He's the, the, the all knowledgeable one. He's the one who, who knows everything and he knows how everything will turn out. SubhanAllah. So, That's so, it's really good that you're saying this because this is, you know, reminding me when I go through things to think about that in this way. SubhanAllah. That is all it's, in it's the hands of Allah. Motivating. Yes, uh, not just motivating, but it's it's keeping me going. That's that's what I was saying. Not not motivation. Mm. Sorry to say that word, but it was really no, the consistency. Yeah. The consistency, you know, in and out. And uh, well, I, as you as you know, there's a reason for everything. It happens. Much it happened in Ramadan. You were trying to do the right thing. You were trying to do the right thing. Like you didn't insult anyone. You didn't steal anyone's money. You weren't lazy. We're just trying to do the right thing and so look how things have turned out. So just keep uh, working with your lawyer. Keep um, um, the brothers uh, in, uh, informed. We're here as well. You have Sheikh Mohammed's number. So as much as we can, we will help. SubhanAllah. Cool. And uh, may Allah bless you, Brother Eric. May Allah bless you for, for helping and for, be, uh, for, for the willingness to help. That's... I mean, That's something that cannot go unnoticed in this. Wallahi, it cannot. Because it's. I mean, just, Jazakallah khair. I mean, Jazakallah khair. I mean. Allah jazak khair. May Allah reward and bless you, my brother. So, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, brothers and sisters, as you can see, subhanAllah, this is brother Eric, mashallah, very enthusiastic uh, brother, mashallah. <laughs> He's always been here. He's been helping us with the fundraiser remotely. <laughs> um, and yeah, so, brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, we've reached. 32,000 pounds, 32,000 pounds. Um, let's reach the next 500 mark, which means Afghan. 424. <laughs> so we are 424 pounds away, 424 pounds away, brothers and sisters. There's been um, a bit of a slowdown in donations. Uh, but yeah, if we can have four people giving 100 pounds, if there's four people that can give 100 pounds right now, or if there's one person that can give 50 pounds, subhanAllah. You know, um, you know, like I said, subhanAllah, this is uh, something that goes beyond, you know, just uh, in, an act of, you know, you know, just asking people to give sadaqa. We, we are trying to funnel uh, those those donations in, in, the, in, in their proper place, you know, in their proper place. We're trying to make it so that people, subhanAllah, have uh, the ability to uh, uh, benefit in 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 person you know and this is this is the problem sometimes with like people and atheists and you know people who are really heavily into philosophy they like to uh you know have this bravado around you know their you know ideas but on a practical sense how does that help people you know how does that help we're really here interested on practicality we meaning the things that we believe in, the things that we follow, do they actually apply in the actual world? And in Afghan, uh, there is a delivery that arrived just down, yeah. downstairs. And one of Afghan the things um, that I really like about this... I will send you the... Oh, I need to call. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, no, what, sorry. Where, is the, where is the code, by the way? The code is... Is it... The, the end, pin? Of your end? Yeah, this pin. Yeah, 7660. 
7660. Yes. By the way, that's the end of your number. That's the pin. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when you're older, you just give the end of your number. Before well, digits. I don't know. The, well, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, it, this reminds me of, you know, we're talking about practicality and how practicality is attached or uh, in conjunction with uh, belief, you know. And that's this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah SWT talks about righteousness. He says that righteousness is not to turn your face to the west or to the east. Uh, righteousness is to believe, you know, to believe in Allah, to believe in the angels, to believe in the Day of Judgment. And then it's the actions that you have to do, you know, freeing the slave, uh, giving from that which you love, you know, um, uh, feeding the poor and the orphans, you know. So this it's uh, uh, it's both. You, know, you can't just believe certain things and then they sound fancy, but in your life, there's still practicality in it, you see. And, and I think Islam has a very powerful system where the practicality that, that is applied generally helps people to really turn their life around. And this is what I was saying earlier about um, just uh, the aspect of knowing the epistemology of, of Islam, which is people may not know uh, a lot, but there are very small principles that people know that are very transformative. And um, brothers and sisters, regard this project as the door. This is the, not the door, this is like, um, I would say, uh, the doormat when you walk into the uh, if you walk into a house there's a, another doormat you so salah is a bit like that you know mm -hmm. salah prepares the people to walk through the building walk through the, the the flat you know the house the house of islam you know if the shahada is uh, the door subhanallah uh, salah is the key that's a better example right salah is the key to that door the door of the shahada and when you open it up you try and you try you know sometimes when you put the key the wrong way and you're turning and nothing is happening right so you have to attempt to try and try so regard this project as the key uh to the door and by opening up the key or by open up the door you 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 enter the house of islam where there's all other pillars of islam that are very important um so brothers and sisters please keep the donations up please do not despair do not um be afraid of, uh, of 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 hardships um of course when hardships happen it's very easy for me to say that because when i go through hardships i uh, really feel them and they really have an impact on me but one of one of the things that i've learned from eric right now is to also remember that when i go through hardship that allah has a bigger plan that i may not be able to understand you know and i will just have to submit to it and and remain patient right that's what you were saying eric isn't it Yes, that is true, because mm. um, in the end, in the end, you are powerless. You have no power at all. The, who has the only power is Allah. Mm -hmm. He's the only one who has the, yeah, all yeah, the yeah. power. So, so I, I, you know, and it's it's very interesting that you mention it because it's for me. I never had this type of mindset while yeah. while uh, having hardship. It's it's just now it just came to me now wallahi it just came to me now just mm -hmm. now that mm -hmm. like i can what can i do like what can i actually do as just just things. the creation uh, mm -hmm. imperfect creation mm -hmm. that's temporary yeah. you know in this dunya yeah. what can i actually do nothing yeah. absolutely yeah i just realized it and i i'm like you know okay if i cannot change it in any way how does it you know yeah. What, what can I do about it? I can only submit. I can only hope for the best. I can yeah. make duas, request, request, or or basically ask Allah for for many things uh, to help me in the pro process. To to ask Him to forgive me for all my sinning. To for to remember Allah. Also remembering Allah, the remembrance of Allah uh, helps mm. me. You know, just yeah. casually, casually. You know, I just say casually to myself like, Alhamdulillah for everything. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Astaghfirullah for everything, yeah. for all the bad. I seek forgiveness, you know. I Mashallah. seek refuge in Allah. Brother Eric, your your you talking is really like loads of funds coming through. Uh, Subhanallah. Really? Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, the people are donating. Mashallah, the donations are going up. Mashallah. 
you know, and, and I, I just want to clarify one last thing because you mentioned at the beginning that I've been here the whole month. I just want to make clear, I actually was not. I was here for maybe the last 10 days. I just want to keep it uh, truthful, you know, when someone looks at this, listens true, to true. this. But, you know, just, okay, yeah. maybe, maybe Yanni, I was exaggerating perhaps, but what I meant by it is that you've been here with us, subhanAllah, uh, especially in the most crucial time, which was the last 10 days, subhanAllah. Of course, uh, of course, it, brother. Of course. And it felt, I just, it I felt just like a month. <laughs> Thank you for correcting <laughs> me. But it, felt, it literally felt like a month. Um, no, no, it's not you, as I wanted to correct you. I just wanted to make sure that the viewer, when they see yeah, it, that yes. they are not being lied to by from yeah. us, you know, from us, because yeah. it's not just you. It's not just yeah. you. It's literally us. Yeah. It's the, the brotherhood, you know, it's the, the yeah, union. Yeah. So yes. I just wanted to make sure that we are not in sin, that we are not lying to the audience. Yes, yes, yes. Because it's very transparent here, right? That's yeah, we're very yeah. transparent. Like yesterday, Ali was showing invoices mm -hmm. <laughs> and all kinds of things. So yeah, yeah I just want to make sure that really when the watcher sees this, that they do not have this, you know, uh, like wrong perception. But that you know, honestly, honestly, I wouldn't even say you exaggerated it. You you just made yeah. a mistake. You just made a you know you didn't know you didn't yeah. know. You yeah. just realized. That. Well, so I just to, well, yeah. well, what I was meant to say was also like, um, you know, because there's there have been loads of people who've been here with us from the entire month. So there are actually people who've been here with us from the beginning. Um, brother Ibrahim Munasir, you know, uh, brother Aaron, and all these brothers, uh, brother Ragna, and everyone else in the chat. They've always been here, like they've been here with us for a month. The point I was trying to make is that, mashallah, and you're right, uh, to be exact. Uh, but I felt, and mashallah, that's the beauty of it. You know, when when you spend time with someone for a short time, but it feels longer, it means there's usually blessings uh, involved. <laughs> you know, uh, I remember I, meeting. I, I feel it already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember um, meeting a friend of mine, Isa, rahimahullah. He passed away, unfortunately. And I was with him maybe for two years. At best, really spent some time with him for two years. So I started spending time with him more. And I felt like I knew him for 10 years. SubhanAllah. I felt like I knew him 10 years. SubhanAllah. And that was uh, quite powerful. Uh, but yeah, Brother Eric, it's it's, it's beautiful. And um, there's a lot of lessons I'm learning here. Wallahi. If, I, wanna, I, if I like, may, yeah, if sure. I may just say one, one thing. So, sure. you, you you know, like, just like you mentioned, there's been actually brothers, even sisters who's been here, who have been here since the beginning. So that's what I'm also trying to say to all the people that are watching this. Yeah. That you, you have been here since the day one. And that's actually incredible. Mm. Since day one, you were fasting yeah. during the day. And that's now, okay, now, and now, now listen to this. This is actually profound. You have been fasting the whole day. And now what are you going to do basically after the fast? You're here, you're working, you're working until mm. you go to fast again. Yeah. And then again, and the same cycle again and again. And you're working and you're yeah. not just sitting, you know, and, and doing nothing, but you're mm. actually working with, with people, with the lo loads of people. You're working with money. You're working with the, with the prayer mats. You're doing yeah. all kinds of things, you know? So that's, that's uh, something that must be pointed out as well. So that's why I'm, I definitely did not want to make it in a way like, okay, I'm correcting you, uh, making this yeah. because it's, yeah, I understand. just wanted to actually show like, look, look how you have been hardworking for the last mm -hmm. past month. And uh, it's, wow, <laughs> wallahi, I'm, this, this job, this job that you already did and that you still have like one, two days, right, left uh, of Ramadan. So it's wow. I <laughs> also again yeah, I'm thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. So Alhamdulillah. I just want really even even the chat, you know, I saw them during those ten days or eleven days that I'm here. I saw them sure. truly, truly listen to you, appreciate you what you've been saying. I saw uh, many donations coming in when you were speaking. I I saw I all these beautiful messages that all oh, Dawood is on fire, you know, all these things. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, enough is enough now. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, no, I just wanted to make it clear, you know, because yeah. that's another important thing. Like, look, people, they're not uh, being very, very, always very nice and 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 thankful, you know. Of course, not just true, to Allah, true. definitely, but you know, they're watching this. They're actually they are here. You know, there are some people. I see them ever since I came here. They're always here every stream, 
And I'm yeah. thinking like, okay, these people are provided with a platform where they can mm. not just watch you, brothers, but even uh, connect with other brothers and sisters. Yes, in the yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And, so you're um, providing that, it, you know? Yes, yes, I agree with you. And that's one thing I've been saying uh, yesterday and we've been saying for the longest is that we really want to create a community around all these things that we're doing uh, as a community that we, we, we want to uh, create around this. Uh, we want people to, um, you know, sort of have a, a, a promote a culture, you know, a Salah plus culture, which is a, a culture where people are very uh, attentive about the Salah and very serious about the Salah mm. and they want to improve the Salah. If there's brothers like that in the chat, you know, that send each other perhaps even hadiths or have you listened to this or have you, you know, just learning, Yanni, make this like yeah. a young learning experience. That would be so beautiful mm -hmm. like, if we had this uh, yeah. with the people in the chat and yourself and others. Okay, that would, yeah. why don't you just have a, a break? A little break? Okay. May Allah bless you. Appreciate you so much. Yeah. I'll give you a cake. So go. May Allah bless you. <laughs> I mean, by the way, I mean, by the way, that would just three comments just it's came in. I mean, if you want to, uh, three comments just came in. Dawood is a soldier. We appreciate Dawood and Salah Plus. Dawood W. <laughs> you know, like yeah. everyone is just, 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 uh, just being thankful. Let, let me introduce something, Achi. You know, the this is the beauty of uh, of, of teamwork. Uh, brother Dawood, each one playing a key role actually in this organization. This is what you know, that's what motivating us actually to carry on to do the you know, the these deeds to, to carry on to help others. And one of the most important thing, and I said this before to Dawood, and I said to everyone, so you sometimes you go to somewhere, you to work in an environment or something. You know, there are some first impressions. You sometimes, even sometimes, even that first impression, or down the line, you will have some certain impressions. You feel belong to an environment, or you feel you don't belong to that environment. Yeah, and that's part of it. So when you are in in an environment and you feel belong to it, Alhamdulillah, that's uh, and that's what we feel in this organization. We feel belong to it. We feel that all of us, we are playing um, a, you know a crucial role actually. For this environment, for this organization to carry on, inshallah ta'ala, to help others. Especially, this is not a, not an easy task. You're talking about the deen of the people, the religion of the people is on the, basically is on the stake. Well, that's how it is, which is important for us to make sure that we are teaching them the right, you know, uh, the right, uh, the right way and teaching them Islam, teaching them the salah. And that's what matters, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah, be beautiful, beautiful. Like what you just said. Uh, that's the thing. Like it, it's, you know. And, and also, I want to thank you. Also, I want to thank you. I just want to give you like, like thank you to you as well personally, because ever since I came here and you answered my questions and you've been very like helpful. You've you've been truly helpful. So, uh, just like you, you, what you said about the teamwork. Um, mm. No, wallahi, everyone should listen to this and everyone should take something from this. I think it's my opinion because this is profound. This is true. This is true. Like that that's what is happening. We see it with our own eyes. I see it, you know, when I every single day when I uh, watch your stream, you do it for several hours, several hours, just keep going, keep going and and uh, I see the dynamics of all of you. You know, yeah, you came to Dawood now, take a break, go take a break. It's beautiful. This is the teamwork that you're mentioning, and you're doing it. So you're not just preaching it, but you're actually acting upon it. That's that's Allah. something. I ask Allah beautiful. to accept, my brother. Well, that's what matters. We ask Allah to accept. Now, uh, now, how is uh, Ramadan going on with you so far? Mm, okay, so I'll be honest with you. With the yeah, fasting, honest. with the fasting, uh, I have yeah. to say it's been very difficult in the last days um because in the last days since that situation happened to me um mm. when i tend to be stressed out or I, when i tend when i when i am in situations that are requiring a lot of time for me a lot of energy i often forget to eat properly so i oh. had 
struggles with that. And I, I'll, you know, for example, I was fasting the whole day. Currently in the Netherlands, it's like between five till eight, eight thirty, yeah. uh, like the fast. So after that, I really stayed even until one, not eating. Mm-hmm. I just drank water. I just had a sip of water, and until one, I stayed without any food. And then I maybe mm. ate two slices of bread, you know, because it's already late at night. You don't want to really uh, feast, you know, or have like a big meal. So uh, that mm. was difficult for me, just knowing that I'm going to the next day only with with energy from Allah, that no, no other energy, you know, literally like no energy of food or something like that, but just, just Allah. Uh, so yeah. it's been very difficult in fasting. Prayers, that's something that I... I'm very proud of myself for this. And I thank to Allah every single day that I'm praying five times a day. I really do, I do not miss my prayers. Okay, I had a few instances where I uh, had to pray later because I, I, I sadly couldn't. But five times a day. And I, I've been able to keep it going continually, consistently. Mm. And I already know that I will continue doing that after Ramadan. And I cannot get let go of this because I noticed that um, all, all all the blessings that I have and all the things that are just just helping me in in having strong iman, because I I believe I believe that uh, my iman is is growing. Can I say it's growing? Is it is it the right yes. term to use? Yes, so I yes. feel like it's growing. Increasing. I feel like it's growing. Increasing. Increasing. Growing. Increasing. Increasing. Yes. Yeah, so I feel like it's increasing, and I know that if I want to keep it going, and if I want to have uh, this strong feeling, even from Ramadan, you know, of this, of this unity with brothers and of this sustenance and, and all these things, I have to keep praying. I think that's actually the basis for that. I think this is the key. I th- because if I'm not consistent in praying and, and making voodoos, because that's another important thing, making voodoo, I feel like I'm falling into the, into the trap of, of the devil, of, of shaitan. You know, I, I actually notice when I do not pray, I, I fall back into, into some sins, okay? I, I noticed it on myself. So it's like um, I'm going, you know, I'm going, going, and along the way I see something, I notice it, I, I note it in my head, I remember, and then another time I see it, I can learn from it. You know, it's like a very simple way of learning. So I just realized I have to keep going. I have to keep trying and having the consistency. If I do not have the discipline and consistency, I'm going mm. to eventually fall and big time, big time fall. So all in all, in general, Ramadan, beautiful. Of course, there's been some moments that have not been very pleasing to me, but uh, this life is a test. This dunya is a test. I see it that way. I look at it that way. And I thank Allah every single day that I'm here that I have all the blessings, that I have uh, all my body parts, that I have the brain that I have, that I have two eyes, that I can, that I'm able to live under the roof, that I have food to eat every single day, and that I have amazing brothers. So that's what I'm living off of. And that's that's how I would generalize uh, my uh, experience from this Ramadan, Sheikh. And you you tell me, how, how was your Ramadan? Or how is your no. Ramadan? Uh... You know, uh, Alhamdulillah, that uh, this Ramadan, I, you know, there are many good things in it that mainly we were focusing and raising funds for this project, and that kind of, you know, you know, uh, you could say jeopardize other things, which is I hoped to do during this Ramadan, uh, especially the ibadat, yani, for example. Alhamdulillah, we t- I try to do like a Family ibadah more into the, you know, for example, uh, during Ramadan, this Ramadan, you know, I try to, you know, to pray Qiyam al-Layl with myself and my wife, my children. Uh, you know, that's what we can do during this Ramadan. And as well, every Ramadan, every single Ramadan, there is always, towards the end of Ramadan, there is always feel of guilt, feel of regretfulness that you didn't achieve what you're supposed to achieve in Ramadan. And this is normal for everyone. And the more you are practicing them, the more you do, the more that feeling of guilt increases. And that's the problem. Uh, so for me, you know, since knowing that today is going to be the last day of Ramadan, uh, you know, uh, I always say I wish, 
you know, the time goes back to do, I could do maybe in a different way, I could approach certain things in a different way. But Allah Azza wa Jalla, at the end of the day, we ask Allah to, to deal with us according to His mercy, not according to what we deserve. Uh, at the end of the day, we don't deserve all the blessings that we have. But Allah Azza wa Jalla is the one who is encompassing us with His mercy and His blessing. That's all. Allah al Mustan. So, my brother, at the end of the day, this is the life. And um, may Allah you know, uh, uh, give us a life as long as the life is good for us and grant us death as long as the death is better for us. That is the dua of the Prophet. And there is an interesting thing that you mentioned that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said in a hadith, Man aswah minkum aminan fi sirbi, fi sirbi. Whoever wakes up in the morning, he's safe in his area in his territory is safe and he is as well healthy in his body so uh, and he has the food of his day that as if he has gathered the whole world you know to him as if the whole world is gathered to him so you see here the people who are lacking safety you know like what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Gaza they don't care about their health. They don't care about the food. The main thing is about their safety, their lives, basically. So that's why you'll find someone. Maybe he was he came out while he was being shot, or maybe his one of his limbs is cut, etc. And is running. Doesn't even recognize what happened to him because he wanted to save his life. So you could imagine the health comes after always. You know the 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 safety. As soon as the safety is granted, the first thing the people concern is their health. So that's why the people who the, who have a lack of health, you know, you know, when it comes to the food or whatever, that's that's the least concern. The first concern, their priority will be their health. And the the last thing is, if you are granted with safety and health, then the third thing is the food of your day, not the food well, that comes tomorrow or the after tomorrow. The food of your day that is, uh, you know, a key thing. So if you think about it, you know, uh, that if someone safe in his territory, in his place, have, uh, have uh, has a good health and he has a day, uh, the food of his day, we're talking about, you know, who is giving, getting these blessings, all of them together in this world? It's actually the highest percentage of the population in the world. They have that. It's only the minority who are lacking one of them or all of them, subhanAllah. So the point is that Allah Azza wa is wanted to tell us that to remind us about his favors. So you are saying, you know, can you imagine you are you are sleeping in your place, you're not being demanded by the people wanted to attack you and to kill you or to torture you or to you know, you are you're safe. And as well you are healthy, as you mentioned, you have your eyes, your ears, you have your hands, you could walk, you could you know, uh, and you have the food of your day. We you pick and choose, you know. Uh, you said a slice of bread because you don't want to eat in the night where, where you are able to eat and feast in the, if you wish. So, so you could imagine that the blessings that that you have, that many people are lacking actually these blessings. You know, may Allah Azzawajal fulfill our, you know, the, His favors upon us. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned this um, this guilt, um, and I'll be honest with you. I feel guilt, um, but not All maybe in the sense. On also, yes, also in the sense of of the of Ramadan, I could have done more. But honestly, mm. I feel even guilt in connection to this, that I feel like, and I'll be absolutely hundred percent honest with what I'm saying right now. I feel guilt for having all these blessings with. Uh, like being able to even speak to you right now, I feel guilt that I have been able to go out with the brothers tonight. Honestly, I, I feel at the same time guilt. I feel happy, but I also feel guilt. I feel like I haven't done enough myself to earn that for myself. You you uh, you know what I'm saying? Do you understand? Like, yeah, yeah, I feel I like I haven't done enough to get what I have, and uh, and I feel like you know because that was before I became a Muslim. I had this thing. Where I, when I got something too easy, or when I got something, uh -huh. I know it wasn't really too easy this time, but I feel like it was too easy, you know, in the end. 
like b- based on how great it is for me i feel like it's been too easy for me like how did i just get that you mm-hmm. know even even if i put like hours in this even if i put days in just working hard into something and i just got it then in the end i feel like yeah. i got it too easy do you maybe have yeah. any any advice on that like how can i maybe even overcome this because i actually feel burdened by this a lot and and I do not know how to help myself on this. And then, and, and, and I wanted to just mention it because I said before I became a Muslim, I had this thing where I got these things. I felt it's too easy. And then it just crashed, you know, it just crashed for me. And then I went on my all time low, you know, it's like a roller coaster. Uh, mm. It was like a roller coaster for me. So do you maybe have, have advice, not just for me, because I believe there is others who feel this way. Uh, in, in, in Let me tell you us. something. That for every for everything there is a, a a peak of it, and there is a down of it. So so sometimes your iman will be so high, and sometimes your iman is down. So utilize the time when your iman is high, in order to maintain this iman, this faith. So when it goes down, at least try to stabilize it in a way. And there is nothing stabilize the iman of the people more than seeking Islamic knowledge. So the more you seek Islamic knowledge, the more you kind of your iman. It's kind of a stabilized, and that's one of the things. Now, in the same time, the fear of guilt, don't burn yourself on the things that you can't control. At the end of the day, you try, you do what you can, and as well, this is how it is. Allah, from there is a purpose that we have shortcoming, there's a purpose that we are not perfect, we have certain things we are unable to achieve, etc. That is that's normal. The point is, when you have this. Is because uh, you know Allah wanted you to keep you busy in seeking forgiveness from Him, in getting closer. Because Allah wanted you to get to get the highest ranks in Jannah. So don't lose hope in Allah. Always ask Allah. Always, you know, uh, ask Allah to help you, to enable you, to do, to achieve more, to you know, to seek forgiveness from Him, and do what you can. At the end of the day, you know, you you will not achieve except what Allah has written it for you. But you do what you can. That's what matters. And always, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, uh, you know, don't look on the people who are above you. Look on the people who are below you. And uh, which is the blessings that they have, the things that they have. Less than you, you say, Alhamdulillah, that Allah give you something better. And there is no better than Allah to guide you to Islam. So that's, think about it. Allah, there is no better ni'mah than this. Yes, I understand we may not achieve what, everything that we, we what we can, but at least, alhamdulillah, we are upon this great deen. We are upon the, the tawheed. We are following the greatest man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is what matters, my brother. Yeah? So, uh, and keep motivating yourself to achieve your goals in the hereafter and prioritize your hereafter. And at the same time as well, you know, do what you can in order to get, to gain your goals as well in this life as well. So don't forget as well your portion in this life. Is that clear? It is clear for me. Thank you very much, Sheikh. And I, I've really, mm, I've really, really, it, 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 even this helped me. I'm really going to try my best in this because it's, uh, um, it's just very, very strange feeling. It's, it's really like feeling, feeling, of of, st- so much uh, gratefulness. I I feel so grateful, so grateful. And at the mm. same time, I'm like, you know, why me? Why am I the one who deserves this? You know, like why, for example, just like you said, look at the people below you. Why do not they have you? Why, why don't they have this? I'm thinking, you know, why? You know, of course, I do not question Allah and, and his plan and his decision. Obviously not. But mm. It's burdening me sometimes that, um, you know, I just they like you said, have I have all reason. these blessings. How, how uh, you know, uh, Allah doesn't grant everything to everyone. So when Allah takes something from someone, it's for you as well, because wanted to test you what you're going to do about it. When Allah is, you know, giving you wealth and preventing other people from the world, because Allah is testing them uh, and testing their patience, and as well testing you and testing your generosity. See here? That's how it is. So I understand. Their I understand. Yeah, so their test is the test in patience, and your test is the test of generosity, for example, in terms of the wealth. The other thing is the same thing. When Allah is taking something from someone, Allah is giving something else. 
So that's why you need to try to always be positive about whatever you have, inshallah ta'ala, from Allah wa ta'ala. Inshallah, inshallah. Inshallah, really, thank you. Thank you very much. It's um, you are welcome, my brother. Allah barak fi. Allah barak fi. Really beautiful. You could really stay beautiful. online. Let's see if there, if we have other calls. Do we have other calls? How, how many viewers we have? 43. 43, yeah. Where are we now? What's our target now? Okay, we are 343 yeah, away. away from the target, yeah. inshallah ta'ala. Allah understand. You know what, inshallah, we can take some, uh, we can put a video, Afghan. Yeah. Afghan. Put a video, inshallah ta'ala. And keep brother, you know, if he wanted to say, you know, just let it put us on. Uh, uh, can, I, can I just quickly say something? I even wrote in the yes. chat, I'm going to actually have to go. I, and it's, the, <laughs> I'm very sad about this because I have to go since we have Fajr prayer in a yes. bit. And I just want to get a little bit of sleep. Uh, yeah, that's because good. I, oh. I got such such a little sleep and and when I do not get my sleep I'm stressed, anxious and all of these things. So <laughs> No, you go, inshallah. That's fine, inshallah. That's At least a little bit. Home. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I am glad Allah seriously God. once again, once again I came here and I'm uh, leaving smiling and satisfied. Allah barak you, Zakallah. May Allah Lord bless you, my brother. May Allah keep you inshallah smiling throughout your life. And keep you the best smile for you when you meet Allah in the day of judgment. I mean, inshallah, inshallah. Because if I know, yeah, I mean. if I know correctly, some, yeah, I mean, some, I, mean, yeah, I, mean. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, the, I mean. Yeah. I know that uh, actually, is there some people who will not be able to see Allah on the day of judgment? Yes. Ah, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure. I was actually, I, I had a dilemma. I was talking to myself yeah. even like, Eric, Eric, yeah, what some is, people, what is Allah, <laughs> Allah will prevent them from seeing him. I actually gave dawah to one of my Christian friends uh, during this Ramadan. I told him about the day of judgment. I told him about how uh, we'll, we will get there, you know, going from minor signs mm. and then the major signs begin. I uh, ex mm. started to explain to him how it is because I've seen so many lectures. I heard so many lectures about this mm. from many sheikhs and, and knowledgeable people. And I've been telling him this. Because there's been actually a solar eclipse, I think, in, in America today. Yes. In like some parts. So he's been telling me something about like a possible sign of day of judgment. Uh, that this could be like possible sign of day of judgment. And I started telling him, like, look, brother, like, uh, look, look at these signs that we have. Look at these signs and see uh, what's happening, you know. And I started telling him, I really gave him like our long lecture about uh, mm -hmm. what i knew about all the information and yes and it was it's beautiful great experience allah like khair my brother may allah reward you and bless you my brother all right inshallah Amen. may allah reward you inshallah we'll see you soon inshallah ta'ala allah barik fiik my brother when i come inshallah. to netherland i will let you know inshallah we'll meet up inshallah yeah please do please do i will take you somewhere here to uh, to have a great uh, meal to have a great uh, lunch or 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 dinner and so uh, if that? you want we can if even you... connect with with brother gulet and and others inshallah that will be good hopefully he will be not sneezing inshallah. anymore at that time <laughs> <laughs> inshallah inshallah allah barik all right inshallah brother all right look after yourself okay you too, you too sheikh all right assalamu alaikum assalamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh okay yeah put a video inshallah ta'ala and then And we will send you one of these guided prayer masks as well. Or you can borrow your husband's. Or borrow yes, your husband's. Yes, no, no, I it. want my own, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not a Muslim, um, but my husband is a revert. So my first question about Tarawih yes. is if a person has trouble praying um, Tarawih standing up, um, and I know that he um, there's an option for to sit down while doing it. The standing is better. But the mandatory prayer that has to be prayed standing, unless if the person has uh, an illness that prevents him from standing, that he can sit down. How long have you been a Muslim? Oh, I'm I'm actually not a Muslim, um, but my husband is a revert. So what my suggestion is, if you become Muslim yourself, keep this between you and your husband, 
until when the time comes, when you feel confident to mention this to your family, that's fine. You can go to our website, salahplus.com, and you can order. If you want this stuff, I know can... it already because my husband has it and he actually told me uh, a couple of days ago. They said, I can. Got, pray. Has he got one of this? Oh, has he yes. got one of this? Yes, and he can pray without um, reading the prayers now. See, you know, Subhanallah, and... this, is, this, is, this is profound. This is profound. Look at this. This is a sister who's a Catholic. Her husband is a Muslim, who's a revert, yeah. who ordered the guided prayer mat and now can yeah. pray without using it. So, yeah. I testify. I testify. That there is. That there is. No one. No one. Worthy to be worshipped. Worthy to be worshipped. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I testify. And I testify. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. Is the messenger. Is the messenger. Of Allah. Of Allah. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulu. Rasulu. Allah. Allah. Takbir. Alhamdulillah. One second. We just realized. Is this Aaron the, the one you've been teaching how to pray salah? Uh, yes, he's Aaron. Oh my gosh, one second, guys. This is profound. This is Aaron. The word is the word is his instructor. The word has been teaching him how to pray salah. So, this is his wife. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, we talk about salah instructors, and people don't really understand. The word, Sheikh Mohammed, and the others, there's instructors. Yeah, we didn't even know this. Yeah, the word has been teaching a brother, and he talks so highly of them. Aaron, this, Aaron, that, and subhanallah, where do, we don't even know it's his I wife guess, who's accepting Islam. Subhanallah. Even though I was helping my daughter to learn to pray, she did better with the mat than mm. sort of like dictation. So, Mike, how long have you been a Muslim? That is coming up to probably about four years now. Four years? Yeah. Wow, that is phenomenal. I can remember like yesterday, Mike came to the speaker's corner when I saw him, I got a bit scared. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, he was there. He accepted Islam at our table with Brother Hashim. And from there onwards, it's been a journey. But when you came, we didn't launch this project yet. After that, obviously, your family members came to Islam. Is that correct, Mike? That's correct. Okay, did you give one of these, these to your daughter? Yes. Okay, so what would you say the benefits are? Because I can remember you was a bit gutted, like, oh man, I wish I had this. There's a lot of proud people out there, and you know we can say what we like about that. And there's people that are a bit too shy to ask for help. Yeah. There's people that just want to do things themselves. You know, there's a whole range of reasons why these mats are really, really beneficial to people and the, and the type of way they like to learn as well. Mm -hmm. People learn differently. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, looking at the mats they would have definitely have helped someone like myself, mm -hmm. 100%. And even though I was helping my daughter to learn to pray, um, she did better with the mat than mm. sort of like dictation. Yeah. You know what I mean? so she, Mashallah. she was able to just take it away and go and do it mm. in her own time. We just had a donation okay. of £83 from Nazir. Oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. And the Allah bless him, inshallah. And Isabel B. Chapman. Oh. That's my daughter. Hundred <laughs> percent. That's my daughter. Is that your daughter? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. This is, okay. This is profound. This is profound. <laughs> this is profound. <laughs> so oh, Isabel B. Chapman, may Allah bless her, inshallah, and preserve her. Uh, Twenty-five pounds. Oh. Now I'm sure she donated because she maybe you know to her learning salah how it benefited her. Maybe guys, when we are here and we talk about people who come to Islam and they teach their family members, people think it's a joke. Like, oh yeah, no. Look, Mike came to Islam and taught his family members. Yeah. From his oldest daughter to now, we've got the six-year-old uh, donating twenty-five pounds. Where did he get that money from? <laughs> so that's that's a beautiful donation, Subhanallah, guys. Yeah, and one like that is so amazing to see that somebody like Mike who came to Islam and his daughter and his youngest daughter, Subhanallah, are involved in sadaqah. This is sadaqah for them, Subhanallah. Yeah, and they have benefited from the uh, guided prayer mat, guys. This is real life. Uh, by the way, where's I knew that's what I forgot. The guided prayer mat. I think that was bringing it though. You've got one in I your got, bag. I've got one. Come on, give me one. Look, there you go, there you go. Byron's got one in his bag. Byron is a weaver to Islam. He came to Islam in December. Um, and you can see he carries this in his bag. So I forgot mine, but he hasn't forgot his. Who did it belong to? Belong to this gentleman over here. Okay, so it belonged to Haider. So Haider, this belonged to you. What made you give this to Byron? I mean, like, what was it? Uh, uh, firstly, where did you even get this from? Tell us. So I got this from Salam Plus. Okay. And uh, what I was looking to do as someone who was return to Islam I wanted to learn how to pray again mm. and I wanted to be able to like learn through the transliteration mm. so I ordered one of these which came for free in a couple of weeks and within about six weeks I was able to learn it and then memorize it I also use some YouTube videos to help listen to it so I can get the mm. pronunciation correct so so you left Islam came back because you forgot how to pray Salah 
And then you order this guy to pray, Matt. And then Dawood had a couple of sessions with you. He taught yeah. you how to pray Salah as well. Well, sisters, look, he learned how to pray Salah. And what did he do with this? He had his friend Byron. So Byron came to Islam around December. Mm. So what happens is, Haider says, you know what? I've learned, I've used this. I know how to pray Salah. Now I want to gift it to you or something. And then Haider was like, no, uh, Byron's got one in his bag. He carries it in his bag because he doesn't know sort of files. He hasn't memorized it all yet. So he uses this to pray, guys. He prayed today. You prayed Maghrib? Yeah. Isha? He's praying Salah. So I just want you guys to just imagine this. The people that donated towards the Salah Plus project, these guided prayer mass and the instructors and the Salah hubs that we're doing, these go towards Haidar learning through our coaches and this. Not only that, this gets passed on. It's a literal Sadaqah Jariah, brothers and sisters, in a Sadaqah Jariah. This goes to, this will help teach uh, Haidar how to pray. And now it's teaching Byron how to pray. And from Byron, who are you plan to pass it down to? Um, probably one of my friends. Yeah. yeah. My story started at the well. It was it was before the start of the year, to be honest. It's been ongoing for, I'd say, on and off about two years. The first time I went to a mosque and prayed, yeah, was just after college ended, actually. Okay. After learning about the culture, the people, I it was it was on and off. I never had like strong feelings to come towards is uh, uh Islam straight away. Yeah. And that changed when I was speaking to my friend Haydar about it when he was having doubts himself. I learned, I learned a lot from him when he was struggling. And then when he eventually reverted, I guess I kind of felt it as well. Because mm. on the spot, I was like, I, I kind of want to revert as well. It was, wow. it, I felt at the moment. And obviously, mm. I was nervous to start. Yeah. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I've been mm. grown up in a, a very traditional British household sure. where Islam isn't exactly uh, celebrated a lot over mm. here. And... Um, I had, I had no idea what to expect apart from what I've learned in the last two years, which isn't a lot, but it's enough clearly to uh, to be here right now and learn with you guys. So that's, that's pretty much my story. Mashallah. Okay, so yeah. um, by, uh, Byron, you have something uh, on your lap. What is of that? Of course, the praying mat that <laughs> the praying mat that I was gifted from my friend Haydar. Okay, so Byron, alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, learn how to pray and his friend Haydar for the Salah Plus program, inshallah, brothers and sisters. We are trying to fundraise for that. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. This is Michael. Assalamu alaikum, guys. Michael came to Islam four years ago at our Dawah table. It was the best decision of my life. He did not know how to pray Salah and he struggled a lot. It was very difficult and I struggled a lot. But he didn't want his daughter to go through the same struggles when she became a Muslim. Our Salah Plus project was launched years after Michael's conversion. Even though he did not get the opportunity to be taught how to pray Salah, he gifted his daughter the guided prayer mat, which taught her to learn how to pray Salah for the first time ever. Brothers and sisters, we only need a hundred people to give a hundred pounds. A hundred pounds can help teach 10 to 30 people learn how to pray Salah and memorize Surah Al-Fatiha for the first time ever. Not only that, these reverts will be teaching their families, their wives, their daughters, and their sons to learn how to pray salah all because of your donations the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when you die all your deeds come to an end except three ongoing charity beneficial knowledge and a righteous child who prays for you not only is your donation an ongoing charity but also an ongoing beneficial knowledge click the link in the description below and donate now Do you know what? How many people watching? Should, should we start fresh? Let's start fresh. Let's start fresh. Let's start fresh. They, 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 they. Let, let me tell the people I'm going to start fresh. Yeah. Hello, assalamu alaikum, guys. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, so guys, we are going to inshallah end this live. I am back, inshallah. I'm going to be here till 5 uh, a.m., uh, inshallah. So we're going to start the uh, live fresh. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We're going to extra fresh, inshallah. So join us to the next live. We're going to be back very, very shortly, inshallah. From sisters, don't go anywhere. I'm going to be here with Sheikh Mohammed, inshallah. Uh, we're going to be answering your questions and uh, talking to you. We'll see you guys very soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wait for the next stream. Goodbye. Americans, USA, Canadians, Australians, the, the Europeans. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, bro. I think around this time it's fine. Even go live on EF Dawah.